Uh, let me check real quick. So it's is it Patat? I don't even know how to pronounce the name. It is Patat. Have uh, you have in, you started up the bracket yet? Yeah, I have. It's invisibility. It's Patat versus invisibility. Sweet. So, so we'll jump uh, straight into this game. Yeah, seed twenty four against seed forty one. So it should be. I mean, relatively even matched. I mean, I mean, I'm looking at the the ranks now. It doesn't look like it's going to be evenly matched at all. Okay. Yeah. So Patat's running this. Uh empath build mixing with the bulwark and he's got the crunk in there for the extra wildfire plus what really hurts is the uh blind it makes it not feel as good but Ooh. he's going into invisibility's uh fire rogue deck which unfortunately for patat is a pretty hard counter it's, and he's got the steam kicker this is something that we didn't actually see at all in the meta um in the first couple of patches it felt like steam was incredibly underwhelming and i know martini you've kind of been talking about it behind the scenes that that you see some potential there like what, what are your thoughts on steam now with, with the recent patches do you expect that we're going to see a lot of it uh what are your thoughts yeah i think steam's looking pretty good um the energy regen combined with the omega power scaling on it uh, can output a lot of damage and with the most recent patch uh energy related comps aren't hindered quite as much as they were before. So we might see what, what, some more steam action. Yeah, there wasn't there wasn't a buff, right? Like it, it it's always been this way. It's just the the, the nerfing to, to air and things that make it more viable or, or what's making it more viable right now? Yeah, not as much counterplay. Like yeah. the counterplay is there, but it's not as strong as it was before. So relatively speaking, it gets stronger if the things that hurt it get worse. Of course. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. All right, so well, invisibility starting with the stat. Invisibility starting with a pretty interesting. He's got five fire, but nothing else activated on round two. Yeah, five fire yeah, still does a lot of damage. <laughs> it yeah. does. This is a bit of an interesting build, though, compared to what we saw out of Estrid for his counter to the empath build. I think Estrid went three fighter, three rogue, and then with the ramp fire carry. Um, this is looking to me a little disconjointed because he doesn't have any of the class buffs. He looks like he just pure fire. Yeah, What's your... which is <laughs> a little strange. interesting. Yeah, I, I want to see how, like, in what round does he actually hit that? Well, what he's trying to do, like, when does he achieve the goal that he's trying to do compared I'm to not... if you look at Patat? When round yeah. three has three wildfire, three water, two Templar, like that already looks like it's a pretty, pretty complete strat. And now he's going to activate, is it going to be the three bulwarks as well? Like mm -hmm. this is looking pretty clean already. Yeah, it's a lot different from the three fighter and the three rogue because that helps buff up your, your ram fire and you're supposed to be winning these, these first few, uh, I know he won the last one, but it was a little, little closer than I would have liked. And I don't know if you guys noticed that, but Invisibility actually moved his... Uh, is that a Seer or a Singe? I think that's a Singe. So he's already starting to move and like just use up his mastery points. So, yeah, I wonder why... Like, I, Yeah, I'm curious to, to see why that, that decision was made. Clearly it was not the right decision in this in this round is he's still getting his 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 behind handed to him i'm going to try not to cuss he's got a lot of fire but uh his positioning he just kind of has the, these uh tier zero units chilling in the front line not a lot of synergy there just a Graco and a tifo and a doka um a random singe that doesn't have magma activated so He's got this vertical trait in fire giving his guys a lot of damage, but outside of that, there's not a, not a lot of synergy going on with his team. So it feels like he's going to struggle mm. to make anything happen here. Yeah, yeah. it feels it, a little disconjointed. Like everything, yeah. it, it looks like he was just hyper-focused on getting that fire buff, and he was not expecting like the classes to do as much, which I think is a big mistake. And what are your what are your thoughts? We're seeing we're still seeing a lot of T zeros on both sides of the uh, of the team uh, of the board. Sorry, like in the in the, the the recent patches yesterday or today, depending on where you are, 
uh, T-Zero's got a pretty... Well, would you say they, were, they got a pretty significant nerf? Or what, would you think it was pretty minor? What do you think? Martin, I'd call you're, it a you're the medium. guy who made it. I'd call it a medium-sized nerf, yeah. Right. If you're running a and, lot of tier zeros, it's going to be very noticeable. Uh, if you're yeah. just running a couple, it's probably not going to make too much of a difference from how they felt before. Right. And what was what was the thought process on on going that medium, like that medium nerf rather than because I know in the first essentially the first couple of metas they were T zeros were pretty much everything. Like for for a lot of teams, they were the core core part of of the comp. So why why go medium nerf rather than something larger? Do you think it's enough? I don't know yet. We'll have to see. But yeah. the reason we nerfed them at all is because they're very cost efficient at getting synergies, which can buff your entire team. Yeah. And when you throw a ton of these out on the board for a very low mastery point cost investment, uh, they were just generating a little too much board power than we'd like to see. So we reduced some of their stats. So now it's a trade off, right? You're playing these little units. They don't. Their stats aren't quite as high as they were before. They don't do quite as much damage. But you still get the synergy effects out of them. So we'll have to see if the meta still likes a T0 spam or if we see more. I put one T0 on the board just to finish off that trade that I, that I didn't quite make or something. So I, I don't know where it's going to go. We'll, we'll have to see over the next few days probably how it develops. Or maybe this tournament will shed some light on what, yep. what works and what doesn't. 100%. I think we're going to see, I'm hoping that we're, we're going to see some different metas this this tournament for sure. Yeah, I'm expecting a little bit of difference, but for the most part, I'm uh, expecting a lot of some of the same things. Umber's really good now, too, though, so we'll probably see a lot of that. And is I'm it? expecting a lot more Colossus. <laughs> yes, it's, it's pretty good. And I was trying it last night, man. I, I couldn't get it to work. <clears throat> I don't know if I was doing it wrong. I don't know what was happening. I could not get it to work. It's not as straightforward, I'd say. I think the mm. Umber carries are not as straightforward as your like, Ramfire, who can just cast a on the whole board or the Arcanite where you kind of just like mat, put it down and uh, yeah. the placement is this not is, as big of a deal. This is a hundred percent GG. Yeah. He played, he, this one. yeah, he played directly into what Patat wanted as well. Like he didn't try and do anything with splitting the clump away. He didn't do anything like that at all. It was just, damn. Yeah. That, he didn't have any chance with that one. We'll go quickly to the replay and we'll just watch how that wrapped up. Even with the seven fire and three fighter, it just wasn't enough damage. The healing and the shields, um, that staff is probably a high high level staff, is just giving so much shielding there. Yeah. Your, your voice sounds incredible, by the way. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the thing that really hurt him there was obviously right. It was the fact that he didn't have the fighter bonus. He didn't have the rogue bonus. And also, when you're playing that counter into the empath build, you want to get that game over as soon as possible. You want it to be a four-round clean sweep, and then you don't want to give those empaths the time to ramp up. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Empaths, to me, like if you're going very heavy into this like bunch up, everyone buff each other, sustain, it feels very much kind of like what I would call a control comp if you're going to compare it to other card games. It's pretty slow to get going, doesn't do a lot of damage, but once it hits critical mass in the late game, it's very hard to take down. So with these sort of, call it aggro strategies, or he's playing a, playing a, a bunch of fire units, trying to do a lot of damage early, um, that comp's not going to be nearly as strong late. So he really needs to win the early rounds. And uh, visibility started losing as early as round two. So, yeah, so really, he has switched uh, his team. Very difficult to come back there. Sorry to sorry to cut you off, Martini, but yeah, so he did switch his team. It seems a little bit more uh, spread out rather than just going all in on fire now. Uh, let's see how he plays it. I think positioning is going to be the biggest thing here, to be completely honest. If he, if he changes up his strategy here but still plays into the whole clump situation, it's going to be a tough one for him to, to, to overcome. Yeah, uh, we saw how... Um... What, who was it? It was Torix. Torix kind of pulled them apart, but I'm not sure that's going to work with this team comp because as as fun as it would be to see like empaths get destroyed, he, the difference is Patat's not using the stage one tier zero empaths, so their the AOE on their Omega is much bigger. So even if you pull them apart, you'll get that clump apart a little bit, but it's still going to be the AOE is so big that they should still be hitting everything. This is a very strong comp. 
saw a lot of expensive units on invisibility side. He's got some Colossus units. <laughs> I saw an Adorius there, another 100 cost unit. Uh, there was a Scoriox in there. So he's definitely looking to get some big, strong composite units in there. But that kind of strategy, while it has the potential, you know, round six plus to have a lot of power on the board, it's going to take a while to ramp up in power. So, so Earth is huge here, actually, because something yeah. I, I figured out the other day that I hadn't really paid much attention to is Grit and Resolve work against Wildfire. And since Wildfire only does like 30 damage or whatever on tick, then um, 32 Resolve or whatever it is actually negates Wildfire's effects completely on your Earth units. And then you have Bulwark to prevent all of the damage because Empath, the uh, Tippos and stuff don't really do any damage to begin with. So um, with Grit, Resolve and the Resistances, you can actually just like take the brunt from an Empath team, but I don't know how far it goes. Because Templar, Templar hurts, but Templar doesn't take away Grit and Resolve. I, I am happy to see that uh, Invisibility, I don't know what he did in round one, but round two, like in, in this match, uh, this match he's, again, on round one, he's activated three Earth and three Bulldogs. So it looks like he is actually <laughs> going with a, um, a proper start. Uh, a full start, I should say that. <laughs> He's going with a full start rather than something that's super fragmented. And now he goes with one... Is he, is that mud that he's got on the team? No, he's still going Earth. Yeah, those are two more Earth units. He's in, fi he's in five Earth now, so he's really that... going hard on the Earth. It's going to be great for mitigating the, the low damage ticks, like Scoriox was referencing, both the auto attacks from the Empaths and the Wildfire ticks. going to have a hard time breaking through Earth. The weakness right now with this earth is that he's pretty low on damage himself yeah. and patat has already played a water Graco and is likely to play more water units and those water units are going to go hyper very very quickly against the uh, enemy earth units and that placement of appon is just it's not ideal <laughs> it's not stunning anyone it, it actually gives damage amplification to anything any allies it hits as well but it's yeah so it's it's 50 percent, 50 percent as efficient as it should be uh, by the way, uh, Skyriox, do you want to see if Stormings, is, is that game started or is he able to, to jump on stream after this? I'll go check in. Yeah, awesome. We always want to be having uh, someone someone ready while the this match is going, while the streaming match is going. Yeah, and like, um, like Martini said, like he's just going to be putting in these water. I think invisibility is going to fall off pretty hard here. He already invested so heavily into this rogue or this uh, Earth start. When I think he should have went that toxic, toxic Colossus that first round and built off of that instead. But even then, that's this is a pretty hard uh, team comp for his team to beat. Yeah, invisibility takes the first two rounds, but yeah, like I said. Uh... Patat immediately throws out the three water, and those units are going to go hyper so fast. Yep. Um, you're going to watch those yellow bars fill up. As soon as the empaths go hyper, they start pulsing and giving energy and health every second to all their allies in that tight clump, and it makes it very hard to get through. So really, okay, what do you think about this ripple here? So he gets Berserker with the Riplance and the Monkir. Um, but that alone is not going to be nearly enough to get through this, this Empath wall, especially with the clunk drop, the crunk dropping the smoke cloud on the front line, blinding the Riplance. Yeah. He's just not going to be able to do anything. Yeah, this is going to be very one-sided. Yeah, I think Riplance actually is probably like one of the worst carries that you could put into the Empath team. Just because mm. they have that shield, they have the healing, and it's just not good for a melee to be into that, I think. All right, so uh, some news here. s -Jod has beaten Hethbone. So s -Jod is already on to the next round, which is expected. <laughs> yeah, s -Jod, one of the best players right now as well. Got second in the uh, first Inferno. Very solid player. Lost to Smartass twice, though, who actually won the first Inferno and then won the x tournament as well. Unfortunately, is not playing tonight, so we'll see who can uh, claim the second best player in Alluvium right now. 
Uh, actually, let me, let me see if. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be checking some of the stuff on the back end, trying to see who we can get on stream next. Yeah, it would be great if we could have that just ready to go right when this one yeah. is done. Just jump right into the next game. Um, yeah, for invisibility here. I mean, I know he took the first two rounds, but I'm struggling to see a world in which he uh, overcomes these uh, impasse now with the way he developed his team. He doesn't have enough. He doesn't have enough damage to to get through them. Um, I think I saw a Scoriox he could look to play, but that's pretty expensive. He has no Arcanite to make it do more damage. He could play more tanky units, but adding defense here isn't gonna isn't gonna help him break through the the wall of impasse. And now he's moving units around that doesn't really change anything. Um, it's just spending mastery points unnecessarily. So. Yeah, yeah, I think adding the tanky units actually hurts him here because he's not going to outlast the empaths who have all this healing, have all these shields. That your your best bet is to try and put in some kind of carry. But even then, I think after those first two rounds, it was a bit misleading because that that falls off so hard, especially when he puts in the water. He needs to break through this, not be tankier. You you yeah. have to you have to double down on it too. Three Earth is pretty good for round one but it doesn't actually work on round two or three. You actually need five earth and then seven earth really fast because the three earth just doesn't give enough grit and resolve to your team. Almost, but not quite enough. Five is a, is a lot better by quite a margin, especially against wildfire and stuff, right? From a defensive standpoint, yes, but if he's only adding earth units that don't uh, stack classes in a way that make him do more damage or even just individual units that can output a lot of damage consistently, even if he's surviving through the wildfire burn, he's just never going to break through this uh, this ball of empaths, and he's eventually going to die. I like the toxic. I kind of wish he had toxic in earlier. Um, toxic actually has a, an anti heal property built in. Uh, when you reach max stacks of poison, it triggers a debuff that lasts for three seconds that reduces your healing by one hundred percent. So that can actually have some significant effect on. Uh, on units that are getting healed, uh, if the timing lines up, they can miss a really big heal potentially. But it's not enough damage straight up to actually break through the empaths. It's just a nice thing to have. But he still he still needs a, a proper source of damage. So Dr. Spoon is also in, in the next round now. So Dr. Spoon at seed 20 against, I don't even know who that is, Style Lord or something at seed 45. Yeah, Dr. Spoon. Go ahead, Jimbo. Oh, I was just going to make the, the comment. Dr. Spoon, a, a decent player. Um, I think underperformed in the tournament a little bit, but he also got a little bit unlucky, lost to the third place finisher. I feel like invisibility actually got a lot closer this time around. So um, maybe he'll come back later on. I think he played okay, but just blazing on empath. You've got to have a plan for it. Awesome. And that was, yeah, pretty... That was a pretty easy wipe for Patat, I'll be honest. <laughs> Yeah, respect to invisibility, but uh, I think Patat, his team comp specifically, just counters a lot of these players who don't know how to play around it right now, and he, he just came in with a better game plan. Cool. If I'm not mistaken, we should be going to the Stormings, so I'm next round. I'm waiting for you to share it. Oh, there it is. Hold on. Let me sort that out. Just give me a sec. Storming uh, another high elo. Uh, I think he's Brazilian. Brazilian player comes from yep. TFT, right? Uh, yeah. Pretty pretty good following. Good player. I think he finished top sixteen in the previous tournament. Was uh, impressed with him as well. And I, and I've been watching his stream a little bit. He he seems like a really good player. Knows exactly these, where he needs to be and what teams he needs to be building. Perfect. Yeah, these guys are grinding, man. There's uh, another guy in here. In the team, it's spelled Renega, but uh, it's yes. pronounced Hen Henega. Uh, yeah, so Storming and Henega, they, these guys are 
on it, man. They are grinding. Yep. They're messaging me. I've ignored so many of their messages because <laughs> I haven't had time to get back to them. Uh, but no, they, they have been grinding and grinding and grinding, and it's awesome, awesome to see. <laughs> yeah, Nega, I believe a top five player, or was at one point on the ladder. I'm not sure where Stormings was, but yeah, played against a Nega many times. Very good player. Very good. I think I've only beat him once out of like five, so dude is great. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Excited to see, excited to see what this match looks like. So it's, what is this match actually? It's Storming against... Let me bring this up. I believe this is game Storm. two, but I'm not actually sure what the score is. Uh, it is. It is game two. Uh, it's it's the second round. It should be the second round, is it not? Is this round two? Is this. it? Jesus. Yeah. It, it should be. It should be storming versus snag. Sweet. Okay. Why is this not updated on my? On my screen, just storming by Snag. I'm really interested yeah. to see what Snag actually brings uh, as far as his team comps for the tournament. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed over these first couple weeks of Ascendant that he's been a pretty uh, solid team builder. Um, he came in and had what I thought was one of the strongest submissions to the uh, CC showdown we had right before release. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I've seen him on ladder with some interesting takes on on you know some variants of meta decks and stuff. So really interested to see what he brings to the tournament. I actually haven't seen much of Snag, so yeah, keen, keen to see what happens here. Yeah, I would, I would predict we might see something a little unexpected, or you know, not just full. I'll say full meta or something, just a blazing item path comp, or oh, yep, sorry, I just comp. realized I think storming. It might see interesting, so, yeah. I'm keen to see this. Yeah, I, I realized Stormings was actually waiting for us to give him the okay. I just have. Uh, awesome. Yeah, cool. I think they're going to start the, the match now. All right, let me try and line up the next couple of matches as well. So Zeptile just ended up winning. So we have a Zeptile Dr. Spoon match next, actually. That might be a good one to watch. I'm going to DM Zeptile right now to get that ready. Okay, let's... Looking through the bracket here, it looks like Shabim got through with a DQ. Uh, Nick Sitar on to the next round. Soda on to the next round. Next round beat Scribble, 2-0. <clears throat> okay, we're going into Snag it. He's dropping a full empath, baby empath, blazing night comp here. Oh, interesting. Taking it old school. Back to the seven small empaths and not going with the more recent version that's been floating around with the bigger uh, stage three empaths. So let's see how, how let's see how viable it is. This is what we find out. And what is storming rocking? Okay, it looks like it's in th that same wildfire bulwark empath comp. Okay. It's a blaze night carry. So and it's the exact same placement. <laughs> yep. We've got an empath mirror, but slight variations on a similar comp. So we'll have to see which one uh, has the edge over the other. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think I've ever seen this matchup. I know both of these are like popular empath builds, but I've never seen a, the one-on-one -on -one here. So I think I would give the the edge to Stormings, but we'll have to wait and see what the interaction looks like. Yeah, I would imagine if it goes super late game, uh, Storming's setup has bigger, stronger alluvials and should be able to take the edge. But... Snag has the smaller alluvials that don't cost as much, so he can ramp his his power up likely a little bit faster than, than Storming can and should we'll probably see an edge in the first three rounds, uh, likely leaning towards Snag. But the winning three rounds isn't enough to to win the match, so we'll have to see how it 
how it plays out. Yeah, I agree. I think Stormings is going to scale harder, but who knows with the seven empath, we'll see if that's enough to uh, get him through there. Okay, cool. We have Zeptal and Dr. Spoon lined up after this as well, which will be a good one. So Mindia's just come back saying he's 1-2-0. It is yeah. cool to see the uh it is cool to see the the guilds <laughs> that have been going at it for for some some time with with hype exborg uh and actually I, someone someone gave me a, a pretty good idea on, on a little thing that we can do um with some guild stuff so i'll share that with you guys behind the scenes later as well oh yeah i love the guild drama the trash talk i'm all about that <laughs> Yeah, and Mindy I'm going through is cool to see. Um, India just finished, got a top three finish in the, the recent export finish. So he had a really good showing there. Be cool to see how he does in this one. Yeah, I think he underperformed a little bit in the first Inferno, but I got high hopes for him. I think he's definitely better, especially obviously with that third place showing. So you can see the very different progressions of these two teams here. Senegan, seven empaths already on turn two. No real carry or big damage dealer, whereas Stormings has three wildfire and a 90 cost blaze knight on the board. Um, but just with the raw power you get out of having these seven units all with a bunch of shields and stuff can be pretty uh, pretty strong early. But they do lack damage, so is it going to be enough to take down a blaze knight? I think it is. I mean, yeah, that thing sure. just went hyper. Look at that thing go. God damn. Yeah. So it was looking very one-sided for the first 20 seconds of the fight, but yep. the little the little impasse really struggled to to deal the finishing blows. And that's only going to get worse now. I feel like, you know, Snag's kind of got most of his stuff in. He's got his power level where it needs to be. Like, And now we're going to see Stormings kind of scale into that late game and should be able to overtake this unless he makes some mistakes. Yeah, Snag will have one more turn where he still has kind of the tempo edge because Snag will likely get in a Blaze Knight of his own and start getting a bit, a bit more damage. Um, but yeah, it's reaching the point where where Stormings could easily start out scaling him. I honestly have no idea which which way this is going to go. <laughs> it's, we're going to see a lot of overtime. Both teams are very tanky with pretty slow, consistent damage output and lots of healing. So unlikely that either side is going to be able to actually outright defeat the other side without getting into overtime. So it's going to be a grind who, who has the most units, who has the most healing to just last through those uh, overload ticks. Now he has to walk up to the wall. <laughs> yeah, but you walk up to the wall and drop a smoke cloud on their face. <laughs> it's like that scene in 300 where they have their shields up. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. It's all good. W and chat. Yeah, what do you mean? Of course we know. What are you talking about? It's a great movie. Yeah, it is. It is. Spon Olivia Inferno sponsored by 300. <laughs> one day, one day. Yep, there you go. Zack Snyder losing <clears throat> movie win. And that's a little rough losing on that round three. I feel like uh, that was his round to win, and I think this is telling of what's going to be in the rest of the series. Or not the rest of the series, rest of the match. Yeah. If uh, if Stormies is already taking round three before his full comp is even online, I don't know. <laughs> Snag might have a hard time going forward. Ooh. Do you think they should have placed, either of them should have placed their build in the back corner or anything like that? I don't know. I'm not sure it matters with the, um, this mirror, like empath thing. It would be different if they weren't all range, but. 
Yeah, I don't think it matters too much in this matchup. Uh, both both teams want to keep all their units clumped together. They're basically going to walk towards each other and have a face-off in the middle of the board, kind of regardless of where you put them. Um, the thing is, you can split your units to try to split the opponent's units to make them weaker, but you're kind of making yourself weaker by splitting up too. So it ends up being kind of a wash, and there's not really that much of an advantage to do so. Like you see Stormy's here looking at moving his ranger, right? So he wants to he wants to pull the Blazonite Tornado from Snug away from his pack. And so that has positives and negatives. It means the tornado misses his pack and it hits his ranger instead. If the positioning works out, it turns out things moved around and it's still going to go after his Blazonite. But if it had worked, he draws yeah, the think... tornado away from his pack, but he also pulls his own ranger away from his pack. So now when the ranger casts its omega, it doesn't buff his team. So it has kind of a net neutral effect, I think. I don't think it really matters. Yeah, I think if anything, he was going to win this round regardless, and that only made his board weaker slightly. Ooh, the crook goes down, though. But Snag's Blazonite is gone. Now he has no damage whatsoever. That's so unlucky that Blazonite got targeted. <clears throat> like, it's not even close to the front of the board. I don't know how that even happened. Yeah, the, the pathing on the Empath Mirror matchup can be kind of hard to uh, predict. What? Okay. All of that? Really... The baby Empath healed through overtime. That's crazy. Interesting. And they were split up, too. They're not like the Stage 3 where like they're... Omegas are hitting everything, even if they're clumped up, not as clumped up. They were a little bit uh, spread apart, so that was interesting to see. Okay, he's equipping Biogenetic Suppressor with less healing to try to lower that healing on the opposing side. Cut that down a bit. Reduce some of their survivability. I think this is a good call. Yeah, and that feeds into the the recent patch notes, right? The update to the the healing for the empaths. Yeah, the base amount of extra healing they get is is lower now than before, so the the anti heal augment uh, might be a bit more effective now than it was prior. Dom. And now they both have augments on their blaze knight instead of just snag. So we'll see if that makes a difference here. Got the pure damage on here on the snag's blaze knight tearing through the bulwarks. In that previous round. Yeah, yeah, the pure damage really helps when you have a lot of resistances. Not just the bulwarks, but over time throughout the fight, uh, the templars actually add additional resistances to their own team as well. Yeah, it's and almost like you should have totally nerfed templar. Up. That was the one thing I was surprised. I really thought Templar was gonna get a gonna get a nerf in the latest patch. <laughs> yeah, well, while we watch these empaths sit here and stare at each other while they heal, I can mention just a little bit about the patch for anyone that looked into it or has been playing. Uh, you would notice that most of this patch is just nerfs, ninety percent of it, ninety nine percent of it. Um, the next balance patch we have planned that we'll be working on will be focused more on buffs on the sort of lower end weaker side of things to try to bring up some of the some of the weaker underplayed things. So don't worry, buffs will be coming. <laughs> <laughs> Can you make Fliss stronger please? I want to just run really funny Fliss strats. We we will do that specifically for you. Thank you. But Thank you, already good and you just don't know it. I saw some Flishes out there today. Yeah, I I, I played ranked a bit and there was definitely a lot of Fleesh. Leash. 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 Fleesh yeah, is a lot of fun, man. but it just dies so fast. Like any rogue, like one shots it. I mean, is that not the same for most scions? Am I tripping? <laughs> <laughs> that is the nature of uh, of scions. They uh, it's, it's a glass have a lot of damage right? potential, but they're pretty squishy. Pretty squishy. Sorry. Squ <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Well played. Well played. To be fair, now they have ten percent less health, ten percent less uh, uh, armor, magic resist, XD. 
Stag on his likely last life here with 60 HP. I maybe if it's only the Ranger alive on Storming side, he could live another round while while losing while losing the round. But very likely, if Storming takes one round, he takes the whole game. Is this is this still match one? By the way, sorry, I'm focusing on stuff on the back end. Is this still match one? I believe so. Yeah. Well, it's about to, about to be the end of match one. <laughs> That's blazing oh, out for you. Every round goes to overtime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it looks um, like yeah. As we were predicting, this this late game power storming just scaling too hard compared to the the baby MPS. Yeah. I'm really, really hoping that we see a change now that they both know. They're playing empath i'm really open we don't see that mirror again <clears throat> yeah i think stormings would be storming would be perfectly happy to see that to see the match again right so i think it's really yeah. on snag to make a call yep. if he wants to switch something up yep 100 i think storming's chilling if he wants to play the exact same team i think snag makes a huge mistake here if he plays the the salty run back It'll be interesting to see how Snake tries to play into this. If he'll go for the um, the three fighter, three rogue Inferno with Ramfire counter to Empaths. I don't. I've not even seen that into this version with the Wildfire Bulwark. This into this Blaze Knight comp. So I'm not sure how it actually plays out. I'm getting a few people <clears throat> responding to your buffs comment, Martini, at the moment, which is really interesting. We've got someone wants a shock buff and someone wants Slash to be buffed up. I do want to try out Slashin' more. He seems like a lot of fun, even though he's not particularly good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I probably don't want to spoil too much, but I have a list of things I'm already targeting, and it's not comprehensive by any means. Um, Chalk is definitely one of the one of the things I'll be looking at. Probably uh, giving it a, giving it at least a small buff. We're seeing a very different deck against the opponent here now. It should be really interesting. It looks, I think I saw a Ramfire and a bunch of Dokers and things. Mm -hmm. So. Looks like we've got the classic anti Blazoneth, Blazonite Empath team. Should be quite fascinating. Yeah, really good call on Snag to, to, to swap it up and uh, try to actually counter his opponent instead of just, you know, playing the same thing again and accepting defeat. This is great. So then it gets really interesting, and I'm not going to call this game early, right? Like, Stormy could still win this, but if Snag does manage to counter him well and wins this match, now what happens for the third match? <laughs> yep. What do you think about his uh, water alluvials he has in there? Perhaps trying to get some more energy onto that ramfire due to the air nerfs. Water is a little bit stronger. Maybe do you think that's kind of his plan, getting, getting more energy onto his ramfire with those? Or do you think he should have stick to the full-on fire comp? Okay, so he's got a mixture of fire and water. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, that would be... Give you some extra energy regen. Um, I think the go-to uh, aggressive rogue strategy like this, the previous patch was typically using air because it was very strong, but now with the nerf, they're making adjustments and going for another synergy here. I mean, regen is great on uh, you know like Ramfire who wants to cast quickly. Yeah, and I also think the water is going to be better into Storming's comp if he wants to get some kind of hyper going compared to if he were to just be full on fire. So, uh, yeah, aggressive rogue star easily takes round one. Single blaze and nine ranger had no chance against that. Well, to see if Storming can build up a big enough defensive wall to not get run over by these aggressive early units. Interesting play to yeah to put in that empath. I I would think he would want to put it in Krunk. Okay, yep. Transitioning into that so we can get the uh, blind onto the auto attacking rogues. Yeah, the blind would definitely be nice to slow down their damage output a little bit. And just having the third wildfire just means your uh, all your wildfire units just do more damage. Like you're unlikely to to win this round anyway. Yep. But if you but can you kill one or two small units with a little bit of extra burn damage. Uh, that would be nice, but I don't even think that's It doesn't seem to be happening, yeah. 
He's getting overrun so fast. Almost killed the Ripple. Oof. It's all good. Yeah, and the Water Volante taking away some of the energy, so he couldn't even get the blind off. It was the last second. Yeah. Took away his energy. Snake oh. confident putting in his ready very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> very very quick ready up there i think that's actually it i don't know it, it's somewhat like in in poker it's a it's a tell hey when you do it too quickly i think sometimes even if you're not doing anything or making a very quick move it might still make sense just to hold off on clicking that ready to play those mind games with your opponent of damn what's he doing why is he taking so long rather than just readying up especially on on round one if you decide to do the the weapon and armor trick uh, readying and meeting yes. is pretty obvious <laughs> when you're doing it on round one. Yeah. yeah, sometimes if it's too quick. But, you know, on the other side of things, <laughs> it could be like you do a few things opposite. and you act really quickly and it's more yep. of an intimidation tactic. Like, mm. you know, just, just quick shove all in, right? Like, I'm confident yeah. in my cards instead of sitting there thinking about it forever. So, you know, going quickly could, could be a, for good reason. But yeah, if you're too quick, Maybe it gives away a little bit. Big round fire cast. Yep. But staggered a little between the Ramphy's cast and Ramfire's cast, but it was still enough to where they couldn't get any of their like shields or oh no. anything off. This is this is the turning point right here. You can this tell is, when he doesn't yeah. have enough units left at the end of the round, he's starting to lose it. He needs to get the energy onto that Ramfire ASAP, or it's not gonna go well. He needs this thing to cast quicker, right? Like it took a long time there. He eventually won, but he started losing some units. If Stormy keeps scaling and keeps building up a bigger wall of defenses and Snag can't get these rogues to put out the damage early, it's going to start turning the other direction. So let's see if Snag can finish him off here. Because I think if this goes to around five, it's going to be very difficult for uh, Snag to actually finish, finish Storming off. I think this is his time to, to take the W if he can. I agree. Ooh, he's he's moving stuff around, trying to fit things in as tightly as he can. Does he have enough space for Ranger to fit in the clump there, though? Oh, he doesn't. He has to move the crunk, which costs a little bit of mastery points. Decides against it. Decides against it. Maybe he says, I don't want to dip under 20. I want to use these 20 points to play an augment or something. Because if he moved to the crunk, he would have... Uh, under 20, and then he wouldn't be able to play this augment. So he's deciding, I can't afford to lose those points. I'm just going to put my ranger in potentially a worse spot. Yep, tries to but, take away some of that energy from the ramfire with the uh, energy suppressor there. Yep. And we see the charge capacitor on snag side on the ramfire to get an earlier cast. So he has some additional starting mana, additional starting energy. Right? I'm going to double down on it. Oh, he's only got three wow. fire, which is interesting, but he's got three steam, two steam. Ooh, oh, that's not enough damage. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't do the double energy on the ramfire. It came so late. Half his team was already gone by the time he cast it. See, Resolve doesn't actually do that much against the Ramfire Omega. Does it stop out Phantom very well? Uh, so against the big hits, Resolve doesn't do much, right? Because it's flat reduction. Mm. Better against small hits. So Resolve will help against the initial burst damage of just the auto attacks of all the rogues. But yeah, against a big Ramfire Omega, maybe a big Ranger Omega, that are hitting for over 1,000 damage, you know, reducing that by 40 that's still over 1,000 damage, so yeah, it doesn't do too much. Um, but it's good for keeping your team healthy under the initial onslaught of uh, just auto attack damage. Storming played that pretty quickly, though. I think he knew exactly what he wanted there. Loading up on those uh, AOE, AOE augments to buff his team and debuff the enemy team. All right, cool. I was doing some of the stuff in the back end, so I'm glad I can actually... We've got two matches lined up. 
uh, which is good. And I can actually watch the match now. So how how's this going? So Stormings is oh damn! So the change up is actually working for. for oh, Snake. big Ranger cast though. Did a lot did a lot of damage, but no follow up damage by any of the other units. So Stormings side is able to heal up in between the, yep. the blasts of damage. Those need to be synchronized better to actually kill the units because now they're just healing back to full. Yeah, you need to be able to uh, set those up wow. at the same time. And we have a game. One just, one. Just oh, is that two zero? That's two zero. That's two zero. Two zero. Damn. It was okay, really close cool. second game, but he just couldn't kill him fast enough with the ramfire. All right. Awesome. Yo, uh, let me know when when we're ready for Zephyr's match when that's up on screen and we can we can push that out. Yep. Just give me the green light and I'll I'll let them know. So Stormings two zero. Awesome. Yo, this is running a lot. I don't know. Is this running a lot smoother? I wasn't here for the start of the previous one. <laughs> the beginning getting matches is running a little bit smoother. Okay. <clears throat> for sure. But uh, me and Martini were talking earlier um, before the stream about this matchup using the Ramfire into an impact team. You really want to you want to ramp that up as soon as possible and you want to be over by a uh, game four you really need that to be over by game four and i just think um he just didn't have the just didn't have the damage on that round four yeah i felt like his casts came out a little too slowly he didn't invest yeah. enough early enough um in the rampart make sure it casts very quickly get too much time for the impasse to start building up their chains of of, uh, of casting and buffing each other and all that. Um, the goal with these rogues is really just to blast down the impasse, kill them as quickly as they can before they can start getting the, those chain casts. And it wasn't able to do it. Yeah, I also think not having the five fire um, bonus probably hurt him a little bit too. Could have done a lot more damage with the ex or the extra damage probably would have helped bursting down that those impasse, especially in the round three and leading that into four. All right. Uh, Skyrox, am I giving them that new link I'm, or can I'm, they just stop the match? I've given it to him. I've given it to him. Because people are saying the league, the link, okay. uh, I mean, the stream is lagging. So I'm testing something new quickly. Uh, yeah, okay, I think cool. this is going to fix it. I, I saw it. All right. Okay, cool. No problem. One second. Awesome. So I'm going to be starting this match. Cool. All right. And this is Zeptile against two. Uh, Dr. Spoon. So this this should be a good one. This should be uh, seed 13 versus seed 20. So Zeptile 13, Spoon 20. So it should be should be interesting to see. I think both these guys would have adapted to, to I, I would say the meta or like they would have taken the patch into consideration with changing up their teams. I don't think we're going to see the exact same thing from these guys as we did last week. I would agree. And then I've got a, a we've got a really good match after this as well. We've actually got uh, Hanega and Leomain. So both Brazilians. Ooh, I think double actually, Brazilian yeah. matchup. Those guys are. Uh, I think they're training partners. I think they work together. Exactly. Now they gotta exactly. face each other. Wow. And what's crazy with that is the 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 winner of that is actually up against Storming, which is again their training partner. Oh so, no. Uh, that's gonna be it's yeah. We've Wild. got a, a good couple of matches coming up for sure. Uh, for that's sure. actually unfortunate for those guys that they have to face each other so early. It is. Yeah, yeah. I've got DMs from all of them saying, "Yo, <laughs> like they're upset." Oh man. That's the Leo man, by the way, got uh, second place in the export tournament. So uh, Leo man had a great <laughs> showing. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah game? and again as we said storming's had a great showing that first tournament and high highly ranked player Hanega also a highly ranked player all three of those guys very good unfortunate for them for sure yeah bit of a shame with the random brackets that they all got <laughs> lined up like that <laughs> yeah, one has to go to the loser bracket it is what it is 
Okay, we see it. We see an umber gyro. Wow, spoon with a lot of composites in his team. I didn't see a single primary affinity. It looked like a full composite comp. That's going to be interesting to see. Which is yeah, this is going to be a good one than what Zeptile is running. If Zeptile yeah. chose the team that I saw before the game, it is full water. Yeah, full water, and then he has the tsunami. I think. So we have we have one team where the entire team is one primary affinity. And then on the other side, all composites with no primary. So completely different strategies. Uh, by the way, Skyrox, is this on stream? Is uh, the match on stream yeah, right now? Zepp and, Zepp and Spoon's on stream. Yeah, perfect. Sorry, because I'm looking at the YouTube and I think I'm obviously delayed. Yep, yep, yep. Awesome. So I've seen a... A couple of teams now where people have Adorius in their deck, but not a single person has used it yet. So, <laughs> do you think that's a waste of deck space? I think Adorius needs some help. Uh, <laughs> it's a hundred cost unit, and it's not as good as some of the other hundred cost units. So, putting it yeah. putting it in a team, it looks it looks cool. It's this big fancy looking elk and. I don't know. It has a synergy that matches another unit in the game, maybe, but it's a rough one. It's in a it's in a weak spot, so definitely a contender for maybe getting some some buffs soon. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Because Adorius is one of the 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 people's favorites. Yeah, you got to right. make sure those tier five alluvials uh, definitely have some power. We've seen plenty of Ramfire do well. We've seen Phosphorus shine. Dual F might start seeing some uh, some power some soon. Love. Titan Or has been a bit a bit on the weaker side, but I, I think we might see some uh, some Colossus Titan Or stuff too. And the Dorius yeah. is really the the tier five that's feeling a bit left out right now. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Interesting start. So we've got the classic uh, Toxic Berserker start from Spoon, mm -hmm. and uh, a pretty sporadic Water start, which which ended up working out for Zeptile. Um, so now he goes with the bulwark. You've given me the stream for Spoon and Zeptile. Do you want me to switch between them? I'm just not sure it's going to work particularly well because the more people we add in here, the laggier it gets. No, 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 no. Just, just leave, I, just I leave think it. I think it's fine. Oh, so, so you want me to just to give it to one person? Is that correct? I just need one person in here at any time because that improves the connection makes for sense. everyone. Makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. Zeptile so thinking about a bond here. Yeah, That's interesting. So he's now on turn two. He has five water, three bulwark, and two invoker. This is potentially really strong. Spoon going immediately for three berserkers on turn two. Uh, we, yeah. we, don't, we haven't really seen this much recently. We've seen a lot of like toxic colossus starts, but going straight into the berserker is definitely yeah. a mistake. I think that was a, a mistake for sure. This, this water now is just so strong. You're constantly casting the and the uh, sin elf is a really good unit even even for 70 mastery points it's good for 70 mastery points especially with that water bonus yeah and these berserkers they can put out a lot of damage over the course of a fight berserkers scale they ramp up as the fight prolongs but they're not tanks and right now spoon only has berserkers on his board so he doesn't have anything that actually wants to take aggro so I'm not sure where he's going with this. He's, he's they're also front line, times. and they're directly in the front line. Yeah, this is a risky move. He's going to need to put in some kind of defense into this comp, or else he's just going to get blown up by by this water comp. Yeah, you can't be having your uh, a melee carry up front taking all of that damage. You need to give them time to be able to ramp yeah. up. Okay, so he has added in a Cardiwax, but no Colossus. So this is just an additional Toxic. And then he has a Mud Gorilla invading the back line. Yeah, Cardiwax didn't even get his taunt off. Does look like he rips through them, though. It was, it was just enough. Yeah, it was just enough. Also, this uh, this Flood, this Tiktaalik off on left kind of chilling over there not doing anything would have been nice to see him use his hp pool uh, to actually absorb some damage over on the right yep. to protect his dps carries uh not a fan of this positioning way over on the left it feels very out of place so uh, a bit of a misstep there i would say on zeptile's part 
yeah, I really don't like where this is sitting. It's not, it's not contributing at all to, to protecting his damage dealers. I will say rogue uh, augment is actually kind of busted. You can really throw someone off in a turn by putting that on. Uh, I beat Viper by putting a rogue augment on my Sin Alf, just destroyed his. <laughs> yeah. Uh, especially if you're against opposing rogues, if all of their damage comes from rogues and you have a Scion that doesn't really want to sit in your own backline, just send him to the enemy backline and then, and then he's yeah. perfectly safe. It's actually hilarious. Exactly. All right. This is actually pretty crazy. Escha has just moved on to uh, the next round through a DQ. So he is oh. in the quarterfinals through a DQ. I'm not sure uh, if Quance was ever here. I think Quance won, won by a... Yeah, I don't know why. No. Yeah. Quance, Quance uh, got through round one through a DQ, round two through a DQ, and apparently he's not even here, so Escha just got through. Wow. Yeah. Weird stuff. And the Synalf's uh, Omega got uh, Oh, broken See how much damage there. that sure. freaking sure. Ranger did? Let's run that back. I want to look at that damage again. Yeah, I mean, this this blood isn't going to kill anything here. Its damage output's pretty low. I think if he can protect <laughs> the Ranger's Gauntlet, I think he can do some great <laughs> yeah, stuff. It's so stupid. <laughs> Uh, interesting play by Spoon, by the way. I wanted to point out he put the sloth of, over there to aggro onto the flood so that when the Sinalf pulled out its Omega, it was only hitting that big, beefy tank, and all of his uh, Berserker frontline was able to be completely safe. I don't think I've ever seen anyone use flood before. So, this, like, personally, I haven't. So, this should be this is great to watch. I'm actually really liking this, this hard water comp. Puts the Indomitable there on the uh, impact water links. Probably a good move there to keep his Sin Alpha alive for a little bit longer. Honestly, I might even move his Flood back over to the other side so his Sin Alpha isn't beaming a unit that's all the way over there. I feel like that's a bit of a waste. Okay, Spoon adds in the Dorius, finally. For some reason... Interesting. I hope I didn't uh, blow out everyone's eardrums with, with typing there. Uh, oh, man, yeah, I'm glad you noticed that. Damn, that's sin off damage. Uh, yeah, to, I think that Null. Spoon misplayed a little bit by putting the Dorius in the back line there, so the Sin Alf wasn't attacking the Sloth anymore. Because the in the previous round, the Sloth tanked two of the Omegas from the Sin Alf, and this time the Sin Alf was able to do free damage on the Cardalox, get that out of the way, and then they could, because the damage dealers were the only other thing over there, they were able to just tank, um, they were able to just kill all of the Berserkers. It's the Gauntlet, too. Yeah, good point. The Gauntlet also hitting the uh, Berserkers that are directly in front of the Adorius for most of the time. Is my audio okay now? I just switched sources yeah. to, a different, to a different mic. It was uh, it was coming in through my webcam. It may have been a bit low quality. No, it's fine. I think it was okay. All right, so who do, you th who do we think is going to win this round? Because this is actually really interesting. I've never seen a team like Spoons, and I've definitely never seen a team like Zeptiles, but um, a bit inspirational. I've, I've always wanted to build like a proper uh, shrimp team, so I like this. Oh, that I think it's a Zeptile putting that. Okay. Yeah, Zeptile putting in the the uh, buffalo right in front of the sloth, keeping his sent off, doing a lot of damage onto where he needs it instead of just wasting it, I think is going to win in mm. this round. Do you know how it works, uh, Kyle? If Sinelf hits something with thorns, what happens with Oof. the Omega? Oof. This is all on the back of this Ranger. Uh, thorns don't do anything with Omegas. Thorns uh, basically reflect pure damage on being attacked. 
Okay, so it wouldn't reflect flesh either. Correct. This guy's on his flesh shit right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, any omega, so whether it's a beam from something or a, or anything else, like it's not going to trigger thorns. It only it only reflects on attacks. Scoriax cooking in his head. This is close though, because you know the uh, spoons units are getting right up in there, almost almost breaking through and and, and deleting. Uh, Zip files carries that are protected in the corner there. I think if Spoon would have, you know, like we said, not used his berserkers in front line, he would be looking a lot better right now. He could have moved that uh, sloth over any side he wanted and slotted in with some of the extra mastery points to move. But now that he's kind of like, he would have to move everything, and it would just cost so much many mastery points to move that cardalox over, rip plant somewhere else. I'm not a fan of the positioning from Spoon here. But it's still, and with that being said, I still think it's for anybody's game this last round. Interesting. Decides to put the Berserkers over onto the left side of the uh, battle board. So he wants to aggro them onto the Flood so that they can't get any heals. Also out of the way of the Sin Elf Beam. Fortunately, the Rip Lance aggroes onto the Atlas instead of moving over to the uh, back line. It looks like that Gorilla with the passive where he just attacks and it's an AoE. And the second hit is just doing so much damage. That was close. That was a very close round, too. If I was Spoon, I'd be fuming right now. Yeah, but very close round. I think Dr. Spoon probably not going to be happy with where he put his Berserkers there. I think if he would have staggered them a little bit further behind, he could have slotted in his tanks. And especially with how fast Rip Lance movement speed is, it would have gotten to the same place in what, like a half a second, a second later than it would have otherwise. I think that was a big mistake on his part there. Especially because that last round... Zeptile's comp really ramped up. Okay, so there is some <laughs> some controversy on the back end right now. Quants got something mixed up, and he obviously missed the five-minute mark with s -Jud. He's come back. We've asked s -Jud if he wants to progress through an actual match. Uh, now that Quants is here, he said that he wants to carry on with the DQ. So... Uh, if it's As, only been five minutes, he only loses one match in the series. It's no, been it like, 10. Okay. It was like if 15, it's 10, then he's 15, out. 15, maybe. It was yeah. quite some time before yeah. he returned. Yeah, we did We did give the chance of, of them playing the match, but no. Uh, Shard, we, we left it to Eshad to, to decide. He claimed DQ. So that's... So yeah, he's progressing to the quarterfinals in, in that format. Um, can you fix the time till next match thing on start GG? I don't know how I can do that here, man. Uh, wait, hold on. It's like on the bracket thing at the top. Yeah, yeah, They had no yeah. options. It was like, set the duration of each round and that's it. And that's not how I want to run the tournament. So. Yeah, that's so stupid. And Spoon and Zeptal are back into their next match now. It looks Who like won the first one, Zep, right? Zep won, and now Spoon has... Um, switched into the classic empath build and it looks like zeptile stayed with his same team comp i think in these best of threes winning that first game is such a huge buff because then it's up to your opponent to switch it up a little bit and then from there you have even more insight on what they're bringing into the tournament so you can you can play it, you can adjust accordingly because maybe if you have this one deck that's good into both these decks, you can use that. Less risk. Oh, I see, I see where the, the mix up was. I don't know why it does that actually. I've never seen that before. I was afraid that if I didn't set a start time, that it would just start DQing people if their matches went long. 
Zeptile running the uh, three water bonus with the three bulwark start. Taking them in the front this time. From what I've seen. Yeah, it's a bit of a solid kind of tanky front line. And then your only real damage source is this uh, Ranger with a glove with no Scion bonus. It's a... Uh, it's more of a setup, right? It's not a super aggressive, really strong round one, but it's also not weak by any means. It's not bad because the Cara Blue Thorns is good, and the um and the Atlas Shield makes it a lot tankier than you might think, and so it does surprisingly well. Yeah, I think it's a it's a solid round one. It's not nowhere near the best, most aggressive, always going to win kind of round one boards, but it's but it's decent. Also, it's no, it's got no, it's only got one T zero. So that means it should beat T zeros after the ten percent nerf. That's true. It's running Atlas and Caribou who didn't receive that nerf. So even though they're like cheap units, they uh, they still have their full stats. How do you feel about the Sin Elf matchup into this Empath team, Kyle? I think the Sin Elf kind of struggles to do enough damage without more invokers. I agree. Yeah, uh, I've played this matchup a little bit, and it is kind of hard. You would think it would be like good for the burst damage, but as, by the time your Sin Elf is casting, the Empaths are as well. And unless they have like this weird placement, it kind of just sometimes it can't even kill anything. It depends if if they add a lot of resolve to their team. If they're running fortification catalyst, uh, because the the Sinoff beam actually hits five times per second for four point two seconds, so it actually hits like twenty one times, uh, doing little ticks of damage each time. So resolve actually mitigates a ton of that damage. Um, I think into these empath clumps in the comp that Zeptile is running, the Ranger bomb is going to be the thing to watch as the, the main damage source. Because that's going to do single big hits that hit in a small AoE as well, so they can potentially hit multiple units at once. It's going to be less impacted by heals over time or things like Resolve. Yeah, I think I think Zeptile is going to win out this one. I'm really liking this team. It, it's just great as a general team, and I can't see how it loses to Blaze Knight Empath. But if I'm proven wrong, so be it. <laughs> the biggest issue for him is going to be air. Uh, I know we just we just nerfed air, but it still does something. And with these three air units coming out, it's going to those air units are going to go hyper very quickly against all the water units, and it's going to delay that initial cast, which. I mean, Zephyr's team is all about getting casts and ramping up his invokers. So, air is going to be his biggest enemy here. The heals are good I will too. Say, mm. Yeah, I, I will say Spoon set up his board in a way where this Sin Elf is, if it kills one unit, it ends the Omega there. So, like he put that in the tier zero empath over to the right and then he has the ranger over there so nothing's like behind anything which is an interesting play oh yeah he set it up really well oh man that's such a wasted ult yeah i mean sin off ulted four times into only one unit right and uh yep. just cast it into nothing it never went yep. through the pack and kept going very uh, smart what, play yeah what we're really gonna need to see from zeptile here is um I think a big a big ranger weapon here. This ranger weapon needs to do work, and last round it uh, didn't really do anything. I would also, if I was Zeptile, um, I would even think about moving the Sin Elf and somewhere else so he can get the max out of that Omega. Hmm, I think better. people, I, I do think that this may be counterintuitive a lot of the times, but if you can get it right, I think positioning and like moving your alluvials around, even with the extra cost sometimes it is like actually so huge especially if you can see it 
if you can see it in your head and you move that placement around, it can be such a game changer. Positioning is so huge in this game. And we can see Zeptile not afraid to start clumping up because the flood is going to just be the one taking all of those tornadoes. So more than happy to start clumping around that uh, Sanalf. Yo, guys, I might need to, to bounce for a little bit. All good. And I'll be back a little bit later. No problem at all. Let's see if you can get this Sin Elf to really do some damage. They've got, there's an ebb in the back left. I've never seen that on a Blazon on Empath. Um, it's definitely redirected the Gauntlet a few times now, which is helpful, but... Oh, damn, that Gauntlet does damage. Yeah, I mean, the ebb did a great job of, of pulling the Gauntlet aggro at the start. Um, that's gonna that's gonna buy Spoon a lot of time here. Is it enough though? Oof, Blazing Knight gets one tapped. Now the two Atipos are gonna die. Okay, this Gauntlet's putting in the work. <laughs> Gauntlet is like the anti empath machine. Uh, Skyrox, I've just brought you into a a group. Um, I'm gonna go, but you can tell them when to when to start, and I'll leave you guys to find the next couple of matches. Yeah. No stress. I should be gone for about thirty minutes. Oh, good. Thank you, sir. And you can you can send uh, Hanega the the Vod Ninja thing. But cool. I'll catch you guys in a little bit, and keen to see keen to see what what happens. All right. I'll catch you guys in a bit. Later. Yep. What do you think about this placement for Zeptile on the tier zero fleash in the corner there? I guess to take out that ebb, but it's not going to take it out even with two, maybe even three of its omegas, right? Especially with the shield on there. Yeah, the way he has his other units placed in the back line, it's not going to take the Blazonite Tornadoes either because uh, he already has the, the Flood set up to do that. Um... Yeah, sure. I would have put it right in front of the stand off, but let's see let's see how what he's thinking here. I'm not sure what he was doing. I mean, yeah, maybe he's just looking for a little bit of extra damage on that ebb. Maybe it kills it and, and lets the ranger cast one more time on the pack instead of off to the left. I don't know. The flush doesn't do any damage though. <laughs> yeah. I will see. I see what he's doing now. Wait, okay, so the up. ranger just this... two casts on, on the ebb. That Sinoff did not look like it was going to be aggroing its Omega on the ebb there, but holy oh, wait, Sinoff just wait. Ooh, <laughs> pause. Uh -huh. what? Let's pretend that. Didn't what is happen. that? <laughs> I mean, look at the gauntlet damage. That was absolutely insane, though. Like even oh, with that, okay. Just I mean, that's gauntlet carry right there. We got to replay that. that. So much. What the hell so happened? We had two things going on there. We had gauntlet just demolishing the pack, and then we had Sinoff just kind of derping off on his own. Oh, he did hit something at first. I thought he was hitting just a, like a ghost. I missed him at initially attack it. Attack it. I know he did <laughs> later on. He hit nothing. He, he there was literally nothing, nothing yeah. there. He got his gauntlet off like four or five times as well. Like with the water <laughs> just continually giving him energy regen. He got it off so many times. He did so much damage. I wish we could have seen the numbers on that. Yeah, we didn't see any of the damage uh, stats tabs being shown, but... Uh... The water plus tsunami, right? So every time he casts, he gets a big chunk of his energy back immediately. And then all the water, giving it a lot of regen to fill back up. Yeah, that gauntlet was doing work. That was game, maybe a right? new, uh, Yeah, maybe a new empath counter as well. Maybe. <laughs> Great plays by uh, Sceptile. And good job by Spoon as well. The positioning on his empaths were huge for those first few rounds. Even though he's... He, um, uh, he lost that that round two and three. I think was huge positioning for Spoon. Um, was that it for that series? Yep, that was a two zero. 
two so oh. power one, two to zero. And then real quick, um we we did talk about it a little bit. Smartass got first place in the first Alluvium Inferno, and then he got first place in the Exburg tournament. So both tournaments he got first. Dude is absolutely on a tear. And this uh he, these competitors are lucky enough that they don't have to play him today. So that is a huge buff. So we will see a new winner today. Guaranteed. Yep. Yes. Drop your favorite to win in the chat here. Let us know what you're thinking, guys and gals. I'm thinking it's going to be uh, either Shabim, Esjud, or Mindy. I think all three of those players are very strong. And then you can't take out the Brazilian boys. And Nega is very good. Uh, um. Why can I not remember the TFT storming? Storming, the, I mean, storming is incredible as well. Like I, I was watching his streams a lot. Very smart, uh, cerebral player. And then you have uh, what was the last one? I am so sorry, my brain. Leo Main, yeah. Leo, Leo Main, Main. One that took second in the uh, next board tournament. Also, really good player. Very good player. <clears throat> and what what was he playing? Do you know what his team comp was in, during the export tourney? Uh, he had a variant of the Arknight comp uh, in that okay. in that tourney, but who knows what'll bring this time, right? With the patch. Yeah, we haven't even seen any Arcanites today yet. Very, very cool to see. And the Arcanites were dominating that first Alluvium Inferno, so it's going to be interesting to see if we can even see any people bring in those Arcanites. I think maybe it's because these empaths are so strong. What do you think about that? Yeah, it could be because uh, they're worried about the empaths. It could be because they just want to try out new things. They think, you know, they had some ideas that weren't quite viable before, and now with the patch, maybe they are. Hard, hard to say. Yeah, but, I, uh, I wouldn't count the Arcanites out. The nerfs were not that big, so we'll have to see. Yeah, I don't think they're terrible, but um, I did play a few few games earlier today. They did seem a decent bit worse, but I still think they they feel viable. And then, like Zeptile, I was playing a full water build with some invokers. And water seems so strong right now, especially with the, the nerf to air. Um, I think water is very, very good. Hugely slept on, I think. I, I haven't seen many people playing it in ranked. All right, Jimbo. Well, I'm going to have to drop out of it now um, and stream. So... I will be leaving okay. for possibly around an hour, but I will be returning back later to Look join forward to it. You'll catch the finals. Oh, good, sir. All right, see you guys. Awesome. Yes, sir. See you, man. Um, uh, back on to that, that water, the water point I was making. Water feels just so much better, mm. especially um, with the air nerfs. Uh, I had it pulled up here. Yeah, so like the recent update today... They nerfed air from having an energy de debuff on the opponent team from 40 with 3 air, 60 with 5 air, and 80 with 7 air. Just absolutely demolished that number. And it needed to happen because water was getting absolutely zero play because of air. And air was, mm. and it wasn't really just air was calcaring the water. It was more that people were using air for the uh, allies to dodge and the air dodge chance. So it just kind of had that. Um, inadvertent effect on water so people weren't playing it as much but now with the and and that got nerfed as well so the dodge chance for air got nerfed and the energy debuff was 40 60 80 and now it's only 20 35 50 so these getting seven air is pretty much really not even worth it probably even if you're playing into water but um now this opens up room for the water the synergies to work because the whole reason you would want to use water is so you can get energy even faster. And now with the energy debuff out and um, <clears throat> the augments that take away energy are uh, not as strong anymore as well. Those got a nerf. So water is looking really strong. And I had used it a few times. I, I haven't played much today because I was getting stuff ready for the tournament. I'm a, I'm a company man, you know. Um, face of alluvium all that jazz but the few games that i did play with water very very fun actually too it was good but it wasn't just good it was fun um i find the scion and invoker water builds to be really fun invokers in general are amazing great times 
But yeah, water's very good right now. And it looks like we're heading into our next match, right? We certainly are. Yeah, yeah, I really want to use water more often too. I think I, water was really strong, even when air was there. Well, it wasn't so much water, it was more water gauntlet. So I hope it doesn't become too strong again. Um, but I agree that air was holding it back quite a bit. But air actually only debuffs the first cast of the opponent. So if you have enough healing, if you have enough staying power, air shouldn't actually affect you too much because air units in general aren't actually all that good. Like getting seven air on a like a strong team is actually quite difficult. You have to be able to eliminate them quickly and air just doesn't have that. Yeah, and I agree with that. The problem I think is is that even to get that first Omega off was so hard. And that's you need to get that first Omega off so you can get the ball rolling on your damage. But if you're just sitting there and waiting and waiting to get your first Omega off, then your invokers are pretty much worthless. But it looks like moving into this next match, Hanega and Leo Main, going with that classic build that we were seeing a lot in the first uh, tournament with the three air the Bloom, Arcanite, and then you have the Magma in there, depending on what the opponent plays. So very familiar team comp for those of you who watched the first tournament. The uh, Arcanite, Hyper Carry, you can either go with the uh, Scoriax or the Phosphorus. See how they play it out. For sure, I'm just trying to line up our next match, so you, you keep going. I really like the three air fighter opener here, though. I think I've done this before. It's very strong because with like the dodge fighter, <laughs> oh, so good. Yeah, especially if you can get it where the opponent isn't attacking the polar bear because you really want to ramp up that polar bear using his omega. He takes away some of the stats from the opponent. And on round one, that's going to be huge. But if your opponent can focus onto that polar bear right away, that's not good. So you can see he intentionally put it in the back so that wouldn't happen. Looks like he's setting it up so interesting. It, I'm thinking that he's going to go for Scoriax if he's building a wall around here. Let's see. I'm seeing Toxic way, yeah. become so much more popular lately. It's insane. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially this Ripterus and uh, Cardulo combination this, in the early rounds was very strong. We'll see how Leo Main responds. Again, this is a mirror matchup. Uh, two Brazilian players, I believe they, um, they're they practicing a lot together, so they know what each other is going to do. So a lot of this is going to be mind games. And these are both highly ranked players on the ladder, so that we should see quality gameplay out of them, quality decision-making, positioning. This is going to be a good match. Leo Main goes down again. I think because this is a mirror matchup, he might be trying to think outside of the box or try and get some rounds because of his positioning on that first round. I don't think was I don't think he was happy with it. Mm, for sure. I cut my freaking finger the other day and I have no idea how. W finger cut in the chat, boys. My god, crazy. Okay, takes... Moves his tier 0 air fighter. I'm surprised to see that he didn't try and... Oh, I guess he doesn't have enough gold. I was going to say I'm surprised to see he's not buffing up his Scoriax. But next turn... Because... <clears throat> oh, interesting. Is he going to go. put in Phosphorus instead? He is. Okay. I like that. And um, I think it... I hope it doesn't get trapped here. No, it no his okay. Ranger has to move out. His Ranger has to move out. Okay, so what he's doing here is he's put his Tier 0 in front of there so the Phosphorus can <coughs> get to the front as fast. <sighs> While I think Leo Mains is going to be... Oh, no, it is. It's completely trapped. I don't think that was Ooh. intentional. That's unfortunate. So what happened there was Hanega was trying to 
because the phosphorus has such high movement speed, it would have gotten to the front line way too fast. So he wanted to put his ranger in front of it because the ranger is a lot slower. And he wanted to get the his phosphorus to the front line after Leo mains. So his phosphorus could aggro onto Leo mains. But the problem is, is Leo mains front line walked up too fast and the ranger just stayed in place. So he got completely trapped there. Really unfortunate from uh, for Hanega. Thank you to Lula for the W in the chat. I see you, big dog. <clears throat> okay, going for the Stellar Devourer. Holders, okay, switches to Perpetual uh, Entropy. Holder gains five energy regen, and its first Omega refunds fifty percent of the energy cost. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what he puts that on. I'm assuming. I'm not sure, really, because he wants to put um, some kind of damage and then attack speed on Scoriax. I would be surprised to see that put on Scoriax, if he even plays it. But right now, he's going for the three bloom. Three bloom, super, super strong. It makes your Phosphorus an absolute tank. I think a bit of an interesting play not putting an augment on his... Phosphorus yet? Something we saw in the first tournament that kind of hurt a lot of players was they took way too long to put the buffing augments onto their hyper carry. The um, e even with the Blaze Knight Empath teams that we saw in the first tournament, people took way too long to put damage on those, and it seemed like the difference maker really was those who. Uh, it, and it didn't always work out, but the difference maker seemed to be those who put the damage on top of their um, carries. Oh, that Loloro did a really <clears throat> good job redirecting his team and bringing Phosphorus yep. up the front. He's going to have to move Phosphorus to the next round or it's not going to end well. Not only did that stun the back line and get them aggroed, but the his the Lolura's aggro hit the Carablu, so the, or the Carablu, Cardulo? Is that what it is? I think so. The Water Buffalo. And the Water Buffalo's Omega taunts the enemy team. So getting the taunt onto only the, the Lulura because he stunned him and charmed him back, that allowed Leo Main's team <clears throat> to focus Hanega's Phosphorus instead of going onto the tank. Therefore, all of that damage wasn't wasted. Yeah, Scarox just needs Scarox needs a little bit more time to ramp up than than Phosphorus does, but he managed to stall it for long enough. Um, he's got his own Lalura and he's setting up the attack speed debuffs. This should do really well. The one on Singe feels a little bit weird to me. I agree. I'm not sure what that's about. He's gonna double down on Arcanine, I think. He just realized that he can't actually place Scarox in front of Phosphorus. I think Skyrox back yeah. left makes perfect sense here. I okay, think it that's does. Weird <clears throat> up front would be weird. Now he's completely blocked in phosphorus. Not necessarily a bad thing, but mm -hmm. I kind of like <clears throat> I kind of liked it where he had it because all of these melee units for Hanega are going to walk up. Therefore, Scoriax is still going to be in the back line. It's just going to take longer for those melee units to walk up and meet in the middle. And that way, if Scoriax is over onto the right side, his Omega, which does splash damage, can be attacking the same unit that all of his melees are, instead of having the split here. Even with the Lolura, it would have been able to, in the spot that he had it, it would have been attacking the front line. But we'll see. He could still definitely win this. What, what augment was on that Lolura? Did that have Stella Devour on it? Surely not. Not really, to be honest. <laughs> the, the sorry, Scarox... sorry for our coughing, by the way, stream. We are both sick right now, I, as ironic as that is. The Scoriox just doesn't have any augments on it. I don't know why he's taking so long to, to up his hyper carry and give it something. He's put augments on a lot of other alluvials, but yeah, as, as you said, I found that just does not work that great. The big gauntlet guarantees the win, I reckon, but... We'll have to see. I, I do think it's a mistake to put his ranger right next to the uh, Scoriox because, as you said, those gauntlets do so much damage 
and Leo Mane's gonna e- even if um I-, I would honestly put the Ranger on the other side, but the the splash damage on the Gauntlet is so huge. You don't want that hitting both your Ranger and your, the, your Scoriax. If I were in that guy, I would be moving my Ranger just slightly over to where the splash damage from the opponent's Ranger's Gauntlet isn't attacking both at the same time. It's just a bit of a waste of health that you could use at the, especially at the end of a round. And if the the opponent's Scoriax is still alive and he's attacking two units that are right next to each other at the end of the round where he has all of that attack speed, it's just not worth it. There's no reason not to just play it safe and move over the Ranger a little bit. They did reduce the splash damage radius about 10%, which is really interesting. Yeah, it, it changed from 20 hexes to 18 hexes, but I mean, they're right next to each other. I don't know. I reckon it's a good change. I've really felt that sometimes a Scoriox splash is hitting something when it feels like it should be a little bit off. Um, so I agree. I, th- I think it's actually a pretty good impact here. The Lalura moving on I... to the left is hype. Oh my god. You nailed it. I think it does have Stellar Delight to Vera, stopping Gorox from casting. Yeah, we'll see if he can do enough damage here with his Scoriax. They're all clumped up for him perfectly, so. Very nice. Yeah, the Scoriax was just barely able to live with a sliver of health there. And, you know, if it's still alive, it's still doing damage. So with that Omega splash damage, all of those units right next to each other, that's going to hurt. And it goes for the Indomitable on the... um, What is that character called? I can't even remember. By the way, we've got Esjad and Patat coming up for our next game. I've got them on standby right now. Sounds good. Decides to move over his Scoriax. It'll be interesting to see if Leo Main predicts that at all. Um, Puts over the Cardulo, I think, to catch whatever Rogue will jump onto his Ranger because... Again, we've said it a million times, Ranger does do a lot of damage. But I think that might actually just be the 10 mastery point gauntlet because it doesn't look like he has a 10 mastery point gauntlet. And he's had that on for a minute. So uh, maybe he won't be doing damage because even if, even though the 70 cost fire gauntlet, it would do so much more damage. He really, really wants that three triple bloom bonus going <clears throat> you can see all of them focusing the seer still hasn't even gotten down to the point where it needs to use its indomitable but once it gets to that point it's still going to be alive mm. it's so powerful when you're like yeah especially on those Ooh. crazy tanks a little unlucky that they weren't attacking his seer wasting a bunch of time with auto attacks so instead they were um they were able to kill the Ripterus, and because of the splash damage on the scoriax killed the seer is why not is he doing have, have why is he doing no damage to phosphorus because phosphorus is he built tank phosphorus and with leo's bloom it's going to be giving more health and he's just way too tanky it's getting omni vamp too Exactly. Got the bloom. It's got the health regen from that augment. So although he built the, the augments late, here. he did eventually build them. But he's on thirty-five HP, so that could have easily gone the other way. But now it's a bit too hard for Renega to come back. I think. I don't know. We'll see. This round is definitely going to uh, decide need- it, and it's been back and forth. It's been a fun series here. Oh yeah, he needs to equip the suppressors and suppress healing, or it's not going to work. Do they both have toxic? No. Yes. Yeah, I think it's a perfect mirror matchup, isn't it? Or did, does one so. have water? I can't tell. Okay, decides to move his Cardilo around a little bit. Okay, wants to put the Indomitable on his Seer. So Sinch. now he has double Indomitable on his front line. Okay, decides against it. Wants to put some He's running out of time. Yeah. 
Okay, so he is going to put double indomitable on his front line. Seer and Singe both have it. Therefore, I think that's about... If it works out perfectly, it'll be 12 seconds because both of them will get it off. But because Scoriax has the splash damage, Ooh. it shouldn't match up perfectly like that. He played up against the Lalura perfectly. Let's see if it pays <laughs> off. Yeah, that was a great... Because his Lalura he just debuffed that. the attack speed of maybe Phosphorus, but definitely Scoriax. <clears throat> Yes, sir. We can. I have Welcome no back. idea if you're on stream, though. Hold on. This is going to be a close one. Yeah, the Indomitable did so much work there, too. Unfortunately, the Seer and Singe hits the Scoriax a bit, but it's not going to be enough to matter. Okay, Let's you see, should be on stream now, TSG. You're not, on, stre close. You're not on stream. Hold on. Ooh, super close round, and Hanega, oh my goodness. One sec, Tishy. It was back and forth the whole last oh, damn. five seconds. Can we get a replay on that, please? Let's do it. Replay. It's replaying now. It's 1-0 now. Oof. Yeah, super back and forth the last few seconds of that round. Could have went to anyone. I think what won it for Hanega was really getting that Ripterus damage down on the Lalura really quickly. And then the Ripterus with his uh, movement speed was able to go back to the front line before getting charmed. And the uh, Cardulo, because his movement speed wasn't as fast, still charmed, so it was able to not allow that Lolura to then move over to the Scoriax, and he got him out of there before that attack speed debuff hurt it too much. You hear TSG, it's all good. Oh, yeah, awesome. good. All right, we're into the next game. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, what, so what, what was that? Was that 1 1 or? Yeah, it's 1 0 no, now. One, zero. I've got SJ on the sidelines right. for the next game as well. <coughs> perfect, super perfect, super yeah. close. I could have went to either person easily. Yeah, I'm just going to refresh this page. I'm having a bit of an issue, but I'm going to re uh, refresh. I'll be back in one sec. Uh, was this a run back or was Hanega the only one who picked the same team? I wasn't able to see it. I have no idea. <coughs> I think it's, a Sorry. it's probably a run back. We got the famous uh, influencer of Alluvium, uh, Dick King's in the chat. Nice to see you there. We also have another famous influencer, Crystal, I've, I saw a little bit earlier. We got all this, all the stars out. It's like a UFC event. You like pan to the different famous people that are in chat. We got Ricky Tan, Dick King's, Tallulah, all the big names always coming out for the Alluvium Inferno. They would never <laughs> miss it. Even the world famous YouTuber, what's good, guys? It's TSG. We yeah, have it please. all here in the Livium Inferno. Please, Dan. Okay, so it's another mirror matchup. I'm wondering. So, what I think they're doing is what Estra and Smartass did in the first Livium Inferno. Since they were training partners, they know everybody's secrets. They make a gentleman's bet to just play the same exact team comp. So they don't give more information than they need to to the opponents on stream. Smart play. I don't know. Could I, be don't wrong reckon, on that as well. I don't reckon this is the same thing. I reckon they were just training with a specific team and they don't have another one prepped. No, no, no. I think they have others prepped, but I don't think they want the, the rest of the tournament to see it. Hmm. Maybe. I could be completely off. I think you're always correct. I, You're damn right I am. That's why I'm the face of Alluvium. So, looks like goes ahead and puts the Singe and the Air Grocco in. So now he has a three bulwark. Ripterus uh, pulls out the Fire Gauntlet. I'm assuming we're going to see an exact mirror on Leo Main's side. So probably going to see the Air Grocco and Singe out as well from him. It'll just be who has the better placement. Interesting to put the 
air Graco up front line it's going to get attacked by the Riptress, and it shouldn't even it probably won't even be able to get its omega off we'll see maybe with the dodge chance okay i'm definitely wrong no i'm not i'm right i'm a fucking i'm a freaking genius okay so his Riptress gets taken out was fine though because he staggered it where of course the air Graco got killed off but it doesn't matter because his Riptress was aggroed onto the other Riptress, which is never the situation that you want to be in. Okay, All good, so Jimbo. You're not on screen. Again. So this is quite a different opener. I think they started off with their with their hyper carries a little bit earlier than this before, but we'll see. We definitely saw the speed of them giving them augments uh, quite differently before. Oh, my voice is dying. Adding phosphorus this early, good, I don't know how that's going to go. It'd be really interesting if one adds phosphorus and one goes Scoriox. I don't know what's the better play to go first. I would argue phosphorus is better. I don't know one one. 1v1. But mm. Scoriox is better behind a proper team. 100%. 100%. So what are they actually running? They're running a Bloom Toxic... Uh... Magma. Like the full call. Mm. Like three Magma, three Bloom, two Toxic. Yeah. Fascinating. Oh, it's insane. It's. I don't think it's particularly good, to be honest. I don't know how they've gotten this far, but um, it's quite interesting. <laughs> I mean, this thing would lose to empaths all day, right? Yeah, it would. Uh, it depends on how they depends on how they play it, and the organs yeah. that they choose. I think it is empath favored, but uh, it's definitely winnable. I don't know if I would say it's winnable. How would they? How would they play specially to beat empath? It depends on the empath that they're using. If they're using the stage one empath, it's very very hard, but winnable. But if you play the the more common empath build that we're seeing now with the Blaze Knight Bulwark and then empaths, and they have this stage three um, uh, tier zero empaths because of that AOE, they're still going to be able to. You're not going to be able to tear it apart enough. So that I don't think you can win. But like the normal empath deck, where it's seven empath going into something like this or some kind of uh, variant of the Arcanite hyper carry deck could definitely beat it it's just very hard and you don't you don't sure. want to you don't want it to go late my ears have just started popping so if i miss what you're saying that's why what <laughs> now this is the round where i think we're going to see uh it switch up a little bit between these two players we saw the same thing each round except for this one Okay, goes ahead and puts the seer in. Interesting choice to put seer in instead of like uh, Scoriox, because then you don't get the magma or the extra Arcanite buff. But maybe he just wants that real front line to get in there, especially with the Omega possibly helping out a bit. Putting the attack speed reduction on Phosphorus, obviously you don't want that. For Phosphorus, he's going to attack super slowly. What, what I found is you can't actually put on those Siphon Matrixes on round four or round five. Well, maybe round five. Because what happens here is maybe they help you for this round, but it's not that expensive to move Phosphorus until you give it all the augments, which he hasn't yet. And so even if it did work for this round, he can now play around it really easily next round. And then it's just, it's so much harder to move them once you've attached the augments. And so you don't, you don't want to show that. that hand too early. You really don't. I would agree. Maybe putting one down is good, but I think it, it is a pretty high risk <coughs> play to put two. If Phosphorus lost all of the attack speed. I wonder why that, what that was from. Not sure, but we, we did see some of that magma buff coming into play from Leo main giving him some extra damage because that Scoriox was in the front line he also had the um singe in the front line so it was just double compounding effect especially with 
uh, Hanega's melees that were walking up. But now Hanega puts in his uh, Scoriax, and now he does have that magma bonus. I think a bit of a misplay to put in Seer instead of Scoriax that previous round, but... <clears throat> Scoriax in the middle is weird. He's just going hard on the magma. I don't think it's going to work. Also, with the magma change, I completely forgot to talk about it. Have you guys spoken about it yet? Uh, no, I, no, I, I don't think so. Yeah, so there is a new change to how magma works. If an alluvial that casts the magma, for example, a seer, if that thing faints, then its its magma that it oh, created magma disappears. disappears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a huge change. What are your What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on that? I think it that's a major, major nerf to to magma. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely not a buff. I don't know. I think it, I think it somewhat makes sense. Uh, the magma grit and resolve is a lot less than you might think to begin with, but it's better than having it not stack at all and have it stay. Um, I definitely think it should fade out or something. Just flat disappearing feels a little bit weird, or maybe stop expanding. Like, there's a lot of ways you could do it. I don't know if disappearing was the one I would have chosen. Is this game? Yeah. Yep, this is game. Boom! And that is game. Very nice. Leo main with the quick 2-0 on that. Damn. Well done. Well done. There we I'm go. updating it now. Leo main with the 2-0. And now we have... S. Jot and Patate. Patat. It's Patate, yeah, no, no, no. right? There's an E on the end of it. <laughs> I say Patat. I say Patat because it sounds more fun. And okay, fair. We got a battle of the uh, gaming sub council. No longer a thing. Um, <laughs> because they didn't do their job well enough. Just kidding. Just kidding. Agreed. But, no, no, you're, you're factual. <laughs> but no, Estrad versus Patat. Estrad, solid player. Patat knows what he's doing. But had a lackluster performance in the previous Inferno. So I, I'm giving it a slight edge to Estrud, but Patat's not a pushover. Like he he's a good player. We see some of these players who just uh, sign up to compete because for the fun of it. Nothing wrong with that at all. Actually, encourage you to do that. But um, yeah, he, he he's a good player. He's not just a pushover. Is what I'm getting at. Did someone just join with the? No, that's all good. Plus, that's not coming across <laughs> on stream. Don't worry. Yeah, oh, okay, cool. That just happens sometimes when people join, but um, right when they actually give definitely the audio. expecting Estrud to uh, pull ahead with this one. It looks like he's gonna go with the classic uh, impact build that he came up with with the Blaze Knight and the Wildfire. Cool. And so we've got we've also just putting this out there now as well. We've got a Mindia fabled uh, match after this, lined up after this. That should be a good one. And the question many okay. of you are probably asking, when Alluvium Inferno merch? Um, <laughs> our merch line will be coming out. <laughs> For Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Patak going with the uh, the semi-classic Bulwark hyper carry, or Bulwark with the Arcanite hyper carry. In this case, he doesn't have the double where it's Phosphorus or Scoriax or possibly both. Just going for just Scoriax. And with the 10% nerf, like flat nerf on tier zeros, I think it's a bit of a mistake for him to take just those for his front line. I think they're going to be way, they're way less strong now. And it, the 10% the reduction on like health and defenses doesn't seem like much, but when you put it in context for like this alluvial versus that alluvial, right now the way the meta is set, it does make a huge difference. Uh, Estrid going with the classic. I'm just going to put my stuff down to see where you place yours strat. Love this strat. I do use it myself all the time. So what you're doing here is you're just sacking this first round so you can see what your opponent is going to play. That way your placement, that next round, is completely optimal. So this is huge, especially for an empath deck where you want to place those properly because you, as Patat is doing, we saw this strat with Torix in the last Inferno where you put your bulwarks and melees in the very back so that you can pull those empaths apart. The problem is Estrad has, I've been saying it all day today, <clears throat> and it's true, and don't doubt me because I'm a genius, Estrad has the stage three tier zero empath. 
So he's going to be trying to pull them apart. But now, not only is it not going to work as well because the stage three's AOEs are so big, like even if you pull them apart, they're still going to be a, using the AOEs on most of their team. But now Estra, because he sacked that first round, figured out where Patal was going to put a bunch of his uh, bunch of his units. He can set up optimally here in front, so they're not getting pulled apart as much. And now if Patat wants to react to Estra's positioning, it's going to cost him so many mastery points to move all of his units over. Yeah. This is going to be a good battle for sure. It should be really interesting. Estra with the triple wildfire bonus. The double Templar. I do believe this is going to be another loss in this round for him, though. I could be wrong, but I think he's going to lose this round, and then his power really starts to spike this next round. I'm actually pretty shocked he lost that round, to be honest. I mean, the, the three three nature, three water, six bulwark is a pretty tanky build to, to beat on round two. Oh, six bulwark. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, six bulwark is exceptionally difficult to beat. Yeah, I do think it's a lot weaker than it was on the last patch. I think it falls off a lot harder, but we'll see if he can pull it through. Estra now moving in his water Graco. Um, this is certainly going to be the, interesting. Yeah, puts the water Graco in because he doesn't want to give hyper using earth or air. And this mitigates most of it. Uh, the one of the big things about Estrid's comp is he does have a lot of the same tier zeros, but they're different affinities. Mm. That way he can set up he counters. Can yeah, he can counter into his opponent so that they're either not getting hyper or he gets hyper. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you don't want to sleep on a hyper bulwark for sure. It's got one of the best hypers with like a huge buff to the resistances. He's redirected the, the tornado here as well. I do... Yeah. I wish we could have seen the, the Eshard Quants match. It's a bit of a shame how that played out, but... Yeah. What well, would you got? You, I think Eshard would have won that regardless, hey? Uh, Quants is, a, really is a solid player, so I don't know. It's hard to tell. I wish, I wish we did see that. I wish it didn't play out the way it did. Okay, I was incorrect. It looks like Patat should take this, especially with his Scoriax doing... The Scoriax is left damage. untouched, yeah. <clears throat> Smart move from Patat to put his Ranger over to the side there, so the Scoriax mm. isn't getting... 100%. Stunned. I think you, you've already, you're you already starting to see the, the meta develop in and, and the skill level grow of players, because one of the things we saw in the last week, or the first week of the game coming out, was a lot of people were putting their Ranger right next to the Scoriax, like drawing the wildfire, the, the tornado, the stuns to the hard carry, which is just obviously the wrong play, but it felt like a lot of people hadn't realized that yet. Whereas now you're seeing it here. A lot of players are now using the rangers who actually draw that stun away from their hard carry to to not interrupt that DPS that they need. So it's really cool to see that develop in real time. And yeah, I, I, if if Shot isn't going to do anything about the about that Scariox, I think that's going to be a problem because that was a Scariox without augments. Depending on what organs Patat uses now, it could be a serious, serious problem. Yeah, we'll see how much of a difference these two empaths that he just put in are going to make. Yes, sir. yeah, well, absolutely. Right. We got Estra versus Patai. Patai going with the kind of classic bulwark with the Scoriax carry double magma. And Estra going with his uh, his take on the Blaze Knight build. Mm, okay. 
I mean, it, it, Esjar's team looks very well-rounded, to be completely honest, man. Three nature, three water, two magma, six bulwark, arcanite. Every single unit has a purpose on the board, which is really, really cool to see. Yeah, I will say Pata is playing better into this matchup than I thought it was mm. going to turn out, so. Absolutely. Blazing right there, going for a little stroll before he decided to enter the fight. That was cool. <laughs> yeah, a little unfortunate, but... Is is Skarag's going to get that takedown? Yes, he does. And he gets that boost on the attack speed now as well. So this could be one of the one of the buffs. Uh, one of the buffs. One of the, the changes on the patches is that 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 specific augment did get uh, fixed up. So it doesn't stack. It resets the, the time of which you just can't take out. Yeah, the healing no, is too exactly. strong. Exactly. Yeah. It looks like Estra's finally gotten to that point where he's gotten to that late game team where it doesn't even matter. His team oh, is just the gauntlet's so putting in healing. work. Big hit there from the gauntlet. Even with the gauntlet, enough. though, like he, it's good burst damage, but with the Scoriax doing uh, DPS instead of burst, it's not enough to t take him out, take out that yeah. front line. I think. Yeah, I think what Patat's missing here is some kind of stun or, or some kind of disable just to stop the healing slightly or slow it down slightly. Without that, it's just very, very tough to to let the team just cons consistently heal without stopping or any kind of interruption at all. You know what you need to do is currently the tornado is going on the gauntlet, but the gauntlet's actually your carry here. And so you might actually want to consider swapping that and just letting the tornado hit Scoriox instead. <laughs> So you think the burst damage of the gauntlet might be more valuable than the sustained damage of the Scoriox against this comp? Yeah, well, I mean, it scales over time, doesn't it? It gains Omega Power every time the gauntlet casts. Every time it casts, it does gain more Omega Power, yep. Yeah, so, yeah, so an event, you, you, you can't beat the healing over time. You just need to get the gauntlet up to a point where it one-shots things, I think. Once you break it's enough of the healers, shot. you can do it. Because, yeah, all at that point, all you need is to, to start taking them down one by one and the healing... The healing loses its a uh, its effectiveness. Is this going to be a comeback from S shot? Patat had the first three rounds pretty convincingly. Pretty convincingly, but as we said, this is more of a, a ramp up team comp. Whereas uh, Patat with the early tier zero bulwarks. Uh, very early game centric plus they got the 10 percent uh Oof. reduction on health defenses they got that nerf from the last patch so oh scariox gonna pick okay, up that well, yeah. those it, it big looks... gauntlet blasts again too doing a lot of damage yeah not healing up as much from the um the augments on the side of Patat. it looks like he is breaking through yeah the augments are damaging the healing structure quite a bit Oh, he's still having Is trouble. Enough, though? They've all gone high. I'm not sure it'll be enough. I don't think it. I don't think it will be. So yeah, close, because though. Be, well, the thing is though, is that his stronger units are in the back here, right? So like, Patat broke through the cheaper, less, uh, the cheaper, less strong units, but now he's moved on to these fifty cost tier zero empaths and the links, which are a lot more strong. Have, have a lot more buffs to him. I don't really think it was that close. Nah, it wasn't. It wasn't. It looked like he had a chance. I, I think it looked like was he was playing with him. Through. It looked like he was breaking through for sure, but then uh, just got held up once he hit the core of the pack. Yeah. It's like a multi-wall strategy right now. He got, he got over the first wall, got through the first wall, and then the second one was just much taller, much wider, impossible to break through. We love your analogies, and TSG. What's yeah, oh, taller, man, wider, it. like much stronger. Probably like six foot six, two hundred twenty pounds. Yeah, body fat. Almost like he, he, yeah, he pretty much came everything. across Big Shack. He came across Big Shack, and it was just impossible to get past it. That's exactly, exactly. what happened, right? <laughs> yeah, that or Jim Burino. You could use either. Yeah. Thing. So essentially, what I'm seeing was he's got Jim Burino on the front line, where it's it's, it's solid, but it's it's you can get through it, and then you come come across Big Shack, and it's like, all right, this is just mm. impossible. I, I had this slip here a lot. Like he's running out of time. He's debating here a lot how he wants to spend his point. <laughs> Extra choking a little here. bit. A bit of a choker. Playing some stuff, <laughs> undoing, <laughs> rethinking, almost running out of time. The the JPP runner here. Using what is and going we, on? Yo, we see the cling. I think the cling is going to be very, very impactful if we can get off some of those stuns, like I said. 
if it can survive long enough, I think those disables might be enough to actually break through. Oh, it's a lot more spread out now. They're not all focused on the top right. The disables could be big. The seven mm -hmm. bulwark means lots of resistance. They just need to they, they just need to hold off the healing thing. until the gauntlet kills something. Yeah, that, and there we go. It big, takes out a big, big piece. Hits. He hit him with the old pull apart. The old pull yeah. apart. Here we go. This is still close though, I think. Here's, here comes another gauntlet blast. Another gauntlet. Oh, I thought That's another one gauntlet. down. That's another the link's one down. down. We'll see though. I don't think it's gonna the be enough. Breaking down. He doesn't have enough I, time. so close. I honestly don't know who, who wins. We'll get this. one more yeah, gauntlet shot. Close. It might take out Blaze and I. The shield The shield, the the shield it, came it up. The, the big shield from the staff. Damn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Damn. Let's tough. go to the replay. Tough, tough. It was closer, but... That Still. was so close. You see uh, Patat moving over all of his units, breaking through that front line a little bit, but still, Estra, especially with that back line, they're just so strong. They get the shields, they get the healing. It's just not enough from Patat. Great play from Estra. Nice, very good try from Patat, but just not that enough for that combo. extremely close. Yep. Yeah, sometimes you see the like the empath style comps reaching critical mass, and it's very clear, like, oh, nothing is dying, but the oh, top was sure. chunking away. The top now, was chunking away at that lineup, and when those gauntlet blasts went off, they were hitting hard. So that was that was a really close attempt to break yeah, the empath. Yeah, I, I would. I would say if S Judd was using the the stage one tier zero impasse, he probably would have lost there. Are they and... are they going to be switching oh. up at all? Or... Oh, that does Patat switch up. makes the switch. He makes the switch. Yeah, pretty much very similar comp to S Judd. Did Skarx just cut out? Am I crazy? No, no, you're good. You're good. He's playing. He's playing back the uh, stream. I'm hearing back the delayed stream. Yeah, we're good. Very good. They can't hear it though, so don't worry. They wouldn't be able to hear it if I unmuted it now, so I'll have to leave uh, this muted right, now. Right, right, right. Because I have no idea what's going to happen. Okay. Wow. Okay, oh, so we good. have a Blaze Knight mirror, but the, the <clears throat> builds are a little bit different. Yeah. They're not They're not exactly the same. If you notice in Patats, he has an extra Fernite in it, so he could possibly get into another Templar unit. Okay. So there's, a, so there's a bit of an imbalance between the two comps here. <clears throat> um, I think I do favor S Judge, right? Because he has more potential to play down the units that will get hyper compared to Patat. And what is more limited of a comp from what I'm seeing? I, what do you think about that, Martini? Yeah, it looks like Patat doesn't have any options, right? He just has yep. the units he's going to play, and those are what go on the board. And. Um, Estrad has more flexibility there, so yeah, we'll have to see if he can read the hyper situation correctly and take advantage of that. Because I think that's where the strength of of Estrad's Blaze Knight setup lies: is all those different affinities sure. to really pick the one that's best for the given situation. Yep, that that's the whole point of the comp, right? Like he has yeah. so many different options, so much flexibility to play into really whatever team he goes against, except for that counter rogue deck, which I don't think there's any chance he could win against that. Right off the bat, we start with Blaze Knights on the same side. There's not going to be a lot of moving units here. Everything is just going to be duking it out right in the center of the board. <laughs> yep. Straight up mano y mano. <laughs> Even though they are both high estrogen builds, we'll see if uh, high estrogen out. builds. We'll see if they it can pull wild. out some testosterone. So we were just talking about hyper. I'm a little surprised to see Estrad throw out the nature Grocco right out of, right out of the gate, because uh, that could give hyper to the enemy uh, wildfire units that could be fire dominant. Yeah, they are definitely fire dominant because uh, the blazon. He has the, the nature staff, but mm -hmm. I, I'm also interested or also curious on why he did that instead of using the Earth Grocco. 
is the rest of Patat's team not good, or is Nature Grocco have a specific ability that's good here? Yeah, we'll have to see how the the boards develop. Uh, maybe he just isn't caring as much about Hyper there and just favors Nature specifically in this matchup. What does what's the pat? What's the other effect of the Nature Grocco? <laughs> Uh, it, it just heals. It heals himself when he when he casts. Okay. Hmm. Maybe because I, I'm not sure. I'm not yeah, he's right going now. right in right into three nature. I'm I'm surprised with the fire on the enemy board that he doesn't go into three water. But it looks like he did put down a water Rocco. So yeah, yeah. It looks like two. he's planning for nature and water as the two affinities here. Yep. I'm assuming putting that water to delay the hyper to be not as fast for Patat. So we'll see how that turns out. Also put his Ranger right next to the other Blazonite. Really wants to get that buff. Ooh, Patat separates his Ranger to try to draw the Blazonite Tornado. <coughs> but like I mentioned earlier, yeah, mm -hmm. this has upside and downside. You, you draw the Tornado away, but you lose the actual staff cast from the ranger. It doesn't hit anything except yeah. the ranger itself. The ra in, in most cases, you want the ranger to redirect the tornado. Um, this is not one of those cases. You want and something else. And he even could have moved the ranger in a specific place where mm. it was still getting mostly attacked and the blaze knight was safe. But now he's getting nothing from his staff omegas. Yeah, so he's missing out on some attack speed buffs to his team and shields. But he is avoiding his team getting tornadoed, so it's really hard to say which, which strategy is actually better here. Yep. I agree. I mean, this may look like a really boring just go to overtime matchup, but there's a lot of little technical yeah. things that can make big differences here. He has yeah, more on the board. The train die, there's a lot going on more than people may think. Patat has a lot more on the board here, so he should win overtime. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Patat's taking the overtime here. All right. Interesting. And yo, by the way, uh, well done, guys. I feel like this is going a lot smoother as well. So mad props to you guys and, and the people in the back end. Yeah, and again, if you guys are enjoying the stream, you guys enjoy the Alluvium Inferno, be sure to uh, share around on different social media platforms. And also, always, uh, always remember to like that stream so we can get it out to as many people as possible. Yep. And uh, Don't forget to quick, like well, it. It's I know, up to 50 likes. I know, yeah, I know we are in the in the the match right now but uh jimbo are there th thoughts about switching up the time for next week for different regions or yeah i would personally like to uh set something up that's really good for europe but that's up yeah. to uh score and there's a lot of different factors that go into it but a lot of people were asking for a more european friendly time and mm -hmm. thankfully we are amazing we do this weekly for you guys we're we're <laughs> saints we're awesome so even if it's not next week, I promise you there will be a, a tournament time that's great for Europe. It will likely be next week. And uh, again, it, uh, is, does that is that okay with you, Scoriax? Yeah, well, we need to discuss it more. But yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, okay. like, yeah, like, we'll figure it out. I don't even mind like a four a.m. on a Saturday morning for me. But like, yeah, going yeah, so. back to the to the match real quick. Uh, Escher did make that move. I think he recognized that that the Blaze Knight was losing effectiveness. Uh, he did move the the ranger like to the opposite end to draw out that that stun. Mm -hmm. And now we see an imbalance in the builds as well because now Patat has added in a second uh, shoe build, the Fernite, mm. in stage two. Um, so and and Esjet has continued adding in more empaths. So Esjet's side is going to have a little bit more healing, but Patat has more Templars. Yeah, um, he's, he's taking out the ranger. Double tornado. He's taking two tornadoes with the ranger now, though, and that that might be big. It is, but um, Patas ranger did die before his. We'll have to yeah. see. He has the numbers though, so if he takes this to overtime, he's got it again. Yeah, numbers really matter in overtime because of the way the overload damage is split up. Yeah. But for those, honestly, for, for it's those still that don't, very hard to see what's going for on. For those that don't know, Martini, can you explain how the overtime damage actually is split? Like, how does that actually work? Yeah, it does, so it does purest damage. You can think of it as just unavoidable damage. It goes through shields, goes through effects like uh, Dominable, and it's it's a percentage HP-based 
damage, but it's split evenly amongst all your alluvials, and then it ramps up over wow. time. It's a, it's a bit confusing, but... Um, so it starts out small, and then each tick, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But whatever it happens to be at at any given time, it's evenly split amongst all your alluvials. So if you have six alluvials on the board and your opponent has three, those three alluvials are going to be taking double the damage that your six are taking. Makes sense. So how I imagined it, Kyle, was you would like, if you like added all the max healths together, all, all the current healths together, so say it was six alluvials and they all had 1,000 1, HP, then it would be like 10% of that, so it'd be like 600, and then split that amongst everything. Is that how it works or is it a bit more complex? It's actually simpler than that. It's don't think of it as a total health. Just think of it as a percent health number. So let's just say the number at any given tick is 20% of max health. Mm. And if you have five alluvials on the board, you just take 20 divided by five and each alluvial takes 4% of its max health. Yep. 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 Okay. Interesting. Um, but Patat took the overtime win again, so one more of those, and we could see the match going his way. Yeah, it could, could look like um, <clears throat> overall this new empath build with the double wildfire seems like it's stronger than the straight-up empath build, but maybe this, this other uh, build is just good into the wildfire. And, well, and he has stronger. that fern. I don't know. Wild, wildfire, wildfire just does so much damage. Like it's beatable, but it's not beatable by that many things. If you ask me, it's 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 good if you can sustain. You can live a long time. It takes a while to kick off, but it's good. Here we go. No clue what's happening. What <laughs> is going <laughs> on? These tick, these overtime battles. It's sometimes it's so hard to tell who's winning in those. I do. I know Grant's been pushing for it, and, and I 100% agree with him. I would love a round-by-round -round health bar as well, underneath the, the total health bar, so we can physically see what's happening, uh, the damage being taken per round, so we can see visually very easily who's winning or who's losing, or who has more or less health. Yeah, I mean, there's very few matchups where you really get seven units on both sides of the board just ticking away and healing like crazy and you know, 20 seconds of overtime doesn't happen very often but this particular matchup every round right there's just the comp is so focused on sustain that there's just not enough damage to actually kill very much so it's just yeah. always going to overtime yeah and uh Ziptile in chat said um these overtime situations are a little interesting with the uh empath builds and i it is somewhat weird to watch but i think there is a lot more going on that people sometimes don't and i know he knows this but there's a lot of things going into this than just place unit down and wait till the game ends yeah oh, <laughs> i i i haven't kept this a secret but i just i i think blazing on empath is so dumb and i hope it gets nerfed into oblivion. <laughs> it's a they're both high estrogen it. builds be a be a chad play something cool <laughs> play something I, cool. I, I've, I've never been a fan of it i mean people can do what they want but i i hate it personally and maybe maybe i'm just jealous because it always beats me but i i just hate it okay so this augment combination on patat's blazonite is really really strong he has true sight uh he has Ooh. i believe that's void cleaver catalyst that gives him percent max hp as pure damage so it doesn't care about resistances and then he has bonus attack speed, bonus attack damage. I actually think this augment combination is going to shred on Patat's blaze, and I, I, I have to give the edge to Patat here, uh, just because of that blaze and I augment combination. But I, agree. I mean, anything can happen here. But I really like I that agree. augment combo. I think it's super strong. Those are two legendary augments, double legendary up on that on that blaze and I. I mean, is it's it got hyper too enough? It only has to do a little bit more than what S Judd's side is doing, and then he wins in overtime, right? It's not like he's gonna kill. And the I think you're MT. right, man. It looks Look like he wins that. We said that last time. Oh my oh. god! Oh my god! Oh, what? Who won? Oh my god! Who won? What just? S Judd. God damn! Where does that healing coming from at the like, end? I'm so it confused. looked like S Judd's units were dead, and Batat still had four units on the board, and then in one tick. 
Where, where are they getting it from? Yeah, they're getting killed the yeah, last died. second. Well, where, where is this coming from? Let's look. Can we replay that? We're yep. replaying it right now. Um, yeah. Double replay it. <laughs> we can. Yeah, it looks like... We need a slow-mo replay that. Okay. Look yeah. at those last ticks. Because remember, the overtime damage is scaling every second. Mm. So what it looks like is that his <laughs> back two alluvials are, are away from the front line. So the front line is getting taken down. Their health is going down. And the overtime is killing them first. But his back two alluvials heal, right? Is that correct? And that's what's keeping him alive? Oh yeah, Estrad's got a lot of healing going on in the back line. And, and from Patat's side, he has that Fern, or sorry, the Fernite. And the Fernite's not, not providing any, any healing. Yeah. So in these overtime situations, <clears throat> the, uh, the Lynxes and the Atipos that are, that are constantly healing is like just enough ticks. But look how far behind Estrad's comp is here in terms of units. It was that cost from the Lynx. That the water the links providing right so time. much healing, and you see how huge those last ticks are. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're we're talking forty percent of their HP in one tick, just draining them. Oh yeah, That's I wish insane. we could see stats on like how much healing they did, especially for those last mm. few seconds. That was crazy because both the last two rounds, both of those last two rounds, last second healing coming in from that links saving the entire team and saving that round for Estrud. So very well done for Estrud. That was so close. Good. That was that could have gone empath. either way. I think that was a fun empath matchup. I'll be real. For empaths, that was pretty fun. For empaths, for, for, empaths, for a high yeah. estrogen match, that was a it was yeah. entertaining. Yeah, for, <laughs> for a high estrogen, estrogen and patat match. It, it good. Let's not have that every round, but you know, occasionally. Yeah, you know, yeah. Let's let's get, get some TRT in there. in there. You know what I mean? Let's let's get, <laughs> let's get let's get it going, boys. Come on, stop drinking that All tap right. water. Cool. So the next one that we have now is actually Mindia and Fable. This is going to be a. I think this this should be a good match. This is a uh, seed nineteen versus seed twenty two. So evenly seeded, evenly ranked. Uh, fingers crossed that they give us something a bit more, uh, a bit more fast paced than than the last one. Uh, but regardless, I think it's going to be a, a close match. Yeah, Mindia, very good player. I think uh, Martini said this already. Got third place in the Exborg tournament. Um, it, and if you move that into reality here, it's kind of like second place because Smartass isn't here. So Mindy, a very, very strong player. I think he underperformed a little bit in the first Inferno. I can't really remember where he placed. I don't think he even made top 16, but uh, that that's definitely an underperformance. Very good player. Uh, probably the best in hype, I would say, but that's my opinion. Don't come for me. But yeah, I'm very impressed with Mindia's play. Yeah, note that Mindia is probably doing a lot of prep with Patat, both of them being on, on hype. And Mindia also brought Empaths to the last tournament. So oh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see another Blazonite comp coming out in this next match. Interesting. But maybe his opponent will bring something different and we won't have the mirror match again. Hmm. Yeah, as we said, there there are like counters to these Empath decks. It's just... Nobody's okay. pulled it out yet. It is different. It is very different. He looks like he's going a uh, a Colossus Aegis Verdant style. There's a mix of everything here. Wow. If he doesn't take Titan re Rebound, Titan's Rebound, I'm going to be very shocked. Mm, that's with huge. Team's big, big units, yeah. Yeah, with the team that, that he's playing uh, with Fable, I, I think Titan's Rebound is a, is a no-brainer. I mean, Resolute Accumulator also stacking defenses um sharp start also great for penetrating yeah, I mean, those resistances on i mean these are all good these are all, yeah, so very, the nature affinity chip 100 percent. yeah you if you made that verdant that'd be a completely different story <laughs> yeah then all of a sudden Ooh, you're fighting wow times rebound out. is being left out just one sec oh, i'm going is to read out times read out i'm going to instant out, replay just to fix read something out. okay interesting uh team oh. comp here from india Wait, I like this a lot. Yeah, I think I yet. think he's trying to go for an Umber hyper carry, and he wants to buff his Umber with the Aegis units to make it super tanky. Mm. Yeah, this is cooking. He is cooking. Yeah, this is gonna be cool. This is gonna be cool. He, I've actually experimented funny. with these kind of comps before. I've tried it with Umber. I've tried it with Penguin hyper carry. Um, you can make some crazy things go happen. You can get a number with a, a shield that's as big as his entire health bar 
and have like 150 resistances and just be an uber tank. Um, really excited to see this one. Something I want to point out here is Mendia has zero armor at all. And he only has the 10 mastery point fire shield. That's the mm-hmm. only weapons in uh, armor he has. Yeah. So do you, do you know why? Let me know. Enlighten me. Yeah. So he's looking, I believe he's looking to sacrifice his ranger as a harbinger to oh. transfer bonus omega power to his umber. Wow. Make his umber super strong. So he doesn't care about armor because he actually just wants his ranger to die as fast as possible. Nice. I believe. So he, I think what he's doing is he's looking to buff his umber with both Harbinger and Aegis and just hyper carry this umber. Now, I am curious on your take on this. Why do you think he put his umber down round one if it's impossible, no matter what setup he uses with his deck, he cannot beat Fabled's round one no matter what. So now he's locked into putting his umber there. So wouldn't it have been better for him to have wait? possibly this round or round three to put the umber down so he can put it in an optimal space or do you think it even matters it feels a little bit committal yeah he could probably wait a little bit that's a good chat um, actually but, but yo, yeah i really like this team Two i've looked steam, i've looked over his cards Leo. oh sorry tsg yeah. no okay. sorry i was gonna say I'm, I'm really liking this this is something that we haven't we didn't see at all if i'm not mistaken in in the first week Nope. Uh, Steam, Harbinger, Slayer. Like I feel like these were very, very slept on, but mm-hmm. very fascinating that we get to see this right now. What does Harbinger do again? Uh, Martini is probably going to be. It's it's more <laughs> sacrificial, but Martini, I'll let you explain. Yeah, yeah, it's sacrificial. So when when they die, they uh, they send a hundred hundred Omega Power to your highest Omega Power ally. So he's looking to stack a ton of Omega Power on his Umber. Um, and yeah, I looked over his team there and it's absolutely what I was thinking. He's, he's trying to just go all in on this umber. So sacrificing harbinger units to buff it up. I've, yeah. Uh, I've... Offensively and then using Aegis units to buff it up defensively. So he's got his two Aegis now. You're going to see a shield pop up on the umber. Um, this is all in wow. over hyper carry. I've, that is I've, a huge shield. I've seen people stack, stack umber before and it's... Out of all alluvials, it's the best one to stack this sort of stuff on because, firstly, if you give it vamp, it heals a lot off its bloody omega because it does so much damage split amongst enemies and things. But the best part is because when it omegas, it becomes untargetable. It's almost always going to be the last thing on your team to go down because the enemies keep redirecting away from it. It's really hard to take out a number, at least to take it out first. You guys can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Sorry, man. I'm just doing the stuff on the back end as well. I wish I could just watch the matches. I'll be completely honest. <laughs> I know what you mean. Okay, it does look like he's going to lose this. Round oh, my again. gosh. See how much damage it did to North Karabok to um, Goliath? Damn. Does he lose here though, or does the Umber just? Yeah, we'll see. Wait, what happened there? Augments. The doesn't do any doesn't damage. Any augments though, he's not doing enough damage to get through these colossus. Oh, now it does damage. Wait, Why wait. the last one do nothing? Was it? Bad? He may have gotten taunted what before he uh, used his Omega. Oh, I'm not okay. sure. But yeah, that was a lot of damage right here. It's. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like he's about to get a strong buff on this next round. Uh, we hope so. So so he has a lot of setup, right? Like a lot of his units don't do anything. Everything is fully committed to this umber. So until he gets everything online, he's pretty weak. So he's really gonna have to ramp into that full power ASAP, or else he's just getting four owed. Giving up Meteor is, is ballsy, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, yeah it's gonna uh, stun the umber. The meteor is great for CCing the umber. Um Vital Strike is also a really nice offensive augment for the umber, so it's a it's a tough call. Um, Rams are asking the chat. He needs to move his umber over. He's got the granite there. It's going to waste a ton of time, and they're going to kill off those units, and they're going to redirect their aggro onto umber. I don't think that's a good idea. Go ahead, Scoriax. Um, just Ramza was asking in the chat how how is the Harbinger going to choose um, to give umber the omega power since all the units have one hundred me- omega power. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it'll choose the highest, and if there is a tie, it's random. But uh, his umber has steam, which means that his umber actually gains additional omega power from steam. And the only other unit on his board gaining additional omega power is the ranger, who also has steam. So if the ranger is the first one to die, uh, in theory, the umber should be the one with the highest omega power and should receive the buff. He just gave it Omnivamp. You guys should watch this, because I've seen it against me. It's really frustrating. Mm -hmm. He gave it Omnivamp, and he also gave extra resistances to the Blotto. And the way Aegis works is it transfers a percentage of those resistances to the Umber. Oh, what? So uh, by augmenting the Blotto there, he's actually... He's, he's given his Umber Vamp and additional resistances now. So this is, this is a super Umber. But is it enough? Oh, the meteor is really tanky, and that granite is holding him off for a very long time. And the meteor CC locking him in place. The meteor is doing so much here. He should not have given that up. But this Umber could 1v6 here. Like, if he can get this next cast off, I think this Umber might win. Yeah, watch this he heal, die before this next cast. He's going to heal to full. Boom, full oh, health. So dumb. Yeah, I think I think this umber wins here. Oh, overtime though. He didn't have enough damage quickly enough. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. So all right. So if there's no overtime there, that umber kills the entire enemy board. It does. Uh, but he didn't he didn't kill it fast enough though. He wasted too much time on the granite. Oh. Oh damn, okay. I just got back. What, what happened? <laughs> These kind of comps are so cool. Like unfortunate that Mindy lost there, but like uh, very, very neat idea. Yeah, I like the idea. I think it'd be interesting to see how it plays out if he moves his umber over onto the uh, the more squishy. What is that motherfucker called? Turtle. <laughs> the turtle. Arkelion. Arkelion. Yeah. Arkelion. Yeah, it would be interesting to see how that plays out if he moves it onto uh, Arkelion. Yeah, because um, yeah, this umber really needs to like you could imagine this kind of setup working a lot better into squishier units, right? But uh, Fabled's comp was extremely tanky, especially with the granite and the Colossus unit. So it's really hard for Umber to actually kill stuff in time. But it's also diff difficult for him to reposition because he can't just move the Umber because he has the Aegis units and they target the closest allies. He would have to move yeah. the Aegis units with it, and that's pretty expensive. Yeah, that's a that's a bit of a downfall in this. Maybe put the Aegis in the middle and you can move over the Umber to one or the other side. Interesting deck though. Love to see that, Mindia. Thank you, sir. We salute you even though you lost. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it was all the meteor I think, there. I think he had it without the meteor. Yeah, I, the the fact that he did give up that meteor so easily. Mm -hmm. He only put he only bid one on there. That <sighs> I think is a bit crazy. Okay, so we see Fable bringing the same team and Mindia. So they're running it back. Yeah. Interesting. I think M Mindia can do it. I think with, with some slight changes, I think Mindia can do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, I think so this is a skill matchup, honestly. Like, I think yeah. it is harder or, for Mindia, but I think it, you, either player can win into this uh, thoughts, matchup. Thoughts on this one, Martini? Uh, I thought he was going to go all in on Vampiric Price. <laughs> He's chopping and changing quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. No, I think Void Energy Reservoir is the best for Mindia here. I think this is the correct bid. Vampiric doesn't 100%. do that much for him. Mm. And uh, Fabled, I think, thought that Mindia wanted Vampiric and tried to tried to block it and wasted all yeah. his tokens on it. So I think this, if I had to like give an edge on the legendary bidding, I think Mindia, Mindia gets the edge here. Mindia Fair. is net net positive right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's very it's very true, Ramza, that he was saying that the Ranger couldn't die too fast because one Omega cast from Umbro needed to happen um to gain the Omega power. Yeah, I think I think he's splitting the Omega power too much. He needs to give an augment to Umbro or something to grant it that early Omega power to guarantee the Harbinger. At least that's how I, I would still be know, doing it. I don't know why he's putting his Umber down, because he can't win this, but if he loses this first round, he can especially when positioning into the, his comp like his positioning is so important so I'm, I'm not sure what the thought process is behind Wait, that i just realized something um if this game has no rng and you said that they have the same omega power it's random doesn't that mean that no two games would be the same with this setup 
Well, this game does have RNG because even if you think about crit, like when the crit starts is going to be random so there's no, no, limited it always, rng it always opens with a crit i believe it's always the same oh what? Was... martini clarifications <laughs> <laughs> no there's basically a random seed that gets attached to every game yep and so with pseudo random number generators and computers if you feed it the same starting seed it'll actually play out exactly the same every time so you, you could replay this battle with the same seed and, and replay the exact same fight every time um if you were to just throw the units on the board and start a new battle and let it start with a random seed, then these pseudo random events like crits and stuff uh, could potentially play out differently. I have no idea what you just said, but W in the chat, <laughs> Martini Boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My thanks sorry, for the sorry. info that no one understands. Uh, sometimes, okay. <laughs> a, little, a little too technical. All right. Yeah. My bad. Most <laughs> most games use this. It's even how you calculate um shiny Pokemon and stuff in Pokemon. Yo, Jimbo, how did we get paired up with these nerds, man? I don't know, dude. I want to give them a twirl and beat the shit out of them. Out of here. Yo, again, I think Umber on the first round, I think Jimbo is right. I think he could kind of hold off on that uh, just to get information. I think with, with more information, he can play that way more efficiently. Even losing th two rounds in a row, I think, is good because he can't win until, what, round four? So holding off for as long as possible in and he's my not opinion, killing is how i would play it and he's not killing anything anyway so it's not like he's oh. Oh, he killed one unit but i was gonna yeah, say it's but... not like he's reducing the damage he's taking anyway yeah you practically one shot that Arkelion. is there any is there any awkwards and things that you could help make umbre cast faster you know martini is there any way to pull that off besides water uh yeah i mean water makes them cast faster more steam units would give him more regen uh mm. you could potentially equip a, an augment that gives him some additional um energy to make him cast a little faster but then you're missing out on potential damage or other effects so it's a, it's a tough call yeah because um, this, this, this umber setup is very much reliant on his omega right shout out to the w's in the chat by the way you guys are awesome <laughs> <laughs> yes. i love you guys i love this community bro what, what Yo, this he... is a very interesting change in terms of uh we saw we saw umber in the what round four without any augments or maybe one augment we are now in round three and he's fully decked out already and What's... He even got the the omni bamp from the the arcos next to him as well so he's going all into the umber very early this game compared to last game what's the second augment he gave it uh cleanse uh it's it's the cleanse option i don't know if you know it up by heart uh martini but i yeah, know temporal, he temporal safeguard so it you see he's immune now so it allows him to cleanse any negative debuffs every time he casts his omega and it gives him immune to any sort of effects not mm. damage but any sort of cc or something for oh. four seconds Oof. after he casts so it's a very much a utility sort of defensive augment i think he he didn't like being stunned and rooted and everything, so I mean, he played he got that. Killed. He still got killed by the damage, which is unfortunate. Yeah, he might not have got yeah, stunned. That augment damage doesn't hit. <laughs> that augment doesn't help him with, with damage. It's all about the the sort of uh, negative effects that it, that it purges. <laughs> Do, does would would adding resistance to an umber make sense at all, or would you would you double down all on the offensive side of things, or do you think it's case by case? Yeah, case by case, um, I think against this comp that he's in against right now, there's a lot of beef. And if you don't kill them, you just lose an overtime and die. So I think in this kind of matchup, you're probably looking at wanting to give him as much damage as you possibly can. Yeah. Uh, if you're against a squishier lineup that has more burst damage or if they have more disables or something, you could maybe go a little more defensive and utility oriented. You know what would have gone quite well here? Is something like a Lura or a Lalura or something? to help redirect their back line, which is currently yeah, on top of Umbre. Yeah. I think that would really benefit this deck, this team. I think the charm is underrated. I think we, we haven't seen so much of uh, any of that line. The the star, star nose mole, the mole line. I think mm -hmm. it's, I think they, there's really good utility. And I think once people start playing around and testing it out, maybe after some buffs and nerfs, um, and then they become a little bit more viable. I think it's going to add to a lot more variety in gameplay. Just that taunt, that charm is is 
it can be so impactful with crowd control and just shifts the game completely. He just stacked the yeah, resistances. Really he's gonna right lose now, he's gonna lose attack speed from the Nile. He just stacked the resistances and shield on the Umbre. Um mm. and he's given it even more omnivamp. So that Umbre's finally kitted out. Let's see if it's enough. It's just so much HP to go through on the enemy board. Yeah. But doesn't it target the lowest health enemies? Targets the three closest. Oh really? I believe so. I mean well, it just took he it is out. going. It just took out our Kalions. I don't know how true that is. Hmm, if he could have got that, definitely other uh, things that were closer. Watch I'll this Nile go down. That. We'll see. It didn't even hit Nile that time. I mean, is it he, enough though? He could win this. He he's got one the, more. The expert. One more. Oh, oh he's got it. Nah, the overtime nah. though. He, he doesn't cast fast cost. enough. He needs to. Oh my God, Mindy is on twenty HP. Yeah. So I believe the targeting on the Umber, um, it's a little confusing. It's not actually the three closest. It, it's a chain effect. So it basically targets the closest for the first part of the chain. And then the next one hit is the next close, like the closest oh, to that okay. thing, but not necessarily the next closest to the Umber. Interesting. Mm. Um, so it's a, it's, this is why we bring you on, Martini. Go. Yeah, it's the this same way Wildfire actually chains. Um, right, really right, right. It very often when things happen but yeah it's a chaining effect um it's actually the same way meteor works too meteor actually chains with exactly the same algorithm would you would you recommend yeah stopping the healing slightly no why oh, is he dropping energy, energy? you're yeah. gonna it drop the healing, healing. Right? yeah I, I don't know if, if as commentators we should be giving advice like i know they can't, can't... hear it regardless but <laughs> 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 let's flex that we know what we're talking about <laughs> Yeah, I think with these big verdant units and the Arkelion heal and stuff, um, it's, it's a no-brainer, right? Yeah, it's like you, it's you just want the obvious thing. HP. But I mean, reducing their energy gain also means Narl doesn't disable you as much. Arkelion doesn't cast his heal as much. Oh, and <laughs> opposing oh, Umber arrives. Fable oh, just throws in his own Umber. Let's see how this plays out. Man, <sighs> Fable, th this would be an upset, would it not be? I mean, Mindy is. Let me look at it. So yeah, Min I I mean Mindy is nineteen, Fable's twenty two, but yeah, this would be. This I would think be this round upset. looks a lot better than for Mindy. We'll have to see, but I think the way this is set up, especially if that uh, Komodo gets another Omega off, this is looking really good for him. He has fifteen seconds till overtime to delete this enemy board. I think he's removing two units with this next cast. Boom, one, two. Oh my god. Yeah, I told you guys with enough. the way he had it set it up. One more cast, and I think he's got it. Boom. Oh, oh my god. god. I, told you. I told you. He got that last Omega off from the Komodo. It was just enough to give him some time to ramp up that Umber. Okay. Great placement, really. He's got to get, does he throw in the third Harbinger now for even more Omega power on the Umber? He could play this like accident on. That I mean, that seems to be the play, would it not be? He could play this Axodon for more Harbinger buffs on the Umber, and then he could play the Arkelion if he wants for even more Aegis buffs on the Umber. I mean, he's all in yeah. on Umber, right? Like, what else are you going to do? And if this, uh, gonna switch if it up. the opponent Umber aggroes onto this Axodon, it should be in range to get healed as well. Oh, and he's going to slow Which, down the Umber. Yep, and it's oh, going to be huge play. because his Umber will never be able to get started. This Komodo is still going to get off its Omega in the exact same sequence unless uh, Fabled reacts. This is actually Mindia's game to win, I'm thinking. Well, he's this giving even crazy. more resistance. just turn the tides with that last round? Yeah, yeah I would have put Indomitable on the Komodo just to ensure those Omegas, but we'll see. He's giving so even more resist to Umber. On it, those resistances get transferred to the Umber. Oh, never, true. I've never okay, thought about never that way. Even tankier. Very the team good gets energy. He's giving he's giving the team extra energy as well. That's the only it's reason. Interesting. Umbra, that's the reason I'm breaking could five v one them with all those resistances getting given to it, which is oh. crazy. He's thrown his. Uh, he's thrown in the gyro as well. I don't think Axon's actually in range to get healed though. Uh, he doesn't even want Axodon to live, right? He wants him to die for the Harbinger buff. Yep. True, but he also... I don't think he wants to give Umber the um, the opponent Umber buffs that soon. 
Could be wrong. Let's Why see. Why would the opposing Umber get buffed? Because of Slayer. Oh my god. Oh, right. I think Yo, he's playing. Number is winning this again. He's too yeah. bulky. Yeah, yeah he's at this good. point, he's oh, too that's bulky. Man, you get to round five, you win. I told you at this point, Mindia has won. Unless oh, to, that's so intense. Round. But he's only winning by one unit each round. Yeah, it's really <laughs> risky, man. Slowly. It's risky business. Very risky business. Like he's not doing one wrong thing. damage, so he has to win like five <clears throat> rounds in a row. No, it only takes Crazy. one. Oh, he's it playing both of them. Nice. For Fable, and then it's over for Mindia. Okay, what's he going to do? He's added in yet another Aegis, so even more stats on Umber. And he's adding more resistances, which again get transferred to Umber. This Umber probably has this close Umber to 200 resistances right now. Maybe not 200, but maybe 160 ish. Yeah, craziness. With a big old shield. Covers about this two is the, thirds of his HP bar. This is the first time we've seen this comp uh, in in a tournament, or is that is that right? This is the first time I've ever seen this comp ever. Amazing, amazing. That's what we like to see. Yeah, this specifically, I've never seen this before. This is a high testosterone build if we've ever seen it. A hundred percent. So Mindia is still scaling. The question is, can Fable match it or is he just run out of gas and, and this is just mindia's game now yeah i'm not sure there's anything he can do to can he, can can he position that he needs to take out umbra but you can't it's got too many resistances so you and, and he doesn't have any damage either like he has to because the way that it's set oh up, some changes you have yeah. to take it to overtime that's the only way to win this is you have to be He's really gone. survival and then take it to overtime. Stall out the Umber and then just win in overtime because Umber's only one unit, so the overtime ticks are really big. If you <laughs> have five units, yeah. That was pretty funny. Yeah, okay, this is fast. This is, you're very right. This is a high testosterone battle. <laughs> this you compared to the last right, one, bro. This is actually a South, yeah, crazy. This guy's going to the Olympia right now, flexing on him. Everyone's correct, yeah. Respect, I mean, Mendia. I mean, this is like, dominant. This is a respect, dominant. Respect, Mendia. Let's go. This could be GG right here. Holy. Yeah. That's it. Damn. What a match. <laughs> Great. That, that's 2 0 to Mendia. Is that 1 1? 1 1. No, Mendia lost one. the first one. That's yeah, 1 1. We one. go to game three. One, we go one. to game three. Crazy. I wonder if the. Um, I'm thinking that the Komodo is very intentionally placed there. So maybe he's intentionally putting everything at the start in a very methodical <laughs> way that he's planned out over and over. That's what I'm expecting. I, I love to see it. That was incredible, man. What a match. What a match. And I can't believe he brought it back from 20 HP. Yeah, 20 that was HP. wild. Mm -hmm. Yo, Bro. Soda, Soda's just saying he built this today as well. So the patch came out today. He built this today, and he's running it. This is insane. This is what we love to see, man. And again, I am so, so excited that we're seeing this. And when we get the, the other alluvials in the game, there's going to be so much more that's viable, so much more creative expression. Oh, yeah. This is what I like to see. This is really, really cool. And we're only about a week and a half yep. in from, from when we launched this, and we're already seeing these differences. The patches are coming in. I'm excited. This is exactly what we want to see. Yeah, and it's the second tournament. We already have 70 viewers watching live. Alluvium Esports is on top. We're here to stay. Uh, proving the doubters wrong. I'd love to see it, dude. I'm so pumped. Damn, is it 70? I, was, I need to reload my thing. Wow, it is. Yeah, wow. Well done, guys. This is yeah, we're out here. You guys, yo, massive shout out to both of you guys, man. And appreciate Martini for, for jumping on. Yeah. I think having Martini on as, as in commentary adds so much value. So publicly, I want to I want to shout you out there as well. Thank you, sir. Completely agree. Love Martini. Always giving me uh, tips, helping me with my commentary. Very much appreciated. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. While they're loading this next game up, uh, Martini, what do you think the answer into this team from Mindia should be? You think he runs it back, tries to get his positioning set up better how does he win this i mean fabled could have taken that game it was so close i don't I agree think the comp is bad into it i think it's a it's it's pretty good into it to be honest uh 
it's just that that fine line of does Mindia hit that threshold where he goes infinite with Umber, or does he die too quickly? I agree. I think <clears throat> seeing the Umber is the key to just slow down his kills so he just doesn't remove enough in time. Uh, but Mindia played that cleanse augment though, right? And that was huge. It allowed the Umber to just keep doing his thing uninterrupted. Yep. Might, might it be a thing where we've been saying that uh, Mindia should actually not play in the first round? Might it be a thing that that Fable sits out the first round now to actually get that information of where the Umber is going to go? I don't I think mean, so because, <laughs> because Fable wants to win on wound, round four on wound four mm. he wants to win on round four and if he gets to round five there's a very high likelihood mindia just wins no matter where he places no matter what he yeah. does no matter what augments he uses in what fashion he uses them it's i don't think there, there's a certain point where you just can't come back into this team from mindia yeah I, and I, Mind it makes sense you you want to stop it from reaching that yep yeah. Mindia finally Basically. taking my advice. He knows the face of Illuvium has 133 IQ. He's going to place nothing on the board, figure out what he's <laughs> going to do. And what could happen here is Fabled could, you know, just do the same exact thing because, nope. Now, Fabled wants maximum mastery points on the board here so that he can do as much damage as possible to Mindia. We saw him with 20 HP left on last, the last game. Uh, yeah, if, you this might miss be out on, if you miss out on 30 mastery points and you win and you could have done 30 more damage, like Fable needs to do That's as much damage point. as possible every round. Yeah, Fable really needs to take him out round four. Positioning in a way that as few units die as possible and he wins he wins these early rounds as hard as he possibly can um, from Fable's point of view. He needs he needs to end, from for him to win the series, he needs to end Mindia before Mindia reaches that wombo combo unbeatable umber that we saw at the end of last game and from mindy's point of view he's gotta try to punch through it and do his and you know preserve as much hp as possible so that he Until can he hang on like he did best. last time yeah because we've clearly seen that this umber setup it takes time to develop right he's not very strong early so he probably knows he's not going to win and he just he just needs to stay alive i just i just realized that if Harbinger goes off and gives the Omega power to the Ranger, um, the Ranger will keep getting the Omega power from future Harbingers until that Ranger goes down. And so I don't know how he would do it, but maybe Fabled avoiding taking out the Ranger could do serious work. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, if he if he had a way to not kill the Ranger and then randomly the Ranger gets a buff from another Harbinger dying, that would be really bad for mindia but you see mindia putting yeah. the ranger front and center trying to make sure that it's the first one to die i actually think this was a bit of a misplay on uh, fabled's part he put in the granite instead of putting in the double verdant on this play and i think mindia actually wins now I oh no agree. he's not gonna be able to get Completely. his Omega i think off. the colossus verdant is much more likely to have his entire team survive and do a lot yep. of damage here he wins but he barely does any damage and um, that's already a, a, a huge plus for Mindia here, taking less damage than he may have otherwise. Yeah, that that so has yeah. that has an that may be a big enough. I can't talk. Go ahead, TSG. Does that give attack damage <laughs> based on energy <laughs> cost? What the hell? Yeah, it does. It does. It does. What? It does, if I'm not mistaken, Martini, uh, energy damage or physical damage based on energy cost? Correct. Yep, so every time he casts his Omega, he gains bonus damage added to his base. Yep. Exactly, exactly. It's at 40% no, energy and physical. It's not energy and, it's one or the other. 40% of energy cost as physical damage. Oh, right, or right, right. as energy damage. You get to choose. I'm assuming Mindia chose physical because Umbra is a physical damage dealer. It's insane. It would be a bit weird if he chose energy. Wonder if that I mean, it could be a flex. It could be a complete flex, just be beaten with the wrong choice. <laughs> I wonder if that could work on Phosphorus. Hmm. No, it could work. Uh, the, the great thing about augments is they work on, on all, all units, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whether it's, it's... yeah. <laughs> but don't, don't get confused, Scoriax. You can't use augments on your ranger, so you can't. Yes, yes, yes. True. Yet. True. Yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the real alpha. I wonder if that would... yeah, this, yeah, we... 
we need That's Martini on every real. week. The real. <laughs> you can see Umbro does not survive particularly long when it doesn't have the Omni Vamp. I would expect yeah. it comes yeah. out this round. So that was a decent hit there, but we still see the previous round, Fable not doing that much damage. So Mindia still has over 400 HP here. It might come, uh, yeah, it might come back to bite him. He played a bit more passively, which which might be his downfall here. Yeah. Uh, we saw last time that his umber really popped off on round five, right? So round four is potentially Fable's last chance to, to get the win. But I think in round four, we are going to start to see the umber scale up even more now. It's going to be more effective. It won't reach crit mass, but it, it will be way more effective than what, what we're seeing right now. I do like Fabled's position here now to absorb this umber, though. He has the granite Goliant, which is pretty tanky, and then the big sloth with Verdant. So he doesn't have any squishy units on the side there with umber for the umber to just easily kill. The the, the weakest, squishiest unit on Fabled's side is actually the, the Seferus, and it is completely completely on the opposite side of umber, never going to get targeted. Um, so this, this is, I believe, a good attempt from Fabled, but I'm still concerned that his damage on round two is not enough. Man, this is this is intense. I, I don't know how this is gonna play out. Like this could go either way. What an if, epic match though. If he doesn't lose this round, there's a very high chance that he just sweeps it again. Just gets the reverse sweep. Yeah, I agree. Because uh, he's starting to reach that critical mass where the umber just goes infinite. He did not. He only gave it a little bit of Omni Vamp. I don't think it's enough. Ooh, and Fabled has Invulnerable from Granite on the Goliath and, and Indomitable from the Augment. So this this Goliath is going to be really hard to take down. And it's got That thorns. is true, but most of the damage is coming through from the Omega, correct? Does that have a difference on it? or? Okay, the Goliath finally goes down. Mm, I think that's true. I don't even know if Fabled wins this round. I feel like I feel like Mindia's Umber might actually just win this. Oof. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah, I, think umber, I think this Umber is just, just killing everybody here. Oh you no. It, you can't bring it's it a to tragedy. overtime fast enough. It's a tragedy. Yeah, yeah. Umber gets it one more cast and they both die. Oh, oh yeah. no. Fabled. Oh no, Fabled. Fabled got oh, your okay. round win. <laughs> I, so I think it's we're agreeing then. It's looking like Mindy has turned the tides and uh, Fabled's got some catching up to do now. <laughs> I, I don't think Fabled has the um, the, the right units, the, the right augments to scale up late game, does he? It's kind of all or nothing mid early to mid game. Yeah, Mindia still has a lot of room for scaling. We saw that um, he still has that ability to add in a third Harbinger. He has the ability to add in another Aegis unit. Yeah. And even for the icing on the cake, he played the Blazonite at the end just to give some uh, additional CC, a little bit of wildfire damage. Yeah. This deck scales and, uh, very, very late. Also interesting to see that he has a Goliath instead of the Titan or for the extra Colossus buff. That could be hurting him a lot, a lot as well. Yeah, that's a good point because he and has he, Colossus units on the board. He doesn't have any bulwarks. So. Not only that, he has the uh, stage two snail instead of the C force, and there is a pretty big buff in damage between those two units. Yeah, it's got to be a purely a cost. Yeah, I'm not sure that. why he chose the double stage two units here over, say, the Titan or for the the extra Colossus. Yeah, it, and Scorex was about to say that it, it has to be because he has the round set up in a certain way where he only oh! has mastery points. But Did um... you guys see that? Sorry, the, the, the Goliath targeted the Jaro. The Jaro dipped out of the way before it got to him. <laughs> I still think Mindia wins here. Like, the Sombra just kills everything, right? Oh my god, it's yeah. so bonkers. It must have like a I'm billion sure. Omega power. I really yeah, want to see that against Empaths. Ah, uh, yeah, funny. Is, yeah, the life steal. Is, yep, takes it here. The other Umbre went untargetable, and so neither of them hit each other. It was crazy. Ooh, 
But yeah, the the Titanor and Sea Force I think would have changed this, especially get that four Colossus, get the Sea Force who does so much damage, gets his Omega off constantly. Even with the Gyro on top of the Sea Forest, it would just be getting its Omega even faster. So I think a, a, a bit of a misplay by, there by Fabled. Probably wanted to save the Mastery points, but the Coloss the extra Colossus buff is huge. Yeah, I'm not even worried too much about the granite. Like, I don't even know if the snail needs to be yeah. in there, but just the Titan or giving another Colossus and a bigger body. I agree. Like, it's a ton of value over this uh, this Goliath, which is definitely a bit weaker, especially when he has no no active board trait. Yeah, I think the granite buff bonus here is actually so weak. He's better off putting in a different unit, even just something simple that has like a a very simple CC for the Umber. I I don't know. Okay, moves it over. Hmm, okay. Ooh. Ah, uh, see, he's got the, the, the attack speed slow on the cow here, but Mindia's Umber is just going to cleanse it right off. Yeah, and he puts the Indomitable in on both of those tanks, trying to get keep Umber from doing too much damage. Of course, the Goliath walked away, but I don't think Indomitable solves the issue here because... The Omega is what's doing mo the most damage, and it's hitting multiple targets. So even if he's attacking, auto attacking a character that hasn't Look dominated, at that, man. he just one shot. Omega's still going. Those. Yeah, I mean, he's one shot all three colossus. Like that's just crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Neil Zumbers takes it again. We go. He's slowly to around chipping seven. away. This is There'd an be... incredible team. Yeah, great. And there would be a hole in my wall if I was fabled. I'm <laughs> I'm not Bro, sure imagine if imagine you... you imagine you could have you could have taken a game two and just out of twenty <laughs> points left you lost it. Yeah, Dude, that, that would be insane. Rough. Thankfully, this is winner's bracket, so he can still pull it through in the the losers. But yeah, definitely. And I think he's got a good chance. I think he's got a good chance to to make that losers bracket run for sure. I'm not even sure if you if you can beat this Umbra. If any team can, you have to make sure you stomp him out by round four. Yeah, I would agree, but I think that's very doable. Yeah. Oh yeah. This this team this team is it takes time to scale, so it's not. But is there any way after round four there's a strategy that works? Martini. <laughs> oh, sorry, I got distracted for a sec. What was the? I mean, was the I'm sure question? I'm sure there is. If you slow down the Umbers attacks, uh, use all of those uh, attack speed augments. If you <laughs> like, I'm sure there are ways to counter it. Right. You want to kill it before it gets that first or uh, that first Omega rough. So yeah, he, I think having a ton of tanks here instead of like maybe fighters and place the fighters around where he lands. But if he, and the thing is, is with the tanks, you might think like, well, they're soaking up the auto attack damage. It's not the auto attacks; it's the Omega. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is not an auto attacking Umber. But the this fact is that it's an Omega focused Umber. Yeah, the fact that it goes untargetable is rough. Yeah, I would agree 100%. I, I, I do think that uh, a potential counter for something like this would be the um, would be the reduced attack speed. If they bring down Umber's attack speed dramatically and just target it like immediately, I think they they could kill it before the uh, before that Omega comes into play. Yeah, that was a great game from Mindia. Love seeing the unique team comp, and I think we said this even during the last uh, during the last Inferno. Those people who go out and find those niche team comps that can counter a lot of different things, or maybe it doesn't even counter. Maybe it's a 50-50 if you know the match, but if it's unique and no one's ever seen it before, that gives you a huge advantage playing into them because they don't know how to play against it, right? Like all of this comes down to practice and numbers, and if you can't do that right off the bat on the first time you've ever seen some weird team comp like that, how are you supposed to beat it? This is how you win these tournaments. This is how you take people by surprise making these unique team comps. So I encourage anybody out there who's listening and they want to play and they want to be competitive, the best way to do that is get these, I don't want to say cheesy team comps, but these unique comps that can really throw people off. Hmm. Uh, so we are going to go into, are we streaming with this now? Uh, the Shabim match? Shabim yep. Soda? Yep, yep, yep. 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 And awesome. I'm going to throw a straw poll in the chat here and... Just, you know, let us know. Who do you think is going to win? Should be a Minnesota. And you know, the yeah, that last match was awesome in. to see. 
like how many comps have we seen where people focus on Harbinger and Aegis as yeah. two of the ver of the core synergies? Probably zero times. Yeah. Very cool. Incredible. Incredible. <coughs> now we have Soda and Shabim again. This should be a good one. This is seed two against seed seven. Oh, this is gonna be a, a pretty high tier match. Rams has just mentioned in the chat, and I hadn't really thought about this. He said you can't slow the what you call it. You can't slow the Umbre if he uses the cleanse augment. Does that remove things like attack speed and combat start debuffs? Cleanse is cleanse is like if you're clumsy or something, right? It's not no, it should, attack speed. It, might, it, it, it it'll remove stuns and things like that, right? So will that remove attack speed debuffs, Kyle? Mm, yep, removes debuffs. Oh, fascinating. Oh, that changes everything. Yeah, I mentioned that during the during the match. <laughs> I missed that, sorry. All good. I think only one of my ears is working to be honest. <laughs> All right, let's uh, can we let's jump into this next match now. We got Shabine. We're, we're in there. We're in there. Yeah, Shabin and Soda. Well, uh, I'm sure we'll see more umber later so what do what do these guys have Ooh, is this actually i think we have an arcanite mirror i love a three bull walk opener a three bull. <laughs> so good wait this should be running arcanites oh yeah he is okay yeah, we saw so much of these Arcanine mirrors in the first Inferno tournament. It's uh, and it looks like he's got some bloom in here as well. I know we were talking about the the Lulora line before. We, we've it seen like it. He does have? We've seen some teams with this already with the blue Arcanite Magma. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but a lot less frequent than the first tournament, right? Clearly, the the patch has uh, had an impact <coughs> on people's feelings about the strength of things. We Shabim actually has Lulora and Malura here. I wonder if he's going really heavy into the bloom yet. We, we haven't oh, seen Malura in either Inferno. I won't, I won't lie. I've got a team that looks exactly like this with Malura and Malura as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, maybe he's just really valuing the, the three bloom threshold to the point yeah. where like, hey, these bloom units are strong. I'm just going to play another one. Mm. Three bloom is insane. CC, CC from both of those, like it, it, could be, it could be impactful depending on where he places them. I'm just going to say it. I think Shabim's washed up. Okay, yo, that's you're crazy. Well, what's chat saying? That's uh, not right up. now, chat has. Uh, uh, they haven't even Shabin. had it yet. Okay. <laughs> Currently in the straw poll, Shabim's winning. So we see two very different starts from these uh, two sides. Shabim going immediately into three bloom, two arcanite, focusing on the composites. Whereas Soda, no composites, three fire, three <coughs> water, and a very large bulwark number. I think that says six. So, yeah, two very different strategies from the start. And it looks like uh, Soda's start has taken the edge for the first couple rounds, but it does not mean the game is over. So spread out. Look at the bulwarks at the back. Mm. He's pretty much covered every single zone with, with bulwarks just to survive whatever might come. Like, I mean, seven bulwark is pretty insane. It's just good. Playing good. I'm surprised you guys nerfed the pure damage on that augment. I never thought it was overbearing. But I don't think it's a bad what was the What was the thought process behind that? Um... Martini, if you can share behind nerfing the pure damage. Uh, it was just one of the strongest damage things available. And we were trying to tone down all of the top end by a little bit just to give yeah. um, other options more viability. So it's not just the same augments every single time. Yeah. You actually have some decisions to make. Because uh, pure damage is really good against uh, high resistance units like Bulwarks. So against a comp like that, that naturally might be the 
the choice of damage augment for your carry. Um, but everyone was taking it even against snow bulwarks, against empaths with very low resistances, things like that. And it was still yeah. the best damage option. So we want to make it mm. add a little more thought to you know, which augments are you choosing for the right situation. Yeah. It makes complete sense. So to three in a row here. Yeah. Mm. Is this going to be a sweep? I do wonder. I'm I'm not gonna lie. When I I played this team that that Shabim is playing, a uh, similar team to this, I didn't have much success. Uh, Keen to see if we can turn this around though. Battle Strike is huge on Malora. Oh, he's not letting him have it though. <laughs> yeah, I I play a very similar team comp to this, and I played a lot of games on it before the patch, and after this patch, it feels way less strong. Like it still feels good, but it doesn't feel as strong or even close to. Why? Why do you think that is? I think it's probably a combination of the nerfs to Arcanite, the the crit uh, situation on Scoriox not being a thing anymore, and then also I think it also may have a little Ooh. bit to do with what's in meta right now, other than this team comp that's good into it. <coughs> I don't know if that was the right. Oh, interesting. I was going to say, I don't know if that's the right decision to move the Laura, but it looks like it could be. If we can get this ult off, which it looks like. But man, the Phosphorus moves away too quickly for the charm to even be. Effective. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Phosphorus has one of the fastest movement speeds in the game. Yeah. But and so I think, yeah, this looks like it. this is looking like a an absolute sweep right here. Ooh. Yeah. Oh damn! Dominating that match performance won. in a yeah. in a yeah. mirror match. Yeah. Yep. Well done, Shout out well. to Scoriax for flaming Shabim and telling him that he's washed up, got in his head. <laughs> the game. Got it in his head. Got it in his head. All right. So that's Soda one zero right now. Yep. I think he's getting Shabim. crashed from that. Interesting. That's why I just. I mean, he got beat that badly. His yeah. entire PC went to the Shadow Realm. True. Crazy. That's Oof. a beating and a half. That's hey, let him know, Soda. Let him know. You yeah. know, I've not seen anyone spamming the emotes during these matches. You guys are keeping it very professional. I would like to see that change, but appreciate how the sportsmanship, you know what I mean? And Shabim, unlucky game there. I, I And I don't want to say he's fell off, but definitely performing. Um, Worse than he did during the most coveted tournament, the Jimbrina Invitational, where he won pretty decisively. Um, and really just hasn't lived up to that potential since. <laughs> Yo, I'm just getting word that apparently they actually already played one and it's 2 0. I'm just getting confirmation hmm. now. Yeah, that's what he told me. But that they already played one before? He told me it's 2 0, yeah. Oh, what? Okay. Okay, weird. I don't know why that happened, but I told him to wait for it. Maybe we um, called him. Okay, cool. maybe we called him after one game, and that's when we said to wait for it. I shouldn't have. I told him like they've been they've been waiting for thirty <laughs> minutes. I've told him to wait for a while. Okay, but it's I fine. I think we are uh, okay to wait for winner bracket winners bracket games though, because the loser bracket needs to catch up anyway, right? No, you yeah, yeah. Bracket, it's fine. Have... It's just waiting on winners to lose out. Uh, we have. Oh, a, is we it? have okay. a... We have a Mindia, Mindia Soda match that, that we can play right now. Okay. So I'm yeah. just getting them. I'm just going to get them the, the link for it and we'll bring them in. Yep. Okay. Battle of the Hype Boys. Yeah, that's going to be, that should be an interesting one. And as I said, um, Mindia, the, probably from my perspective, the best member of Hype. If I had to give a number two, it actually would be Soda. So this is the battle for who's the best player in Hype. It'll be interesting to see. Godson making it through loser's bracket. Who did he lose out to yeah, at the yeah. start? I gave him a high seed. Yeah, so Godson with the 2-1 in loser's bracket against Lucifer. Down with Lucifer. Um, <laughs> you, you, know my username before, you know my username before Scoriox was Lucifer, right? I do, I do, I do. Yeah, we picked Scoriox okay. with a much better name. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, man. If I wouldn't have been able to do this with you if your name was Lucifer, man, I so, can't, I can't God, attach myself to that. So Godside <laughs> actually got knocked out by Soda in a two-zero. Mm. 
Yeah, and he's God. he's he's making a he's making a pretty solid uh <clears throat> solid comeback. Oh like yeah, he, he yeah. beat Lucifer. He's in God. now. Like God's on solid. Yeah, not a bad player at all. He's the one who knocked out Viper out of the first Inferno. Yeah, he was. He was. Yep, he was. Okay, so we have Mindia in the channel right now. Uh, let me know when it's up on stream, and we'll, yeah, yeah, we'll get that match going. Okay, uh, both of these guys, again, are hype boys. It'll be interesting to see if Mindia mixes this up for uh, Soda, because I'm sure they were playing together, getting ready for the tournament. Though, as we said earlier, Soda did come into the chat, and he said, that Mindia just came up with this team comp today. So we'll see how he plays into it or if Mindia has something else ready for us. I'm excited to find out. Uh, unfortunately, Shabim is going to bed. It's a bit too late for him. So he's asked to be DQ'd from losers. So he that is going hang. to be the last we see. So it might, I think, Skarx, you did get to him, man. I think you did get to him. Ah. Uh. You hate to say it. I'm shout looking to forward Shabim. to seeing him in future comps. Yep. Shout out to Shabim. You're still number one in my heart. <laughs> so right now in the back end as well, guys, we have Eschard and Leo Main playing. So Leo Main being one of the, the Brazilian guys. Uh, so this is our semifinal. We have Eschard, Leo Main playing in the background now, and Soda Mindia on stream right now. Well, the other thing is, I think uh, Shabim getting knocked out there what seemed relatively easily. Um, is is more a testament to the patch coming out merely 12 hours before the tournament went up. Um, and I just think, like, everyone's scrambling to pick up the quickest team they could make. Um, Shabim, I think, might have needed a little bit more time, or Soda just did it really, really well, right? So um, I think that's quite interesting, and I actually really like that dynamic, generally speaking. But, yeah. Yeah, it sucks for the players because they prepare for this patch. They expect it to be this way. But for the viewers, you know, we got to love it, right? Because these players are going in blind, so it makes it more interesting for us. We don't know what they're going to do. We don't know what they're going to play. Yeah, sucks for players, good for viewers. Sorry, boys. Interesting. Okay, so Soda just playing to see where Mindy is going to set up his umber. Interesting call to do that. Not sure how I feel about it, especially as we saw from the last game. You really want to uh, take games off of this team comp, this hyper carry umber, this hyper hyper carry umber before he can really get going. Because once he gets going, it's hard to get him to stop. Yeah, I feel like if uh, Soda just played his more standard uh, turn one opener with the with the bulwarks and such, he probably could have won the round and taken. You know, taking some HP, taking a chunk out of Mindia's HP there. I agree. Um, we've seen how crazy this number can get. Um, but Soda does have a very, very different comp than what Fable was playing earlier. So, uh, yeah, gonna be gonna be interesting to see uh, if he can handle the super Umber. And as we said, they are in the same guild, so it's definitely possible. With Mindia's new comp, he's probably seen Soda play this before. He probably has an idea of how Soda is going to play this next turn. So maybe a maybe a leg up to Mindia here. Maybe he can win this round as well. Honestly, I think he will. We'll see. All right, start bit away for a little bit. What is going on? What are we looking at here? Oh right, the Mindia Harbinger comp. Here we go. Okay, I see. <laughs> He stopped the Umber from getting the Omega off really fast because the Water Bulwark takes away energy. Not going to be enough, though. Oh, no. Not at all. Yeah, this might... Oh, he's so screwed. <laughs> yeah, this is not looking good for Soda. <laughs> You've got to take that thing out early. Mindy is like... Yeah, if I was... What I imagine right now is, you know, like that Mr. Burns meme where he's like putting his fingers together and saying, excellent. That's, that's Mindy yeah. right now. Yeah. If yeah, I was. Yeah. If you that... win the last two rounds, it's like, all right, cool. Cool. With this comp? Yeah. Easy. Something Soda could have done was he could have trapped his Terror Bird in the back right corner because of the way this Umber is set up. And because the Terror Bird is able to attack from behind a few spaces, he would have been able to get damage off on that Umber. 
without the terror bird walking up to the front line. Yeah, that could be really interesting, right? If he keeps his damage in the back line, doesn't kill Mindia's Harbingers very quickly, and instead yeah, tries to focus down the Ember. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, actually. <laughs> Because Mindia needs these Harbingers to die. Uh, the Diagro, though, from the ult. I think it'll still be enough to get him. Oh my god, the Umbra's going down. There it goes. Yep, he just has no life steal yet, right? Yeah, pretty much. Up in the house, two house shouting them out in the chat. Okay, so Soda well, coming back on that next round. You go for Wave. You Oh my god. The problem here is, though, is that Mindia is going to get <laughs> such a huge buff on this next round. Could you imagine if Soda didn't go for Warp Wave? <laughs> Someone in chat said Soda, dot, dot, dot. It only gets worse from here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Dust. Dust might have been somewhat... It's not a bad pick, right, with, uh, with Gyro on, on the board. It just activates that extra little thing that you didn't have before. Yeah, it wouldn't be a terrible idea to throw one yeah. one uh, token on it, right? And maybe get a exactly. nice, nice little advantage. So just make it because you've already got a pretty clean, clean strat. So activate that final thing just to to optimize everything. Yeah, could have been he just valued the other ones more and really wanted to go as hard as he could on the other mm. on the other augments and just didn't have the tokens to even throw one on the dust. Yeah. And to be fair, I don't think he he needs any like we we've seen how he scales up. So I'm very very curious to see how Mindia does. Uh, it maybe even an empath, an empath uh, matchup. That's going to be an interesting one, I think. Something something as aggressive as his compared to something as as passive as as the empath. <laughs> All right. Things are running very smoothly, guys. Very happy with how everything's going today. Yeah, that's what happens when you go from 256 to 64 players. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we're going to well, practice let's, let's 64 know. for a bit and then let, move back up. Let us know in chat, guys. How are you guys finding this? Is this a lot smoother? What's the? Are you guys enjoying this a lot more than, than last week? I won't say more than last week, but is it a better experience? Let us know in chat what you guys are thinking about this. We, we tried to make some changes to really optimize the flow of it all. Having I've TSG helping, <laughs> having TSG helping has been really good too. To be honest, oh, yeah, TSG has been grabbing a lot of the games for me, which is something I was doing last week. So really, yeah, it's I got you, man. a large part of it's just numbers. The more people are helping, the more people, uh, the less players, yeah. the the smoother it goes. A hundred percent. I think sixty four is a nice nice number to play with for for the next couple of weeks, in my opinion. Okay, yeah, so I'm happy to, and, to settle on 128 for the long term, but yeah, we definitely practice a bit more first. Yeah, interesting pull here from Soda with the tier zero water Grocco. Again, that takes away some of the energy from that umber so he can't get started up as fast. And then he has the phosphorus, and but he also has the siphon matrix on that water Grocco. What's Is the that thought, thought behind that, Martini? I mean, siphon matrix just trying to slow down the umber. Um, I didn't see if he put attack speed reduction or energy reduction. If he goes for attack speed Ooh. reduction, it's probably better up front a bit, but as soon as the Ember casts, it goes away. Um, if you do the energy reduction, it'll actually just delay that Ember's cast, but allow him to continue auto attacking. So the yeah, Ember's both have merit. Don't know which one's better. Well, I would I say energy is better because the, the auto attacks aren't, again, the auto attack isn't the damage, the Omega Power. So if you can keep him from getting that Slayer buff that gives him attack speed be from not being able to get all the damage down from the Omega with his energy, I think that's really good here. This is a, actually, in my opinion, a really good counter. Mm -hmm. so he went with the attack speed. He did. But as soon as the Ember casts, cleanses it off, back to normal. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, that's why you delay the Omega. But the this Phosphorus... Speed. I think it, I think it was energy. Right. I don't think it was attack speed. No, it's definitely attack speed. Right. Oh, oh, my oh wow! Crazy soda. Let's wow. go. Wait, what? The phosphorus just 
barely deleted the umber as it was casting its omega there. I gotta watch this again. Yeah, fascinating. I think, yeah. So yeah, there it is we, beatable. It yep, is beatable. there we go. We we found the the counter. Actually, and to be fair, that was actually a really smart counter from Soda. Well, I do have to ask Martini with the attack speed, right? Would that reduce the amount of energy gain from the attacks? Because I know that it's based completely on attack speed. For example, if you hit once every second, you might gain twenty energy, but if you hit twice every second, you'll gain fifty energy, right? Well, half of that, or whatever I said. I don't know. My brain's fuzzy, but. Um, if you reduce the attack speed through augments, are they going to gain more energy per attack or no? Uh, no, it's uh, the amount of energy gained per attack is calculated at the beginning of the fight, whatever their attack speed started at. So oh, okay. if attack speed changes during the fight, uh, it's not going to change the amount gained per attack. So slowing that attack speed down will actually slow down the total amount of energy gained right. across all those attacks because they're just attacking slower. Um, but a lot of... Umber's energy gain, if you paid attention there, comes from steam triggering, and then yeah. he just gets a bunch yeah. of energy regardless of attacks. Yeah, yeah. So that's so that explains why like a fighter, a five fighter will drop your energy gain per attack, but um like Arcanite won't. Interesting. This five fighter triggers before the round starts. A lot of that a lot of good lot sportsmanship as well between Mindia and Soda. Like I know they are they are guild mates. Um, a lot of GGs after the first match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a tight one. Even though um, Soda won with six hundred HP, um, we've seen if this Umber just gets a little bit over a threshold, goes nuts, right? So yeah. Yeah, I wonder yeah. if, if Soda's going to make that change. Sorry, Jim, but I wonder if uh, Soda's going to make that change into energy or if he's going to double down the, the attack speed thinking that it's that's what helped him win. Also interesting to see Soda continually putting this Umber down on all the way over on the right. I really think there's an argument to be made for putting the Aegis right in the middle and putting Umber on one or the other side. That way you can move him around depending on what your opponent does. I'm going to steal this team comp and do that. I'll let you guys know. I, I'm was. definitely going to be taking this team comp as well. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I mean, anybody that's watching this tournament, you can assume lots of people are going to take it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. It's bound yeah. to happen. After what have you done? Time. What has Mindia <laughs> done to ranked play for the next week? <laughs> when next why? patch? When next patch? <laughs> next patch. You guys going to have me bitching in the arena. Ranked. Umber is broken. <laughs> I'm going to be bitching in arena chat all week, bro. Uh, just tag Ben. Every time. Don't yeah, mention yeah, him. yeah. Ben's going to appreciate that. Definitely do that. Yeah, please don't <laughs> tag Ben like that. We aren't even in slow-mo, but it looks Aaron like we are. It even more. Aaron appreciates what, sorry? Uh, everyone tagging him, saying things are broken. Oh, yeah, yeah, do it. Just tag Aaron. It gets things fixed quickly. Wait, what's what's broken? Oh gee, why are you even where are you, Scary? I wasn't here, I was eating some food. <laughs> oh my god. Uh we're just messing around. Just talking about uh potential ladder meta implications over the next couple days from people watching this tournament. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna see this build a lot. Oh my god. <laughs> that's that's what we were getting at, yeah. <laughs> but I do think it's cool having these tournaments every week and like having the, the patches come out so regularly. I think we are gonna see so many like uh, we're going to see the meta form and, and the rank leaderboard uh, meta just based on what we see in tournaments, I think. Don't even know. And I'm, really, I'm really hoping, Jimbo, I'm really hoping that uh, you can actually get these these matches out clipped up so people can just watch the grand final, the finals, like, and they can just, instead of having to watch a, a four hour thing, I think that's oh, going to yeah. be super, super helpful. Oh, yeah. A lot of these, uh, a lot of the matches from the previous Inferno will be up tomorrow. Oh, amazing! Um, I was yeah, cool. Hopefully, there's not like a one week, <laughs> a one week delay on it all. But yeah, we have day jobs, TSG. 
I know. We were, I know, we I were know. also sick this week. I think we. Yeah, no, no, I know, I know, I know. No, you guys are doing good. You guys are doing good. It's somewhat of a miracle we're running a tournament at all. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't know, believe know, we both got sick at the same time. Soda here taking back that round three again, just like the last game. You got sick first. Nice. You were you were sick on like Monday, and I was sick yeah, I think I, on like I think Wednesday. I got you sick. Yeah. Wait, let me guess. Let me guess. Yeah, warp, we were kissing. Warp wave. You have to. No, 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 no. I think I think sneakily oh. here it's Omnisource Surge. Why? Why? What's the thought process? That's insane. Moral mega power for Umber. Ah, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm looking <laughs> at that as well, to be honest. It's not worth it. Warp wave's too good. He might be too scared yeah. about the uh the stun though. Because that is how you look yeah, so, Umber. Yeah, so I think warp wave here is the is oh. potentially better for for oh. soda, but worse for Mindia. Yeah. And they both got what's west. So them. they, I think, like if I were to be playing both sides, it feels like they each blocked what they didn't want the opponent to get instead it, of bidding yeah. on what they think is better. No, it gives the energy though. It gives the energy. It's fine for Mindia. Like fifty energy on Umbra gives you the cast. CC. It helps. It's better for his Umbra's survivability. It's worse for the Umbra's like top end potential. Let's say. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, there's a certain point where you have enough Omega Power anyways. You don't really need more. He's already one-shotting everything. I, I also think this outcome, the, this Augment outcome, is better for Mendia than it is for Soda. But if they were to have canceled each other out, it would have been better for Soda, so... <laughs> yeah. I'm seeing the comments. TSG running a tight ship. Absolutely, man. I want these guys to win. I want Inferno to be the go-to. There I think go. it already Umber gets, is. Umber gets the no, energy is. boost immediately it is. It is. after the wave comes in. But he's got a phosphorus. Oh. Ninja him. Ah, man. Why is that Umber attacking so slow? Look at the legs on this phosphorus. They're gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is this? Thinking, what we were all thinking. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He, he doesn't hit like, like, look at these kicks. They are just deadly. He ain't got no leg day. He's got bird legs, bro. You know, some kangaroo kicks right there, man. Ooh, making some... I feel like this is some desperation moves right here. Does Fire Grocco slow attack speed or something? Like, what's what's slowing down Umbre so much? Uh, it's the uh, augment on the Grocco. The, Grocco, the water Grocco. No, no, but after the Omega cast, he's, he's, he got slower for some reason. It's slower later mm. into the fire. Watch for it this time. I don't know. There's something slowing him down. Mm, I'm not sure. Replay it? I'm not sure about that. You feel slow. I think you feel slow as well. But... So we got the um, Umber moving over to the other side. I, I like it. I like it. You know what's possible that you were noticing for the slow? So Slayers get 50% bonus attack speed at the start of the fight. And then when mm. that duration wears off, it looks like they slow way down. Maybe yep. that's what you saw. I think that's it. So they always attack really fast right at the start. But once it wears off, they lose, well, 50. They lose a lot of attack speed. Uh, yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, right. So they slow way is. down. That was the okay. Slayer running out. So it's pretty fair to say Mindia should win this, especially if he gets two more takedowns. Omega's gonna be hitting. Oh yeah, this this number is gonna do it. But I mean, he's got to be honest. The five bulwark. He on might Soda's have the team. hyper here as well. No, he's he's. Oh, good. Umber's hyper now. Oh, oh, nice. No, that's Umber's got oh, this. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Oof. The now it's just mind games. Yeah. On well, no, because Mindy is not getting that much damage down. And it costs a lot to move, so he, yeah. he can only do this for one more turn, right? Yeah, but the game's probably over. well. You know, if he wins another round with just Umber, it's not over yet. Yeah, he's playing. He's playing it. He, yeah, yeah. So he he got a nice side switch there, which allowed him to win. I think I think if Mindia had stayed on the right that last turn, uh, he would have lost. And now he's switching back, so he's yeah. He's, pre he's predicting that Soda is going to swap and trying to. I think this is a good move. Swap. I think that's a good move. What, what do you guys think? Do you, do you think Soda's going to switch up? I think Soda's, I think Soda's he gonna is. Panic and switch I up. Think I think he's going to switch gonna because switch. he's going to expect Minya to be like, oh, it would cost too much to move everything back over. Yeah. 
Yeah, Mendia is really I, relying I, on his positioning here, and I and I I think Soda's gonna swap. Yeah, boys, we have a match right here. This yeah, this is, is a good good game. This is a solid one. One one. This is for for the this is potentially I, for the win. It's not one no, one. No matter what happens, Soda has no one. matter That's what it. it's one zero. Oh, it's sorry, one zero. Oh. Apologize. Yeah. No matter what happens here, I think Mindia by far has given oh, us one of the best. Mindia is running out of time. Come on, man, play some. Okay. We, we should definitely do like a. We should do a recap of like an honorable mentioned team sort of thing. We we should do a recap for oh, the tournament in general. Oh, but... he committed to that side. How is this going to play out? He committed everything to that side. He, nothing's he on the nothing's on the uh, umber right now as well. Did he predict yeah, that he needs Mindia to... was going to swap back and just threw everything over there? He didn't get his Omega off on the Umber for that first cast either. His Grokko is stuck in the corner. His Grokko is not stunning the Umber at all. Like, he, he put the Fury Ox yeah. in, front of, in front of the Grokko. He's, he's letting <laughs> the Umber scale. <clears throat> the Phosphorus keeps getting off of the Umber as well. And I think Umber's uh, gone. Yeah, I think he's got it. Umber's oh, down. There we go. Oh, Whoa. Soda Whoa. takes it. So, Great wow. game. GG's. So duh. Well played, sir. Well played. Call, sir. Such a cool match. That was incredible. Incredible game. Yeah, so the Grokko was stuck and wasn't contributing, but he was really trying to commit. I mean, he had his fire Grokko hitting, hitting number, really trying to commit as much as he can to just taking down that one unit because it's it's the only unit that matters. To be yep. fair, though, yep. it did yep. redirect so, the gyro. So the big dick swinging as well, committing to the right side. Yo, he that was a ballsy move that played out. That was an incredible, incredible play. I don't remember that part, but yeah, the game was very fun. That was a great match. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what you were seeing, TSG, but um, I'm, all I'm going to say is I'm enjoying the games. That was a great series. Even though he took both games, I feel like that second match was made up for the first one. Back and forth, very fun. Uh, great right. job to Mendia. We praise you for bringing a fun deck like that. Good job, buddy. All right. We are actually now in losers, and we are at that point where we don't have a match lined up. So, uh, Starks, if you want to bring... How's Leo Main? Are they in the middle of it? Yeah, they're, they're already in the middle. They're 30 minutes in, so they should be about to wrap that one up. So as soon as that's done, we can jump straight into the finals. But in the meantime, do you want to uh, bring up the, the bracket? Skyrox, yeah, I can try. Talk, it's, not as, some of the it's not as clean as challenge, but I can try. Yeah, yeah, I mean, go go to the public view. The public view is a lot cleaner than than the admin view. I was hoping I was in the public view, but I'm not entirely sure. I think I am. Yeah, you are. You are. You are. You are. You are. So yeah, you can see. Yeah, you can talk about some of the stuff uh, that you're seeing, but yeah, Eshard Leo Main right now still playing. Leo Main stepped up like he did really, really well. He was still seeded 21. Uh, Esjad seeded number one this tournament. Um, but they're now facing off in semifinals, which is, um, again, it's 30 minutes. So unsure of the score right now. Uh, Going to be interesting to see what, what happens then when we get that update. In the losers right now, we have uh, Fabled and Lord Urano. Uh, they're also playing. No update on the score yet. Uh, Potate, Potate and Hanega are playing right now as well. That's going to be an interesting one. I would have loved to get that one on stream. Uh, did I request for that to be on stream? I have no idea. No, I didn't. I didn't. That would have been a great one to have on stream. Damn. So the next one we hey, covered... Don't Guys, in that um, Estrad Leome matchup, which we don't have the scores yet for, those are the two second place finishers in the last two tournaments. Ooh. fighting each other, right? Because Leo Man got second in the last one, and Estro got second in the first one. So interesting. Uh, did, Leo, did Leo Man compete in the first uh, Inferno? He did, right? I remember that name. I don't remember. I think it. he yeah, did. I'm pretty sure he did. But I think he he didn't. He didn't. Oh, Estro's typing. Oh, oh my God! Estro lost two one. Estro down. Wow, man. Leo Man. Leo Man stepping up for the Brazilians. Fascinating. All right, so Back we get Soda Ooh, and Leo Hair. Main. All right, let me bring in Soda and Leo Main. I just need one of them. Fascinating. Leo yeah, Main yeah, yeah. Really did it to him. Congrats. Doing it for the Brazilian boys. Yeah, yeah, for Love sure. I'll bring, I'll, I'll bring Leo Main. I think Leo Main is a streamer, so I'll send him the, the code. 
I think Leo Main, if I'm not mistaken, is an actual TFT guy. Um, so fascinating, fascinating. To, dude, who would have saw that one coming? Crazy. Love to see uh, these people coming in from TFT performing in the tournaments. You know, they're actually making money now when they're playing in these tournaments if they win, <laughs> instead, of, instead of you know just doing it for fun. So love to see you guys over here. You you play in TFT at a high level. You want to make some money? Come join the Inferno. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So Liam is having a, a quick toilet break and then he's going to be joining us uh, to stream. That's going to be a, a crazy one. So right now, guys, this is a best of five. Leo Main and Sodor is a best of five. Uh, oh, are we doing this as a best of five or just the grand finals? No, we'll just do, we'll just do the last two. Okay. So this is best of three. This is a best of three. <laughs> so Leo Main and Sodor, best of three. And whoever gets into this goes into the finals. Let's go fascinating what can someone find out or well, i mean i can find this out real quick uh i want to see what leo main ended up getting in in the first inferno i'm gonna bring this up right now i think he got top eight right he didn't do badly no he didn't where did leo main what did leo main get i'm bringing this up Standings, please load up. Hurry up. Bain in stream will. I believe he's top 32. Leo Main was 13. He ranked 13. Okay, yep. And he had a solid run, man. He had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight wins and two losses in the last one. So he had a crazy run, eight to two. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and Eschard also had two, four, six, eight, eight to two as well. So yeah, they legit had the exact same run, just different, uh, different times where they lost. But crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, so like I said, Leo Main is just on his way back. Once he gets into the stream, Scarx, let us know. Once he's up on stream, I'll give him the green light to start the match. Yeah, I love seeing these Brazilian guys in here. Me too, man. Like, I know I know, Storming, Leo Main, Hanega, all three are training buddies. Uh, so they've been grinding and Storming's been grinding on stream for like, dude, it's insane. It's insane. Oh, yeah. And he's I know that they're actually... Sure. Yeah, yeah. And I know that they're actually working on uh, something similar to what you guys are doing with Inferno, but a Brazilian version with the Brazilian community, Ooh. with TFT guys as well. Um, so that's going to be very, very interesting. I'm very keen to see how that, that plays out. I'm going to be speaking to them about it after this tournament, actually. I nice. think seeing how that plays out. I, I can't wait to win that. Everyone should, yeah, just be, <laughs> just be thankful that me and Jimbo don't play in the Inferno because we would just stomp everyone, you know? That's literally so true. Like, I've it would be pathetic. My teeny is nodding like you. Okay. <laughs> See, he, he yeah. understands, bro. We I got, I mean, we got the coach right there, right down there. We got the teenies. catch. <laughs> you already know, bro. Uh, funny, no funny, one wants funny. these hands. All right. I want to check in on how Godson is doing as well. Godson still, it's been about 30 minutes there as well. So I'm going to, I'm going to check in on, on the matches that are going right now. So the winner of Godson and Zod is going to be playing with Zeptile. And if we follow the seeds and, and they they kind of predict what's going to happen, Godson should win this one. And it's going to be Zeptile at seed 13 against Godson at seed 10. So again, a very evenly well, I think, matched. I yep. think Zeptile is a very proficient player and Godson had a really good run in the last tournament. Um, but I have mm -hmm. this feeling that Zeptile got a bit unlucky in the last tournament. Um, and so I, I think it'll be a really close game. It's I, I don't actually I haven't actually seen Godson play yet. I'm sure he's good. I have no idea how good he, he is. Wasn't on stream at all, right? He, no, he no, just we just vibe, like undercover. He, he just no one knows what he's playing. No he one was, knows the strat at all. He was caught quite behind the rest of the bracket, so we definitely didn't want to slow that down. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. So I don't know how that game would go, but it would look interesting. Hmm. I mean, if but we. The if we get a Guts and Zeptile match, I, I think I might ask them to hold up on it and just so we can get that on stream, depending on how everything else goes. No, um, that's, that's I think that the, might be a that's the match that's at the bottom. I'd rather not. I'd rather like now we'll see. while we're oh. waiting on matches to come up, I, I did want to bring up 
Oh, go ahead. Leo main is here. Leo main yep. is here. Yeah, I got it. So if you want to bring okay. that up, let me know when it's on stream and it's we can, a, um, we can a, start the good. match. Awesome. I put a Team Rocket meme. That's funny. Shout out Ramza, another Brazilian boy. We love to see it. <laughs> what is this? Oh, a Blazer Night team. I thought we all just go and get like a, like a drink or a beer or something for a bit. And then we'll come back. <laughs> I I need to take some steroids to balance this out. It's like having an effect on me. I know what SJ was talking about in the chat with the rock, paper, scissors. That's what Blazer Knight is. Okay, so Liam Main tries to snipe away that Bloom affinity, which I think is a very good idea. Smart on his part. I actually mm. didn't see what comps they were playing. Uh, what are these guys playing? Blazer Knight on right, Mindia's Impact? side. But on Mindia, sorry. Who is it again? Uh, Leo Main Soda. Yeah, Leo Main is Blazer Knight. I'm not sure what Soda is. Soda's playing the um, Dark Knight, right? The Terror Bird? Wait, yeah. It should be interesting. Yep. Yeah, so Leo Main blocking the, the Bloom Legendary Augment there to not allow Soda to go Super Bloom mode. Yeah, that's probably a good block. Hearts. How do you guys think this Blazer Knight setup is going to do against the Dark Knights here? I think pretty good. I'll be honest. I hate to say it, but I think this is going to be tough for Soda. <laughs> I would have loved <clears throat> to see Midia's team up against uh, Leo Main's team. But this is the way the cookie crumbles, right? <laughs> Dude, that would be so much fun. It, he might not even kill anything, though. It would be fun to mm. watch, though. Unfortunate. Hopefully Soda knocks him into the lower bracket. We can see it. Or Mindia comes back up. True, true. I mean, he, he showed that he could have he could have won that last one with just positioning. It was just an unfortunate. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so right off the bat, Soda throws his bulwarks as far back in the corner as he possibly can. You think he's trying to get the uh, empaths of the to walk forward and split up a bit? Yeah, yep, definitely. <laughs> well, what are you? What are your thoughts on start, against the bulwark team like this? Uh, against an empath team like this, what are your thoughts on bulwark as an opener, Martini? Do you think it's the 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 smartest thing to to play or? I'm not sure. I haven't really played too much uh, heavy bulwark focus teams. Because you um, want to be doing damage. Like, yeah. against the, like, bulwark doesn't seem to be the play. I mean, just straight bulwarks against empaths. Empaths are going to have the advantage, right? Because bulwarks aren't going to yeah. be able to do enough DPS. Empaths are going to outheal it, and eventually the bulwarks will die. Exactly. Um, yep. But as a round one, at least, I mean, they're survivable. He was able to get the, the round one victory. Looks fine, but. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he goes immediately into more bulwarks or goes straight for the, the Arcanize to try to you know pump out more damage. Yeah. Because I think if he goes more bulwarks here, he's gonna have a tough time actually getting through this this crunk. But yeah, he just goes in more bulwarks. Straight into six bulwark. Ooh. Update on the potate uh Hanega. Potate with two against one Hanega. So Hanega is now out of the tournament. Unfortunate. I, I think Kinega is a very strong player, but Tate doing his thing. So I said the Bulwarks would have a tough time getting through the Kronk. It turns out when you have multiple Grokko stuns, just chain stunning it, uh, they were actually able to clear the Kronk pretty quickly. And the Wildfire is just not doing enough damage to get through these Bulwarks with all their resistances. Okay. So yeah, to be fair, strong. they don't have the Bulwark bonus yet. So that could have a pretty big effect on how this next round plays out. The Bulwark bonus on the Kronk, you mean? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think the fact that Leo Main's team isn't fully empath kind of helps Soda here, but I could be wrong. Been wrong before. What what uh what round does this empath thing uh scale up, Martini? It's round four, yeah. Three three to four in that range, yeah. yeah. Um, depends what you're going against. Uh, against kind of mid mid speed comps, you can uh, hit a you can hit a power spike on three. Against aggressive, strong early game comps, you, you don't see it really hitting its stride until turn four. And Soda goes straight into Bloom Arcanite. Yeah, good placement by Soda. All right, yo. Uh, Zeptile is saying Z Godson's out. Zod 1, 2, 0. But we haven't got confirmation in the actual Discord yet. So I'm not going to put that down until we get absolute com confirmation. Yeah, not not very surprised by that. I've played Zod a lot and ranked. We're around the same elo. Um, not a bad player. From my experience, no offense, I don't think he's an elite player, but uh, definitely not bad. Good. Oh yeah, I just realized if his if he's Brazilian, it's probably not Leo. It's probably Leo, right? <laughs> I don't I'll care, to... buddy. I'll pronounce it how I want. Oh my God! Please don't, man. Please. Don't. <laughs> it could be Leo. We could be saying it wrong. USA. So I think here that this comp loses round one through three, and then wins. Uh, wins pretty good. It, it should win the rest of these rounds. That's my own perspective. But we'll have to see how it plays out. Soto really needs to ramp up his damage here to be able to yep. punch through these. But his position, you know, getting these empaths to split like this, they're, I mean, that, they're very split. That's, yep. that's very good for, for Soto here. That was incredible, yeah. That was in all directions. It's... It looked like you know when you when you break a pool table, <laughs> mm -hmm. it kind of went everywhere. Yeah, so a lot of these units are just missing out on on one or two of the support casts from the empath and not getting hit. I'm not convinced. I think they actually all were getting hit. They weren't all benefiting from Blazonite. It's well like played. is Templar well like a small range? So, so it are up one. By the way, I lied. I thought he was going to win that the whole time. I was just reading what Estrid said. <laughs> yeah, I saw Estrid's coming in the chat. Uh, I'm just waiting for him to see it. But yeah, the great play by uh, Soda, moving those around in a way that's most beneficial for him. Yeah, that was really well played. It's it's kind of like how, you know, we, we were giving Torex all that credit. And I think, you know, Soda has been definitely been practicing some kind of matchup like this. And knows how to play it whereas torex i think he was just kind of in the first inferno was just kind of testing stuff out to see what he could do yeah that looked really well thought out the way sort of places you know it's like he knew how to to handle that matchup when they're in the corner like that yep very impressive yeah didn't just throw his units on the board randomly had had very clear intentions on what what they were trying to do mm. Like, although I'm not convinced it did a whole lot to the empaths, it definitely dragged the bulwarks away, uh, which meant they're a lot easier to remove. I agree. I think if this was a full empath team, that's that's one of the reasons why I said if it was a full empath team, it would play out different, just specifically how Soda's playing, because they would st still be somewhat clumped together compared to oh, yeah. the bulwarks, like walking off. Impasse getting their uh, shields up. So S. Judd saying Leo Main doesn't know the matchup. You love to see it. <laughs> what what should Leo Main do differently, S. Judd? <laughs> he 
He knew the matchup in his previous series, I think. <laughs> uh, we should have. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Got his ass. Got him. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> More respectful here at Inferno. Oh, that's my buddy. I can say it if I want. It's <laughs> interesting. Why is he using a different team entirely? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Switch it up to Arcanite comp of his own. Also, uh, this is, was the most common Arcanite build before the patch. He's got that three air, then he's got the magma bulwark. Literally, pre patch, this was probably the best team. I'm a little surprised we haven't seen as many invokers. Yeah, we had Zeptile's uh, water invoker set up, right? And that was yeah. one of the only ones, I think. And that we... was less invoker, more like just water with the ranger. You know what I mean? Like no Ophistos. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've seen Ophisto once. We haven't seen an invoker comp with C Forest. I don't think we've even seen C Forest. Mm -hmm. Which I think is one of the strongest 55 mastery point alluvials in the game. It does so much damage. It gets its Omega up so quickly. Yeah, it has the lowest energy cost of all the invokers. So it's easiest to get its cast off. Whoa. Okay, misclick there. Almost dragged the cow. So it's going with three bulwark, two toxic, and just adding a, a weapon to the ranger here for round two. The toxic should be pretty good into the enemy bulwarks because the poison does pure damage, so it doesn't care about resistances. Mm. Magma doesn't, does it? Magma does energy damage. So it's but less effective than toxic against the high resistance bulwarks. Does each magma pool count separately or together? That is a very good question. They are they each do their own damage. It doesn't add up to one source of damage. It's like they each they each tick individually. Okay, so twenty resolve negates magma entirely. Mm. No, I don't think twenty. I think I think Magma is more than twenty. It's like twenty two or something, isn't it? Well that's more than twenty. Okay, so twenty five res <laughs> resolve <laughs> negates all yeah. of magma. You're killing me. <laughs> You're killing me, smalls. Goodness gracious. I think someone what just had a crash. Uh oh. Oops. What's happened? We had a crash. Yep, we think no. someone crashed. Who was it? Soda and Leo Main, right? Yeah, Soda and Leo Main. Oh, yeah, it looks like he's logging back in. Unfortunate for uh, Leo. Oh, right. No, there was a, um, the gold bugged out, Mastery Points bugged out. So he restarted the match to see if it restarted the app to see if it if it's sorts itself out. Okay, uh, are they looking yeah. to reconnect and try to keep the game going? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's, That's unfortunate. Fine. This is this is part and parcel of it being a beta, unfortunately. Yeah, and right, for beta go. pretty good, so um let's see. Okay, we're back in. Well, that actually does we, fix the bug. I've never, I've never tried. And are we seeing round three playing out with exactly the same setup as round two? They just yeah, what they just decided not to play anything on round three. To maybe Soda was waiting to see what he would put down, 
and then Leo got really lucky. I can't think of any other way that would have happened. Is that just me, or is that weird? I don't know what. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened here. That had to have been the case, or it, maybe they both lagged out. <laughs> I don't know. Also, Soda lost a unit. Uh, oh, maybe Soda played stuff and then things got removed from his board or something because I'm pretty sure he had three fire and six bulwark last time. This time he was on two fire, five bulwark. So I think an entire like flare or something got removed from his board. Um, hopefully this all sorts itself out for the next round. I mean, no, there's a flare there. It's like oh, it's, flares already though. Oh, it's his ranger. His ranger was, was his ranger? Oh, his ranger had a shield, a fire shield last time, I think. Okay, here he can get the triple blue. I mean, now he has triple arcanite as well. We'll see if he puts the Lilura in or if he favors mm -hmm. one of these other fighters. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't put Lilura in here, though. Mm -hmm. It feels good here. Yeah, goes straight into three bloom. Yep, this phosphorus is going to be a tank. Three bloom, three arcanite, tank plus damage, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you get three stacks on both of your composites on a hundred cost unit. Like, hopefully that thing does some work. Just imagine if it was an Adorius with three Spore and three Mystic. How crazy that would be! Adorius with attack speed and crit, bro. That would be crazy. Oh, yeah. Ad Adorius, <laughs> the true ADC. Very nice. All right. Oh my god. Soda also going three bloom, three arcanite. Great so, lure replacement though. Big charms. Yep. Big fat charm. You love to see it. Scaryox is doing work though. Oh yeah, he is. I don't believe I am. Oh wait, sorry. Jesus <laughs> this Christ. guy, bro. This is so close. This Fury Ox on Soda side is mm. blasting though. Yep. But the the three bloom terror bird just oh. not going down. Yep. That was the difference there. That thing was strong. Yeah, that but, bloom. I mean, they both have bloom, but yeah, Soda's had it too. Yeah, and Soda's had the bulwark on top of it. So what you see is start to come into play a lot more now. Is things like the phosphorus angles, where the enemy Soda's phosphorus yeah. had the perfect angle against Scariox, um, yep. while the phosphorus was in front. So if you can prevent that, you have a lot more staying power. Yeah, like you said, that Omega from the Phosphorus was just lined up perfectly to hit not only the Scoriax in the back lane, but also the Ranger. Min-max damage. Uh, interesting take from Soda here to put in a Feriox instead of Scoriax to get that fire damage. It will be doing more damage than a Scoriax would because it's got that extra attack from the fire buff, but that magma just over time on the Sengent Seer is going to be great. And you get the um, the tankiness from the magma buff. Yeah, it's a trade-off. Yeah, so does spending less ma fewer mastery points on the, like, let's say, Flare plus Spiriox. Mm -hmm. Well, Scarox uh, would naturally have higher attack damage, wouldn't it? I don't know by how much. Yes, but with the fire buff, it actually works out that Spiriox is uh, slightly stronger. Yeah, 30% yeah, damage increase. Oh, 30 percent. Like Jimbo oh, said, like. like Jimbo said, though, you don't get the magma then, so it's a trade-off. Both players double augmenting up their their birds, their terror birds. But again, it looks like that Scarx just has free reign right now. But he's fr so does front line just isn't tanky enough. Yeah, I agree. I think this so Feriox is uh, might be it. more early yeah. game kind of comp on early game take on this comp compared to what uh leo has where he has less of that going on he's got like the stage two so he's got more tankiness more health i just uh yeah the early game for soda is better but didn't win that either yeah it looks like leo's going full Full offensive or, uh, augments right here. Uh, this is first defensive. 
allies in the medium. So, so with uh, oh, this is on combat start. So even if the the alluvial dies after that, it the effect is already already activated. Correct, Martini? Yeah, yeah. It's right at the beginning, it just applies it. Yeah. And for, for anyone that doesn't know, can, can we clarify? Grit is a uh, is physical, and resolve is energy. Correct. Yeah, flat physical reduction and flat energy reduction. Yeah. So essentially, if it says uh, 20 grit, it means that you take 20 less physical damage. 20 resolve means you take 20 less uh, energy damage. Yeah, his front line is, is just small bulwarks. Just not enough. But, but he's added the indomitable. That gives it that extra survivability. Yeah, but, but is you also need them to do damage and like stuff it. too, right? Yeah, doesn't feel like it's enough though. Oh, oh! Is this oh, close. Terrorbird's Scoriox got, got sniped by Terrorbird. The angle. Yeah. His Terrorbird is on both. He has a good angle for the Omega, so I think he still yeah. wins this though. He needs to move the Scarx if he wants it to be viable. Yep, he, and the, the both opponent the back line. Is what is this? This. Oh yeah. wow! That's only one hex difference. Like, I don't know Just, how wow. that even... So, Leo main. So, 1-1. One, 1-1, one. One, one, yeah. We this had the um, scaling defensive augment on Leo yep. main's uh, terror bird there. Plus the three bloom scaling. Plus he had yeah. vamp hitting it, too, from a support. Yeah. You see, whenever he casted his Omega, he got a big burst of heal. And that terror bird just kept topping his HP off and was unkillable. Hmm. Crazy, crazy. Even after reconnecting, or whatever that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't want to hear that from anyone that they lost because of that. <laughs> yeah, great back and forth. Uh, two different takes on kind of the same comp. We got the two hyper carries, the double Arcanite. You know, Soto went for the Furyax, get more damage from that specific fury axe but the damage over time from the magma and the extra defense bonuses that it gives on the stronger tanks tanks um just seems like it's stronger than soda's comp it's gonna be interesting to see what soda pulls out on this next match or if he just goes for the run back says i think my comp can beat yours i think in this specific matchup leo main's team is stronger so I think it's up to Soda to switch it up. Mm, for sure. It was close though, right? So maybe Soda doesn't feel like he needs to change comps. Maybe he thinks he can position better or augment in a different way. Because um, that wasn't super one-sided. Like, yeah. Domain was winning each round, but only by a little bit, right? It wasn't like hugely That's... one-sided. So I feel like Soda might think he can make enough improvements to you know, just keep running the same comp. Yeah, it did feel like I think Leo's team is slightly better, but I would agree in saying that it's still a skill diff where if you play it in a certain way, especially the positioning, if you play the positioning differently, there's definitely a chance that either way it could go either way. What's your what's your opinion on the Furyax with the fire buff instead of using the magma on the Scoriax and getting the tankiness and then the AoE damage from Magma? I like them both. I mean, I think they're both totally viable. I think the Furyox uh, gets you out there a little faster, puts out a little more, little more damage early, and the Scoriox has a little bit more raw stats and power, you know, for the late game. Um, I've, I've tried hard to say if one's better than the other. They're just a little bit different take on kind of the same main idea. Yeah, yeah. I've tried using Furyox in teams, but I just I haven't had nearly as much success with it. I don't know if it's the raw stats or whatever is causing that, but I've never had much luck with Furyox um, since PvP came out. So he's a lot less that... survivable. Um, his yep. base stats are lower, so he's got lower HP. He doesn't have the you know potential defense you get from Magma, so the unit dies a lot easier. Um, so it's more of a glass cannon kind of thing, and Scoriox is more of a reliable, beefy boy. Yeah, plus he just synergizes so well with the frontline Senger Seer. You get the magma buff, uh, 
in if they're on that seer or singe, especially if it has indomitable, they're sitting there taking that magma damage over and over. They got the extra tankiness from the magma. I think there are specific situations where Furyax will be better and sp- situations where Scoriax will be better. But I think in the matchup, Scoriax edges it out a little bit. Uh, Scoriax, I don't know if you're streaming it, but they, yep. they're in the game. We're going in. Awesome. I believe that Leo or Leo is, is using the same same team that he just won round two with. Or match two, I should say. Dude, I swear we have this issue with like stage, tiers, like matches, round sets. <laughs> <laughs> All the naming conventions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. Yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So go on for Jagged End. Triple bit on Jagged End gets it for free. And Titans Readout. Titans Readout. Soda. Okay. Gonna open up with this same toxic on round one. He's, I think he's opened this every single game, right? I mean, uh, he did play. He did play the empath, right? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, we we did watch him a little bit earlier. He big fan of opening this specific comp this way. I don't really see how you would open it any other way unless you had air. But after the nerf, just not as good. I wonder if Soto is trying to grab that Titans to uh like with a plan to put it on his terror bird one one right now for the zip tile game all right so what's the matchup this time arcanite versus same uh same matchup as last we're running yeah. back arcanite versus I'll be running arcanite. back Mm. To be fair, though, if he didn't have it so perfectly lined up, I think Soda would have still been alive last round. Yeah, now what do you think about putting Furyox in earlier here, Martini? Really get that buff from the fire because, you know, I, I think it's a better to put that in early so you get the extra damage. What's your opinion on that versus waiting a little bit and, or maybe even putting your Phosphorus in first? I think he needs to get the damage ramped up early. Yeah, I don't think putting in six bulwarks here is good enough. Um, the toxic uh, counters it too hard. If you're not going to beat toxic by just putting more little bulwarks on the board. Yeah. I, I think I think a fury ox would be a cool play here. Yeah, plus you get the splash damage from his Omega. Since they're all melee, they're just going to walk up. You put your fury ox somewhere safe where you can just burst one down, get the splash damage. I think damage over time is probably your best bet on this round using Furyax. Yo, Le- Leo's the only one who's actually been um, moving the camera. Hey, <laughs> I swear to God. There's usually only one, yeah. We had that last time too. There's, There's only, only one player. I think Caveman used to move the camera yeah, first a lot. Yeah, Caveman. Right, right, right. He was, like, I I am, I am, he was super used either. to it. Dude, I, I am keen for... Again. For us to to switch up the time zone and, and get some of the Europeans and Americans in. Oh yeah. I feel like there'll be a nice little change of, of atmosphere as well. Yeah, we'll see some new faces in chat as well from the European people who uh can't stay up as late. Hmm. For sure. Make you know, the goal here is so that it's weekly, times can change so that Anybody, no matter what, can join in and feel like they're a part of this. <laughs> that shield. <laughs> yeah, these bulwarks, shield. they just they can't get through the, the toxic. Like the toxic is yeah. just too good against the bulwarks. I saw an accident one shot five units once with a shield. Insane. Is there is there a go-to against the toxics on round one, Martini? Is it just on rounds round, or on round one? Uh I mean, there's a lot of different strong round one things i mean toxic is pretty good on round one various small unit setups can be good on round one mm. i'm more interested in this round two decision though because he already had three bulwarks in the front line and he just added three more bulwarks like i would have much rather seen him put some damage on his board there yeah for 100%. from set for soda for soda yeah 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 100 percent. oh that's huge hyper for singe it must be earth valves auto battle jimbo you mean Underlords? 
Yeah, I don't know the name of that game. It's trash. <laughs> it's not Olivia, I'll tell you that. Oh, the 15 grits, nice. Gonna need something to go through it. He also made TFT with Ben. Ben yeah, and Martini I created TFT. Oh, no. I have heard that. And then it was so bad, they were like, let's make something good called Alluvium. <laughs> They've both got the angle on the True bird. Story. The five bulwark. Yeah, especially without any of the augments on. Like, remember, the bulwark buff doesn't give as strong of a bonus to your whole team, but it still does. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm. It's toxic, though. If he gets one kill, he's going to heal up. Yep. Now he's hyper. Oh. oh. The gauntlet won't hit the bird. There it okay. is. Let's Soda see. takes a run. I don't think. This is close. Yeah. I mean, even though Leo Main won the last one, I, I don't. I don't think this is necessarily favorite. No, don't size. give him the bulwark really imprint. Don't give him the bulwark mm. imprint. Ooh. So easy for him to get stun started. wave. He gave stun wave. I think stun wave is really Wait. good for the cost. Could he? Could someone yeah. have taken bulwark imprint and gone and put it on a phosphorus and given him seven bulwark and given him like a hundred fifty resistances? That would I've, be kind of. Crazy. I've done that before. It's really funny. It looks like he didn't want to though, because pulled... he doesn't have a room. Because yeah. he wants to play the Lulura and the Furyox. And then the Ranger. Yeah, he would only have he would only be able to go six bulwark if he wanted to play all those units. Nah, but you change up the strategy. It's still funny. I think there was some merit there into, into grabbing that. Even if it's just it's 20, it's only 20 mastery points. Even if it's not to hit seven bulwark threshold, you can just slap it on a Lulura. And it's like, here, Lulura, have an extra 100 resistances for 20 mastery points. Like, it's really efficient. Oh, yeah. I think you should have bit a, I think you should have bit a token on that one. Oh, that's hit. That angle's hitting the Fury Ox. You guys need to shorten the range on that thing. On the phosphorus. Do not nerf my phosphorus, bro. You know, <laughs> <laughs> here we see that Fury Ox with the pure attack Oof. damage. Them being clumped up really hurt them there. Yeah, we're seeing a bit of back and forth. First two rounds for Leo, second two for Soda. I think Soda is potentially going to ramp up here. I actually think uh, Leo Main should have a lot stronger round this time because he didn't have any augments buffing his hyper carries where Soda had the pure attack damage tearing through the tanks. I think um, it's still anyone's game, mm -hmm. but I think this round shouldn't be too bad for Leo. He's going crit amp. So it's going crit amp yep. chance. Yeah. But he's going to need it to cast. Remember his chance on crit amp here. Jagged end provides crit amp to the Squirox and its two nearest allies whenever he crits. And he gave it crit chance from the Photon Ripper. So the Squirox is going to start doing damage. Ooh, I, I think that charm actually benefited Leo Man, like bringing, bringing him away from the Phosphorus's uh, Omega. He actually brought Scorehox into a safer position, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I think it actually worked against him. Because look yeah, at it. He's stealing crit amp, though. The Scorehox is going to start hitting pretty hard. Uh, but I don't think it's as good. Time. I don't not think enough. it's as good as the pure damage. I don't, I'm not convinced that was the right way to go. Yeah, it's not what it used to be. I'll tell you that. Plus, you only actually crit every two attacks. You're not getting 100% crit. And so it takes a lot longer to scale up, if you think about it. Yeah, I think it, it should have had some attack speed on there. So he's trying to give him the Omni Vamp. Okay, okay. he's giving Omni Vamp. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Carries. The slowing of the attack speed, I think that's going to be impactful. I agree. That's going to be very impactful. Yo, I won't lie, guys. Uh, streaming this and commentating makes it way easier to learn the game. 
because you, oh, yes. you, you have to focus on what they're doing. You're realizing on the spot, it's like, yeah, that makes sense. That doesn't make sense. Oh, by sure. the way, Bombo Theo, I was joking about that. <laughs> ben did work on TFT, but he didn't make it. <laughs> He's not joking. It's all factual. It's 100% objective. You needed to save some mastery for movement. Okay, so we're going to see Phosphorus and Fiery Ox. Ooh, yep, lose their, their attack speed now. That's major. I think it's mm. over. I actually think this Phosphorus coming in late is beneficial. Oh, oh my god. Wow. What just happened? Was that a gauntlet? <laughs> I think that was a gauntlet, yeah. I looked away from wow. the screen for one second. Yeah, I, mean, I think that was a gauntlet. going to come in and wipe. Yep. Yeah. GG. Soda in the grand Soda finals. There we go. Crazy hype, hype. I want to see this. Putting the putting the flag in the ground right now. Oh, you need a movement. <laughs> okay, so yeah, watch the next watch the next gauntlet cast. Boom! Boom. Damn! It like yep. slotted the slotted it too, like in between a bunch of other alluvials. Crazy, crazy! All right, so we have S Judd in losers bracket against Storming in losers bracket right now. So this should be a good one. Um, it's be a good game. Is S Judd in the channel right now, Skyrox? No, yeah. Get storming in. Okay. So let me, <coughs> I'm I'm asking S shot again real quick. I made S shot stream a ton last last Inferno. So. Oh, did you? So yeah, I wanted to give him a little bit extra of a break. Okay, well he should be coming now. Awesome. All right. I think that is that him? I don't know. So I have no idea how this Vod Ninja thing works, I won't lie. I'm going to wait to see what's on their screen before I know it's them or not. Right, right, right. I can't right. see the screen. Yeah, we don't want to put that up on stream, you know, before we know who it is. You never <laughs> know what could pop up. Oh, my God. How crazy would right. that be? So, but this, like, is, this is going to be like a YouTube brother. strike. This is going to be a crazy one, by the way, guys. So, S. Judd obviously seed one in loser's bracket already up against Storming, who's seed five. Okay, so yeah, we've got this job. is now on. Just okay, awesome. That the person I added to the stream was actually Martin. Rip. Okay, they're starting the match. Let's go. S Judd against Storming. First seed against fifth seed. S Judd representing Xborg, Storming representing all of Brazil. <laughs> So S Judd claims he knows the counter to to pretty much every comp. So <laughs> let's see how this one plays out. Yeah, S Judd running back that uh, same Blaze Knight comp. Oh, storming! It looks like he's going to go for that fighter rogue to try and mm. burst them down before round four. I don't know how this works into the bulwark empath Blaze Knight, but I think it's pretty good. So we'll see. We'll see what cool. happens. And there's a rogue. There's a rogue imprint. I don't know if anyone's going to want to take that. He's putting one on there. Okay. Update on the Zeptile Zod match. Zeptile two to one. So Zeptile is actually going to be playing with uh, Potate now in the background. S. Judd confident enough to just place the Blaze Knight there, not too worried about seeing what uh, Storming has for him. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping S. Judd, uh, I'm hoping Potate and Zeptile, we might have a little bit of downtime on, on matches on stream, but I just don't want to make people wait. So I'm just going to start that match, Potate and Zeptile in the background, and hope that they just smash it out. Yeah, have them running, have them running. We'll go to the game after them if we need to. Yep, yep, yep. Close to the end. We'll I was hoping to get time. I was hoping to get out of the house in an hour or so. We might be able to pull it off. Maybe. <laughs> okay. We're opening up Blazer Note. Oh god. All right, let me go grab a beer. <laughs> he said, Oh god. That's so funny. <laughs> oh man. But it's not a Blazing Night Mirror, though. 
Yeah, it's he's got so the is, rogue counter. This is way more interesting. Yep. Okay, cool. So Zeptile and Potato are gonna be starting on the back end. Uh we have S Shot is storming right now. Perfect. Things are gonna slow down slightly, but that is how it works. Okay, he gets the fighters in for that buff. Next round is a pretty big pa uh, power spike for storming because he's got the fire, he's got the rogue buff, and then he also has the ram fire in there. So round four is really where Estra's going to be looking to try and claw it back and start taking some rounds again. Like yeah, he, hard to do anything on the first two rounds here. The the pace on storming side is just too fast. Yep. Is there any way that he can actually survive this? Uh, this third round, I don't think so. Round four. I mean, the impact links is pretty good. Possible. I don't know. He's got three air now. Might actually win this. Interesting this round, unless he drops ram fire. Oh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> you say it as he drops it. <laughs> Unless he drops ran by it. Well, he does have the air buff. It might be hard for. No, he's definitely going to get it off. Nah, it's like... still. Yeah. How much damage is he going to take out of this? A lot. Almost beat them without even using the ram fire Omega. That's kind of crazy. Is ram fire going to survive? Yep. That's a lot Oof. of damage, yeah. That is a lot of damage, yeah. <laughs> Not I wonder good. what he's going to do. Is I think that, this next round is pretty strong for Storm. Is that well, rock, paper, so. scissors again? I would put Vanguard, put some shit in the back, dude. <laughs> Let's go <laughs> Just ahead, randomly throw something in the Mary. back. <laughs> put that Hail Mary out there. I don't even care, bro. <laughs> Just put the Blaze Knight in the back. Just throw it out. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> Screw your rogue. He already has a rogue augment, so he could put two of them over there. Just rogue augment your entire team. Just send it to the What's other side. What's he gonna do, man? So he's starting to put the earth to, to yeah. counter the fire stuff. Yep. So he has the earth in there to get hyper, and then he has the air to try and slow down the energy gain. But again, <laughs> with the nerf, it's not as big of a deal. Mm, he went for the energy reduction. Yeah, that's the play. Because Ramfire grabs all the energy augments anyway, so attack speed's not really helping you prevent the cast. Yep, as you predicted. There we go. Double energy augments on Ramfire. I've seen this one quite a few times now. Also, Ramfire's in like the perfect up. spot. That's so rough. Oh, that shield from the staff was huge oh. timing. Wow. Yeah, he might be able to heal up. We'll oh see. Oh my god, they're so low. Yep, I think he. You got hyper. The, te the Terra links. Yep, very smart play by us, Judd. What do you mean smart I mean, play? So close though. Yeah, it's close, but this <laughs> next round should be even better for us, Judd. You think you think this is the turning point? You think Stormy needed to win around four? Yeah, I think he has to win around four, or it's very hard for him. He has to win this round, or I don't think he can win. Yeah, so he has the earth in there to get hyper, and then he has the air to try and slow down the energy gain. But again, with the nerf, it's not as big of a deal. Mm, he went for the energy reduction. So yeah, the that's the play. Because Ramfire grabs all the energy augments. So the the issue here is that Ramfire's Omega just doesn't do just enough damage, as we saw. And so how do you buff up that Omega power just before the cast? I have no idea. You you So how Storming can win here, this is his last chance, but how he could win is if the Ranger's Omega and the Ramfire's Omega hit around the same time or close enough at the same time so that the um, Estra's team can't heal back up before the next Omega or whatever, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah, lower the... the sure, it looks like we're going to be close. And it, yeah, let's see. 
see. Oh, it didn't look like it even did. Oh, anything. okay, it did. Oh, wow. Yeah, he definitely, he so definitely buffed up the Ramfire as Omega. I don't know how. <clears throat> well, the uh, Gauntlet uh, Ramfire Omega, I think the Gauntlet damage didn't come in somehow. It may have been like a visual bug. So I don't think it did that much damage as it looked. Mm. So storming 1 0 right now. I wonder what they're going to do with the. Uh, in terms of. Oh, yeah, there's mind games. There's in mind, terms of yeah. mind games. Yeah. Teams, what's, are they what's, the, what's the pick for the next man on both it's sides, the, right? Goes yeah. up, they get that at the same exact time. It's just so strong. I'm not going to show SJ's screen at all. Okay, Storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. it's good. It's good. All right, one We're up again. All right, we're in game. We're I have no idea what SJ's using. Uh, SJ's using the exact same team. But I think Storming's made a change. Yeah, they went, yeah they went Blazing Eye. He played Impact. He was expecting. <laughs> that was, <laughs> he was smart. The change. Yeah, he, that's smart. But SJ, uh, maybe he was expecting that himself. <laughs> These are the mind games now, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This, and I think what's going to be cool is as the, the these tournaments go on week after week, and and players start to understand the characteristics of each other. I think the mind games are going to get even deeper than what they are right now, knowing that S shots the type of guy to not change up or bid three. Like these are the the mind games that I think we're going to develop over time, which I think is going to be really really sick. I think the winner from this game uh, guarantees a prize too. Yes. They get in top three. Uh no. It's the next one. Oh, you might be right. This is before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is losers quarterfinals. I think it's it's top three that gets prizes, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's just losers finals. It's just when it's grand finals and losers finals. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Damn, Storming taking the full time, as much time as he possibly could there. <laughs> and they open up exactly the same. Um, For some reason, Estra's had to do a little walk around the world. Yeah, I don't the, know the what placement. that was about. <laughs> the on that. It wasn't yeah, quite the same. Was rip, Targeting's no, a little bit like, different. Well, I think that might just cost Estra round one. Estra round one, one, yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, yeah. That's unf- well, or maybe it not. not actually, Does it not- though, or was it actually, it actually the biggest, the big biggest brain, brain Blazonite we've ever seen? Don't big tell. Brain. He's gonna claim that he did that on purpose. Don't let him. <laughs> chat, chat, do not listen to this man. He did not do that intentionally. <laughs> do not listen to this motherfucker. That was high Blazonite IQ right there. Almost True. as high as Jimbo's. <laughs> If that was like intentional, that was genius. There's no chance. I highly doubt it. Yeah, there's him. no way. If that was, that's just yeah, <clears> insane. <throat> but there's no chance. All right, well, so he has played this matchup a lot against uh, Smartass, mm-hmm. so it's possible. So he's gone with the three wildfire immediately. I wonder if Storming is going to do the the exact same thing. I'll watch this. Storming doesn't have wildfire empath, does he? I don't think so. I think no, he, he does. does. He does. Oh, he does. Okay. okay. Wow. So this is a straight Man, up game match. Very excited for for when we do have like a spectator mode and we can go in and click and check things by ourselves rather than relying completely on. So yeah, yeah. fascinating. He's but separating the tornado. Thing. We see the first big difference here. Storming puts out an air Graco. SJ puts out a nature Graco. Uh, I think he tried so, moving the ranger to bait the the tornado, but it's not far enough. It's fine though. The ranger should give the uh, buff to uh, his blaze knight here. Well, blaze knight went hyper though. Normally, yep. blaze knight going yep. hyper though because of the nature done. Graco. For some reason Ooh, it's it still enough? not. Oof. Oh it yes, just Close. just enough. Hyper making the difference there. What's a fight, I think fighter see, hyper? Hmm. I think we're gonna see storming. I mean, yeah, you can see they're both gonna do that. I think. I think they're gonna move, move their ranges out a little bit more to to draw out that that stun.
what I see SJ doing, which is really, really good, is the fact that he is like putting putting uh, armor, taking it back off. He's really optimizing every round, which is, I think, a, a lot of new players just aren't doing that. It's hard, okay? <laughs> yeah, bro, I didn't say your name. Jesus. <laughs> he really took that one to heart. <laughs> High level gameplay here. Storming and Estra both great players. Storming, I think, top ten, top five on the leaderboard, unless that's changed. Estra, of course, second in Luvium Inferno. All right, so he's gone three water against the three nature. Yeah. Okay, it looks like you they got get, through Estra. So, you're line. not getting those shields yeah, from the start, and you can really a lot see that faster here. Yeah, yeah. melting and storming blaze and I hyper already yeah. against all this nature. Yeah. We'll see how he pulls this back. You would have to think that he knew that was going to happen, so he has to have some kind of late game plan. You would think. Yeah, because yeah, right now if, the hyper advantage is completely going storming's way. You ask me if you have a patch and the same meta team is still the same meta team. You guys didn't patch hard enough. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Blaze and I. Jesus. <laughs> I'm kidding. We I'm already kidding. saw Blaze might get shit on. So, to be fair. But I think there's <laughs> something that something that they are doing here. I think it's like what Storming is doing well is, or I, I would say what Eshad isn't doing well is considering in the mirror matchup that. That nature is going to get beat by, by the wildfire. Like I think, even though it's the same matter, that there is still strategy that goes into it. There is still decision making for sure. But yo, if Estra does lose this, he is out of the tournament, and that's seed one, dropping out. Uh, outside of top three. Yeah, I think if Estrad loses here, that's going to be a big disappointment in his eyes, and he'll see that as a failure for sure. A hundred percent. Even though he's top eight here, that's it's, it's uh, still yeah, yep. Yeah. It's in the money, or it's a failure for Estrad. It's the 100%. kind of player he is. And I, I can respect that. I get that. Completely. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So he's added some water in there. Let's see what he does here. Four Empath, three Bulwark, two Templar. Storming, I think, is going to do the exact same thing. Yep, same thing. Just going to go into uh, air, right? I started with the air, Graco. So we're going to see air plus water versus nature plus water. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, I think we from the early rounds we really saw the the heavy nature on Astrid's side feeding hyper to the uh, enemy wildfire units, mm. causing a huge imbalance. Now it's, it's nature versus air here. You, is that causing I think it is still much of a difference? Up, you you still see the the blaze knight reaching hyper pretty quickly, mm -hmm. and I think that's probably going to be one of the the big factors of, of having something, a unit like Blaze Knight getting hyper. <coughs> They're both on max board, so... It does look like Estra's getting through their front line here. Yep, I yep. think this one's Estra's. He's broken through. It looks yeah, like how it, exciting. But, but you never know with these overtimes. <laughs> uh, his healing looks pretty strong, so we'll see. Yeah, that entire fight, Eshad's healing was just better. Yeah. I think what there's no is it about this late game in Eshad's comp that is making him outplay everybody else? He's got it's, bigger heals. It's, it's the nature, right? It has to be the nature, the extra healing. Yeah. He's got bigger heals and he's got all the bigger tippos too. Now, if you're playing against Eshad and you're using that augment that he just used, do you reduce Eshad's healing or do you reduce his energy? Because he chose to reduce Storming's energy. Yeah, he's choosing the energy route, saying, I, I want you to cast less. Healing that would is... be the, the go-to, would it not? 
Possibly. It's a, it's a tough question to answer because because without energy they can't cast without it energy they can't cast and if casting a lot is where a lot of the healing comes from so it all kind of but you were kind of ends up doing are, similar yeah. things yeah interesting yeah i think i'm not sure what anybody really think? knows exactly martini in this position is. what would you have chosen well against so against the air um units of storming uh those units don't heal as much as say the nature ones so i think mm -hmm. um energy reduction is probably the right choice against air just because they don't they don't have as much healing right so i think that's the right choice against the units that do have more healing i've been leaning for a long time towards energy reduction because everything chains off of energy but i've also been experimenting recently with anti-heal and it's it's tough to say which one is actually better He's did cracking guys, through Astro's front line. Yeah, He's did, you, win. did you notice that he put the... <clears throat> I'm almost certain that it's a it's a um, pure damage plus attack speed on the Blaze Knight. He knows it's already speed. getting... He already knows it's getting hyper, and he's just trying to get, get more damage. Oh, this is there. so close. I'm really leaning into that on damage on the Blaze Knight, and Astro's going for more utility augments instead of raw damage. So now we start seeing him balance on... Uh, their strategies. Not, I think that's bad for storming, right? Because that front line for Estrid is slightly weak, but his back back line isn't going to die from the pure damage. I don't think. Yeah, it's, it's just healing. I mean, look at it. There's well, that yeah, one it's, unit to go that, down. It's, it's just broken through. Yeah, now it's broken through. I think it's done. Big is overtime. It? Oh, oh, oh my god! It's over. Yep. Like it comes out of nowhere when the overtime ticks that long. That final tick just removes like forty percent of their HP. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, pure yeah. attack damage was definitely the wrong move because you get through the bulwarks in the front, but what are you doing against the impasse in the back that are healing? You need to be able to take that away from them. It's such a it's, tough call. It's such a crazy uh, mirror matchup. Yeah, there's the so many 5v2. Yep. The mind yeah. games are back. I have a theory that neither one of them are going to play the empath team this next game. <laughs> I think so too. We're going to game three, and now no, it's. Uh... I reckon. I reckon S. Judd sticks with it. Yes. I reckon S. Judd it's sticks with nothing. it. If he sticks with it and Storming plays that rogue <laughs> deck, he's out of the tournament. Yeah. So I don't know. I I think there's a possibility Storming plays rogue deck, S. Judd plays Arc Knight, and beats him. It's one one. So I think, yeah, I don't think they're both going to play the empath thing. I think that's... I definitely think one of them goes empath. I just don't know which one. <laughs> that's the game right now, right? Yeah, I, I, I predict Storming plays Rogue deck. Uh, Estrad plays some kind of Arcanite build. I'm sticking to it. No, I think Storming well, goes Arcanite and Estrad sticks with the empath. Any bets? Okay, I'll say Astro goes uh, Tsunami Mystic and Storming goes Shock Enchanter. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Don't be leaking tech, bro. Come on. <laughs> Was that a private conversation we had about those comps? Yeah, bro. I didn't realize you weren't sharing them yet. No, dude. <laughs> That's what I got to rank one with. Rank one. Yep, yep, yep. Makes sense. All right. I, it seems like they're taking a little bit of time. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm so it's stoked to see which out. teams they pick. I'm so stoked to see it. Cool. Okay, right, they're, they're in the right. game. Game is starting. What do we got? Oh! Storming plays the rogue deck. And uh, Estrad has his empaths. <laughs> He's pissed. Look at He's... his cursor. <laughs> <laughs> He's... He's I told I told you he had to go Arcanite here. Unlucky. Maybe he can pull this through. We'll see. <laughs> He's so bad. <laughs> you see him shake, shaking his cursor. Uh, that sucks though. Sucks to be stuck in that rock, paper, scissors. But I think Arcanite was because Arcanite can beat Empath. So Arcanite was the safest bet here for Esjud, um, but his Empath team cannot beat the Rogue team. So I think if he really wanted to min-max that and think about all the possibilities, Arcanite was definitely the safest. Yeah, if he even has Arcanite, Arcanite comps, does he have one even prepared? Because I'm it... yes, he. I'm. I know for a fact that he think, probably has one. I think the reason yeah, why he has more than one team comp. Do you think Esjud only has one thing? 
I think the reason why is yeah, Jack goes... Yeah, no, I kind of agree with your read, Jimbo. Like, he's been playing so much Empath. He's got to assume that Storming is going to go for the rogues and, you know, go for the counter gamble. Yeah. I think Eschard's plan there was that um, he knows he can win the mirror and therefore he can win the mirror and he can win the empath uh, against against Arcanite. And so he's yeah. got two out of three that he knows he can win. And so he's going to hope his opponent doesn't pick the one out of three. He wanted to play the odds, you know what I mean? I, I see what you're saying, <laughs> but the fact that Eschard's only showed this deck or this team... And Storming is looking at it like, oh, I know Estra doesn't want to show his other teams. He wants to play this mind game and get away with playing mm. this Empath deck again and then going further into the tournament with some secret kind of build. Some secret comp. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Estra right. lost here, I think, because a little bit of greediness. Did he always have those Grokos? <laughs> yes. yes. I would have put an Earth Grokko here over to the left, but that's just me. He's definitely going to put something to the left eventually, right? Yeah, but if he puts Earthcrack over to the left, he can beat that Ram fight or Ram field, I think. Is there any chance that he can beat this? I don't think so. Eh, maybe like a very, very small chance if things go well, but uh, it feels very unfavored for Astro. Yeah, very unfavored. Yo, I can't believe, man. Astro went the same team three times. I think he tried to to mind game it too much. <laughs> mm. Match yeah. one, match two, match yeah, three, exact same team. But if I was storming, I would have done the same thing. I think, uh, I don't know. There's just so much going for S Judd. If he can win this next round and keep his other team secret, he gains mm. so much from that. But it's such a greedy play. Such a high risk, high reward play. Yeah, I don't know if secrets really exist. I mean, we know that there's three archetypes right now, and that's probably what S Judd has. Nah, yeah, but definitely... we don't know what arc or what uh, team exactly Estrid has other than this. And showing that gives a lot of information to the other players in diff other series because he can open again with this empath until he loses and then switch it over. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, round three, ramp fire. Yeah, I think this is a wrap. I think they're just going through the motions right now. I mean, round three here is definitely going to to storming. So Astra has one one last yeah. chance. I mean, he basically needs to win every round after this if yeah. he wants to survive, uh, which is going to be extremely difficult. I'm not going to say how he can win because he can take four. I'm pretty confident using the same exact uh, placement, and then five he can win by something kind of cheesy. But I'm not sure he can. I'm not convinced Astra is even trying to win. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I think he's just he's like, conceded almost. damn it. No, I don't. I don't think he gives up here. So Eshjad said in chat that Leo Main played Arcanite in game three in the last round, and he knows they are playing the same teams. Um, so he was expecting him to do the same thing as Leo Main, maybe, but. He was wrong. Yeah, that that's what I'm thinking that he was thinking, but I still think Estrid switching up his team was the You've best. You're gonna bait out Ramfire. I don't care how you do it, just do it. Um, did he just get a mastery point bug? He's got way too many points here. Uh oh. Ooh. That's not ideal. Do, does he? I don't know. No, maybe this is fine. Oh yeah, maybe I'm, yeah, hard to say. Oh no, no, he I think took it's off fine. A, I think did he have a ranger suit on or something and he took it yeah, off? Because yeah. he had like a hundred. Yeah, yeah, he did, he did, he did, he did. Okay, he, he got a refund on a suit. That's what happened. I was wondering how he had so many points, but no, he does that often. Yeah, that's most what of, I was saying. Most of my decks he's, don't he's even have any suits. The, he's probably one of the best at that. So yeah, he's gone for a slightly different <coughs> specific positioning on his units. Um, the Grokko's going to go down. The first game against these rogues. Yeah. See if it matters. I mean, it's going to ult. The ramp eyes is going to melt oh, everything. Oh, no. <laughs> you got to carry they them when you lose. Oh, wait, the ramp the follow up oh, from no. the ramp. Yeah. That hurt. The follow up from the ramp was enough. I Looks mean, like he's going to get hyper, so he could win this. Oh, I think he wins. is casting again, though. No, he wins. 
Does he? Uh, yeah, the Templar's too uh, good. Yes. Do you know how buffed up his resistances are now? Wow. Okay. So what's he going <laughs> to do? Now, so now how, Est- on. how Estra wins on. is he moves everything over. That way they can't stagger the uh, the Gauntlet Omega with the Ramfire Omega. So yeah, he needs gonna... to move everything over, and then he can win this, and then it's another mind game on the it's next round. It's so hard. Yeah, you've got to put something in the back left to kill the Gauntlet. Really, it's it's well, pretty flimsy. It wouldn't be that hard to do. Well, if you just put everything over to the front left and leave one or two things so that the Ramfire Omega goes on bottom right, you have the rest top left, you can kill the uh, Ranger right away. I think that's the only way you win this round. Thoughts? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how he's going to do this. Looks like he's not going to go for that. No. Bubba sent less energy. All right. He's, going all in. he's just augmenting up, yeah. I mean, this is kind of what he did last time, but his units are just yeah. arranged a little bit differently. I wonder if it matters or if he's just going to get blown up like he did See if the gauntlet time. upgrades. He's got the Lelora. I don't think the gauntlet upgraded. You're wrong, though. <laughs> that Lelora charm might be pretty dangerous, to be honest. He's got in, he's just snuck in the back. Oh, it's right in the middle there, yeah. Yeah. Gauntlet coming in. Oh? No, it's a little bit. No, gauntlet. it's hit Hyper Atipa, though. Does he that needs matter? to heal up before this Omega. Um, Uh-oh. This looks like oh. a lot of damage. I oh, know he's got him. Uh, oh, got him. He, oh, my God. I don't know if he does. There's oh, a lot of nah. damage still coming in. This Ranger's going to cast again right now. I think, I think the Ranger kills him here. Yo, what Wait. is happening? He doesn't have the update upgraded ranger gauntlet. I guess. Oh, but as soon as yeah. he does, it's so, oh, so screwed. As soon as he does, it's a small gun still. It's a small gun. Yeah, yeah. small gun still. Now, oh, now, well, Estrid now. Over, yeah, he needs to move. Yeah, he needs to move. <laughs> now the big guns probably come in, right? He needs to move. He has to do something. What's the play here, Jimbo? Well, that's way too expensive. N- not now. He has a hundred eighty points. Yeah, yeah, it makes complete sense now. But he's still going all in. Like, I don't, yeah. Is yeah. he seeing something that we're not? You know what you do? You, you you add, add, I think he's got people the underestimate move, moving your unit. Yeah, positioning is crazy. I agree with you. He's got yeah, the resistance item. He needs to add the resistance item to, like, crunk or something. Or pure damage to Blazon Eye. His team isn't just killing them fast he's enough. He's thinking even though so much squishy. about this, too. Yeah. Like what? What is the play? This is so tight. You have to stop the big gauntlet, or you lose. Though, oh, oh it's too much. I mean, it's crazy that he's even gotten to round six against this card. Yeah, it's this exactly. This is this in itself is is nuts. He invented this matchup. Though. Speed. He was the one who made that rogue team for last in Inferno. Okay, let's see what happens. Yep, big gun. I think it's big gun now. It is big gun. And he stops. He brought out the, the big, big guns, as they say. Oh yeah, that's yeah. big gun. That's big gun. That's what they call me. <laughs> you know. In a stun, drop your attack speed of big gun. The lure is out. Yeah, Oof. Nah. Oh, that's Wait, a huge shield. Huge shield though. That's the gauntlet's coming. Shield. The gauntlet's gonna wipe it. Yeah, that's Boom. that's game. Oh, oh big hit. <laughs> that's Oof. game. That's it. Uh, rough, rough, rough. So S Judd is out. Crazy. Uh, Scariox is potato in the stream right now. No, he isn't. Grab him in. What the hell? He said he was. No, no. They. I tell them to just jump in when I'm ready. No, tell them to come. Oh, okay. Oh, that gauntlet. So to say if Gauntlet's good or bad because it's so easy to eliminate the Ranger early, but at the same time, if you don't, that Gauntlet just does so much. Yeah, with the road <laughs> on the Gauntlet too, though, you can kind of put it in a lot of different places, especially into this Empath. You know, you're so far away from them, they can't do anything to you. All right, crazy. So that's S Jod out in top eight so storming moving in so we have two of the brazilians still in actually yo martini just eating 
Uh, yeah, we have two of the Brazilians. So Storming and then Leo Main. So Storming is now in losers finals, uh, and Leo Main in losers grands on uh, semis and, and and finals. So we have Zeptile uh, showing the screen now. I'm going to tell them that they are good to go. Uh, are we on stream? I've got, Scarlet, I've got Zeps. I've got Zeps. We're all good. Yep. Good to start. Awesome. Awesome. And after this, we're going to be streaming each of these matches. Uh, they're going to lead into to the next one. And we're good to go from here. We didn't have much downtime this 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 time, which I'm, I'm pretty happy with. Yeah, that made it feel and flow a lot better. Probably took a lot less time as well. So yeah yeah very we're well currently done, about, everybody but currently at about four hours so I'm, I'm expecting this to be done in about five five and a half and tops i think it was a well well run ship yep right so zeptile we haven't seen zeptile on stream we don't know what team he's playing am i am i right no I we so. saw him play earlier he was running some kind of water invoker oh, oh yeah that's yeah, right. yeah that's right that's he's right starting okay, cool yeah, interesting. Let's see how they play. So he's got he's considering tsunami. Yeah, he does have tsunami as well. So he has water invoker tsunami, but it's invoker ranger invoker uh Sinalf. Mm. So the tsunami would be not bad for him here. Yeah, I'm excited to see. I mean the Omnisource Surge is also a good one. So two tsunami, two two Omnisource. Yeah, this is this should be an interesting match. Very interesting match. And so Zeptal, if he actually wins this match, he's going up against another hype player in Mindia. Uh, so we can either have a Patat Mindia uh, hype battle, or a Zeptal just running through, taking out the the hype crew. Did he get that tsunami augment? Uh, I was looking at the bracket. I did not. He see did that. that is actually really good for his Sin Elf. You put that on your Sin Elf. You got three three tsunami. Ranger, mm. the the flood, and now oh. you have it on Sinalf. Uh, fifty five percent of energy cost gained after you use your Omega. So it's just pumping it's up the Omega up immediately because not only does he have triple tsunami in the tsunami on but the Sinalf as well, he has water, water he has, and steam. He doesn't have steam. That's oh, does he not have steam? Oh, sorry, 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 wrong pass. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's so, so tsunami water, he's gonna have it up pretty much the entire game. Crazy, <laughs> bro's got a big ass brain for that one. And again, thank you, Zeptile, for coming out with a unique deck. We love to yeah, see it. Yeah, absolutely, man. We yo, we got to take notes <laughs> of this and uh, and give credit where credit's due. Even on social media, like for the guys that did come up with creative teams like this, um, they might not all be the best, but they're definitely fun to watch. Yep, I agree one hundred percent. I actually think this this team comp's really good. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think uh, people are undervaluing water, and then Zeptile putting the tsunami on top of that is just really good. And we're this is going to be like a soon. This deck is going to be on steroids right now because he got lucky with the tsunami augment. Yeah. Even without it, I think it's pretty strong. He's placed a seventy uh, seventy weapon immediately on on round two, actually, which is fascinating. I think it's again he's going to play the whole. Let's get the information. Like, what is that? That's crazy. No, yeah. He wants the ranger to be the carry because he has five water, which is going to give him energy regen really fast. And then the 70 ranger gauntlet is so strong. So he's so going to be able nuts. to take him out so fast. Oh, yeah. It's a really cool team. Does he even need to do anything right now? <laughs> I mean, with this tsunami chip. Is this even a close call, or is this just over? No, this, this is, is yeah, this is over. They, oh, they gave it message. to him. Oh my god! Yes, yeah. you give that to Sinalf, it's GG. A... They're definitely going. And not only that, he's getting triple tsunami invoker, like yeah. the invoker with the Sinalf. It's going to be so strong. The best thing Patak can do right here is lose before he can get all of those things activated. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say it. I want to say sit off like triple cost. I think we're only going to get to see one round of that. Yes. <laughs> it's not It's not about the sit off. It's about the ranger just getting even stronger. Like, it doesn't matter who you put the tsunami on. It's about the ranger just infinite casting. Like, mm. it will literally just cast. And then by the time its animation is done, it'll cast again. And it'll just keep blasting. Look how fast it is right now. 
Imagine when he has the triple tsunami. Yeah. He's going to have tsunami on. Okay, Ranger. another one. For anyone who's yeah, not aware, guess, tsunami yeah. actually refunds like almost 50% of your omega, your energy cost when you omega. Insane. So that's what two yeah, tsunami if He goes into four tsunami. He doesn't have enough for four. He doesn't have Exodon. <laughs> Oh, so he would only go to three. Okay, so I think it's fifty-five for three then. What's lethargic okay, doing I, again? I have played with a with a ranger water gauntlet with four tsunami, and it you get seventy-five percent of your energy back. That's nuts. And it just chain casts. So it's just yeah, every yeah, every second shot would be a an omega. Yeah, this is a strong comp. I I've played something similar to this and ranked, and it was very good today. So. I played the four invoker though. I didn't use tsunami. I think this is probably better than my version. What is what is lethargic? What is lethargic to water? Mm, lethargic means you can't gain energy. So since Flish applies lethargic, if a Flish casts through an entire empath team, would it prevent that entire empath team from gaining energy? Just yes. while they're lethargic. It's a yeah. like, pretty short duration, so yeah. But for the duration of the entire beam, no? Yeah, yeah, while the lethargic is on them, yeah. Interesting. Yo, what is he doing with the camera? <laughs> Man needs help. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised he played so many baby water units just to hit seven water, and, and then just to sell them again later. I feel like he could have just... Um, just gone straight That's, into the center. Well, it's because of that specific round he was able to get seven water with, but he wasn't able to put Sinalf in yet. It was the so water. He can sell it, and now he still has seven water again. Yeah, the empath links he added as well actually gives energy regen while it's casting to its yeah. allies. And he's got the little Atipo there as well, so feeding more energy to the two invokers. Oh yeah, yeah. Crazy. this is going to be hilarious. He's already got the two tsunami. Yeah, this is just wild. This is gonna be really funny to watch. But they are they are gonna get the stuns. Oh, are they? No, they're not. No, yep, stuns are going on flood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is just nuts. They're not being doing nothing. What the hell? Bro, this is yo, this is nuts. Uh -huh. Look how quickly he's dunk, dunk, dunk. Ooh. This is stupid. What's up with the blind on Sinelf? Sinelf isn't doing damage because the blind from Krunk, but Krunk's so far away it shouldn't be doing anything, right? That's not how the Krunk uh, blind works. Anything in the smoke cloud, it doesn't have to be the Krunk itself. Anything that's in the smoke cloud that gets hit applies a blind. Yeah. But it, the Sinelf isn't in the no, smoke no, cloud. No, no, if you hit something that's in the smoke cloud, you get blind. Okay, okay. It doesn't it's matter how far yeah. away you are. Which okay. I, okay. I still just disagree with, but that's just me. Like, you can make them miss, but don't give them blind. <laughs> you should put the extra tsunami. Yeah. Bro. You should put the tsunami on the links here. Interesting. I didn't think this about the, that. This is the correct play. Because it will give them, it's going to give oh, them more yeah, energy. That's a good point. Yeah, the links chain casting gives everybody else energy anyway. So yeah. you don't actually need to put it on your carry. And great so point. At, he made the right call. Oh, right? this is so scary. This is definitely Zeptal, Zeptal is a good player. Like, yeah. I think people need to understand that. I'm higher elo than him, but I agree. <laughs> yeah, with this um, tsunami links feeding energy to the invokers, <coughs> uh, pretty pretty sure this is over here. It's like like this team that Zeptile is playing. This is the sort of team I want to see that I'm looking forward for the future of Alluvian PvP when the meta starts to get fixed up a little bit and there's a lot more nerfs and buffs across the board, and then more people are able to play things like this that work really really well. But you won't see them often because they're kind of hard to play. You need a you need a customized Gosh, strategy. Look at, look at this links. Yeah. Look at no the chain up. casting though. This links is non-stop casting. It does not stop, and it's just feeding energy to the this ranger who's already not, casted like seven amazing. times this fight. I love this. If Yo, you clip you this one up, clip this and share this. Yeah, if you, you clip you this one up, Jimbo. This. Do like a like a counter <laughs> for the um, casts. Hello, this YouTube Shorts and TikTok of the future. This is hilarious. All right, so, so that's one. I love it. Let's watch it back. To... I actually missed the legendary bidding. Um, how did he get the tsunami chip? 
They how just, it was just round one. He bid two on it. I don't think I don't think it's happened or anything. How did Katat let him get that though? That's just GG, right? Like, I don't yeah. Know. It's yeah. Just wasn't thinking, not used to playing against teams like this. Yeah, I think that's exactly yeah, right. Yeah, maybe he just didn't recognize the situation. Yeah, one hundred percent that's what happened. Man, great, great play from uh Zeptile. It's not like Katat could have done anything with the tsunami. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing he could have done was get that away, but I mean, yeah, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see um, if Patat runs it back and is like, "You only won because of that tsunami bonus," which I don't think is the case. I think yeah. this is, I think this is good into empath, which is nice to see. Um, right. But we'll see if he does the salty run back or if he switches it up. I definitely think tsunami the, helped. His front line didn't last particularly the, long, for sure. The pressure's got to Patat a little bit, so he's just gone for a toilet break. So. Should be back very soon. <laughs> More snacks for me. So More do we snacks. think Spot runs it back again, or should he be thinking of using a different deck here? Uh I mean, do we know what teams he has? Like, is there anything we, that can counter it? I would say the rogue, the rogue deck probably counters this pretty hard. Mm. As long as you don't put the Ramfire in front of the Sun Elf, that would be pretty much GG instantly. I don't know. Yeah, but I, I, I think that the rogue deck probably beats this pretty often. You also have to think about the fire units in that deck giving the water hypers now they're attacking even faster. It's hard to say. It's hard to say because we haven't really seen it yet. If I were to guess, I would say that the strongest thing into this probably is that rogue deck. Arcanite's probably it depends on what the base affinity for your Scoriox and Phosphorus is because you don't want to give hyper to those water alluvials that way either. Well you just need you just need any sort of air in your composition and then any sort of rogues in your composition. Well the team I've been yeah. using for a very it's long standard, time yeah. is like a rogue phosphorus team, which I've had a lot of fun with. Um, and I might bring it back soon, but besides that, yeah. Yeah, we should we should run a um, an influencer only tournament, like a very small one. Yeah, but I agree. like a second one. But I, yeah, yeah, I like a, yeah, eight people or sixteen people or something like that should be fun. Yeah, so I could host them. Uh, before we even started up here. Uh, Martini and I, we were talking about the Invoker deck, especially since Viper were play was playing it on stream so often. New patch, people were going to copy him. We haven't seen anybody copy him. I thought we were going to see a lot more people trying to get that that free team in. Mm. I'm I'm a little curious on why we're not seeing more Invokers, as as we just saw with Zeptile. It's right. pretty pretty damn strong. They're in. They're in. By the way, guys. So it looks like Patat's playing the exact same team. And is Zeptile? Because Zeptile also is playing the same team. So SJ and, and he's got Tsunami oh again. Oh my god. No chance. So SJ in chat was discussing um that we shouldn't be talking about counter decks on stream since the delay is quite short. Um, which I definitely think is fair. Just like let the best yeah. of three play out and then maybe talk about it and stuff like that. Uh, so we'll I keep mean, that in mind. It it is what okay. it is, man. It is what it is. Now, if I was mm -hmm. Zeptile here, I would have seeing that I got the tsunami last game and how good it was. <laughs> I would have just got two free augments out of that. And now Patat yeah. only has the tsunami augment that isn't even worth anything. Yeah. Um, but I mean what else was he he was he wasn't gonna just give it to he wasn't gonna give yeah, it it's to, too risk, to too Zeptile, risky. right? He saw what it did last round. But I don't think it's yeah. I mean I'm curious, like we're riding Patat off immediately, but we'll see how it goes. I don't know. I reckon he'll. I reckon he'll do well. But I like. I like the idea of someone with a team that no one actually recognizes just performing well in the tournament, yeah, showing that like you bring something someone hasn't really seen before, and they're not going to know how to play against. At least not for one round, and and the best of three comes into it. You know. I mean, I would love to see. Um, this is just again. I know we're not meant to be biased or anything, but I would love to see Zeptile go through and go against Mindia. So having a uh, a team like this against the Umber team, like that might be cool to watch, right? Like two unique oh, yeah. teams battling it out. 
Like that actually, that's exciting stuff. That is a very interesting matchup. The Umber into the oh, he's got impact Sinop dead, and Oh god. Mm. Chuck Flish on Jolly. Ooh. I don't know how I feel about that. This is such a strong round, too. Okay, let's see how Patat responds. Interesting stuff, man. The the three water bulwark thing is just such a good start. <laughs> the flesh, the flesh is funny. Oh, big gauntlet. Yeah, that gauntlet's strong, bro. This round two is great. Yeah. That flesh is actually really good. It doesn't do a crazy amount of damage, but that little bit of lethargic on Blaze Knight just slows it down that little bit. And I think it's actually quite impactful over time. It gives the fifth yeah. uh, water for that big, big regen on the Ranger to make the Ranger mm. cast a lot. Yeah, lethargic's nice, but who gives a fuck when you're doing that much damage? He's ex that's like an atomic bomb going off. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, even even though the gauntlet's yeah. strong, I feel like people's biggest problem with it really is that it makes all the other ranger weapons look really crap. Especially the I sword. I mean, there are ways there are ways to counter it, right? Like that's the thing. It's if you're playing an empath build where everything's clumped together, yeah, you're screwed. But if you're splitting up your team, you're drawing out the attack, like it is counterable. It's not there's nothing too crazy. It's getting so much more play than the other augments, except for the empath weapon. Or sorry, it's getting much more play than the other weapons. I think it could stand to be nerfed a little bit, but I don't know. There's so many different situations where this or that weapon is the min-max best choice. It just depends. Yeah, see, like, he's just clumping them all together, and it's like, what would... Do we expect is going to happen? Well, he doesn't have tsunami this time, so mm. he might be expecting something like that. And then he has the crunk there. Oof. But I mean, Not you can. It's still just gunning everything down, like you're saying. Is it though? No. Nah, yeah. <sighs> He's still removed that crunk. crunk here. Okay, it crunks out. Is that going to take anything out? No. <laughs> not the big, big gauntlet, I don't think. Yet. It's not the 70, right? Yeah, it's not the 70. I think it is the 70. Yeah, I think it is, too. Is it? Yep. It wouldn't have done that much damage if it wasn't. Oof. You go three on Warp Wave and one on the Scion in Pritch, surely. Because what's Sinelf? Is Sinelf Scion or oh no, Sinelf's Invoker? Yeah, but you can't get a Scion bonus here. Here's the Flinch. He doesn't have anything else? I mean, he has his ranger, but I think he wants to bond his ranger to get Tsunami this next mm. round. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't have the units for that kind of a technique to be worth, I think. Has that change been implemented yet to make the um, the synergy chips uh, based on the player's teams yet? It's not in yet. No. We might do something like that in the future. I think Ben mentioned you were going to do it, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, uh, we might do something like that in the future. It's just, it's not in right now. You said might, and I just thought Ben said that it was going to come. Yeah, ben says a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> You're really like poking at that one. Yeah. <laughs> I got you really good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I get the hint. <laughs> uh, I'm dying. <laughs> okay. I won't make the Dude, end of the stream. At least it's not a, uh, at least it's not a twelve hour stream like it was last week. Yeah, oh, it feels God. it feels like a twelve hour stream. Every no one, man, this is way better. No, no, when this is, yeah, this is when your better. brains are screwed up as mine, every one minute feels like three minutes. Right, yeah, but there's right, nothing right. you can do about that. You just don't. Ooh, like it. that's a nice play. <clears throat> 
Baiting out the goal line position. <coughs> Baiting out the gauntlet enough? and the sin off beam. But is it enough? Because now he's sacrificed that unit. But he's given his his pack of empaths time to yeah not get to and they're it. they're hyper as well. Like this might be yeah. Ranger's scaling up though with Invoker. Oof. Big damage. Does the Lynx give healing as well? Uh, it does surely. But, that's a big. That's a big. That's there are lynxes on both sides, but yes, they both, nice. they both give healing though. Damn, I don't know which I one you're so talking about. Zeptile might, might take this one. <clears throat> who did he even lose to in winners bracket? Uh, who did Mindia lose to? No, no, Zep. Uh, Zep. Let me just confirm. He lost lost to Leo Leo Main. Oh. So it'll be a rematch after this, no? Uh, it's it's, Zep. Oh, it's Mindia, it, it Mindia. would be Zep and Mindia. It'd be Zep and Mindia. And Leo Main won out winners bracket. Interesting. Yeah. So the the next matches are Mindia, and then there's Storming, and then there's Leo Main. And so we're going to be doing best of threes for the whole thing, and uh, we'll we'll honestly just let the the competitors decide for the grand finals if they want to do a best of three or best of five. Yeah, let's do that. We're still setting all of this up, so we're being a little bit flexible with it all. Yep, 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 yep. We'll have a waiting list for substitutes next time, too. For what? Substitutes? Oh, like a people DQ? Yeah, I didn't let anyone sub in this time, um, but we, mm. we can set that up for next time. Quite a, There was quite a bit of interest for it, so... Yeah, yeah or just people who uh, signed up and don't show up. Yeah, yeah I just yep, wanted yep. to do first in best dress, and I, I, it was too late for me to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys pulled this out of your butts like very last minute. So. <laughs> oh yeah, we set this up in like three days. So. Um, yeah. Big thanks to all the organizers too. It couldn't have been done without all of them as well. Yeah, but the wildfire guys is the first. Again, I was away last week, so I, I didn't see how this thing was run. But yeah, this week I can see how it's done in the back end. It's good. You guys have got a, a pretty good okay, good so thing going. I'm sorry. Here. Like here made, made a really nice read. He put Indomitable in his Furnite. Yeah. Which mm. I kept it alive through the first bur burst. Oh, of no. Cast. And another, and it ate an entire other Gauntlet cast, even though it was sitting at one HP. What do we think? Is this going to be enough? The, the uh, I think he loses, but he should get light. some of these. And now he just got Ooh. Indomitable in his Crunch. Nice. Who ate, who ate another Gauntlet. Like the, these Indomitables. Yeah. Wow. High. Are massive. Wow. Oh, I love the Indomitable stuff. It's <clears throat> insane. Yeah. Yeah, they changed I mean, up the, the game like yeah. massively. The play here is you switch like... you switch sides. I feel like he's not gonna do that because he was so against it earlier in chat. <laughs> but, I, but I also agree that's the right move. We'll he see played his it. hand. Ooh. He played his hand. Fight fire with fire, I suppose. I would put two indom indomitables on the. Nah, never mind. You can't do that. No, but yeah, help. you didn't move over the center off. So he's just trying to get some survivability there on his side as well. That's a tough choice, man. The less energy or less healing, it's a tough choice. I think mm. here you're not really worried about the healing from the empaths. You're really worried about them getting their omegas off and stunning stuff. Mm. Mm. Interesting. I think, yeah, I think you are right, Jimbo. Even moving the uh, the ranger, the ranger would have been a free move. But you can't and do that. Have redirected. Because the, the Atipo and the Lynx are both giving it extra energy. Oh. You need to move them both. I think this three. is a bad move from Pizarro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's lost it. I think he was trying to expect Zeptile to move over. Oh, 100%. But that's not a moving player. Nope. But he is kind of separated, so at least the gauntlet blasts aren't going to... Yeah, it was going straight on Blazonite. Well. Yeah, but they're also not going to be able to Goodbye, get Goodbye, Blazonite. Going straight on Blazonite is not great for Pizarro, though, yeah. Yeah. Damn. Uh, he oh, tried to, to big brain it. This I wonder if he was great. predicting a side swap from Zep. Oh, for sure. A yeah. full yeah, side swap. Yeah, for sure he was. Yeah. Oh, f GG. Yeah. It's nothing's, nothing's happening here. That is GG. All right, let's keep... We'll keep Zep's, Zep's thing on. Yep. 
All right, and I'm just telling them that. So Mindia and Zep are going to be up next. My favorite bit was this um, this gauntlet when it took out the Atipos. Another shout out to those people who are complaining about empaths, by the way. There are things <laughs> you can do. Yeah. Get creative, you boys. You talking to me? <laughs> I don't like empaths either, bro. Don't worry. 2-0. I love to see an empath team get... T- I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> so 2-0. So they're starting up. These guys... We're going to be going back to back right now. We're going to be smashing through these. Back to back. So Mindia and Zeptile up now, and then the winner of this is up against Storming. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Zeptile chooses here. So Mindia, Mindia playing the Umba, Umba team, and Zeptile playing the Tsunami team. Tsunami Gauntlet. Going to be very fascinating to see how this plays out if Mindia does end up playing that Umba team, which I don't see why he wouldn't. And yo, by the way, guys, in chat, if you guys can like push this out on Twitter, tag Alluvian, tag Kieran, uh, tag the players, like let people know what's happening right here. Because this has been like a good tournament. We've got matches back to back now. This is the the meaningful to- uh, matches right now. We're at the end of it. Start pushing this out. Let people see that we've got an esports thing, grassroots. A week and a half people. after launch. Yeah, like the, for the people need, by the people. Exactly. If you guys support, we guys can can get bigger, do more things, bring more people in. Uh the support means everything. Tag Kieran, let him know what's going on. We can't let we can't Chill have him. Mega. We can't like have that. him sleeping on us. Who do you give time's respite to though? Oh, is this, this a different is this team? Different team. A very different team. It's looking like a, a, a touch of magma in here. Yeah, so we're seeing a different, a different team by Zeptile. I think uh, maybe he was thinking that his water comp would have a bad matchup into what he was expecting Mindy to play. Mm. Well, looking like. Well, I think I think that's an interesting play because he knows he was just on stream and Mindy had a lot of free time. And so Mindy is like, ah, oh, I'm going to beat this water comp. I'm going to spam rogues. And so Zeptile's like, yeah, I mean, good luck. Um, I think I think that's smart. It's an unfortunate byproduct of us streaming the tournament, but I, I think it's smart by Zeptile. Oh, yeah, no. That wouldn't beat Umbra at all. Umbra would have destroyed... His water comp might be closer than you think. No, no, I'm just, I'm just saying, like the water comp overall would have gotten destroyed by Ombre, like end state. That's a very low HP score, Axe. There, but <laughs> yeah, that was a super close <laughs> first round. Oh, you're talking about the board. I thought you were talking about the one running the tournament. <laughs> I got him. You see, I can literally got kick him. you off any time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that would be a very low HP Skyrox thing to do. <laughs> low HP, high estrogen, however you want to cut it. <laughs> now nah, we love Scoriax. Scoriax has done an incredible job nah, fighting through killer, sickness. Man. Let's give a W for Scoriax again in the chat, dude. Still high pro- he gives a high production value. He's willing to die for this. I don't know. This, this guy's Genuinely. a man. He's not the face of Alluvium, but he's a man of the people. <laughs> and the eyes and ears of Alluvium. Yo, we need a W in chat for Skyrox, the man of the people. We need a W in chat for for Jimbo, the face of Alluvium. We need a, a W in chat for Martini, the guy who made TFT and now switched over to Alluvium. W's I mean, in chat all around. I mean, and Ellen for the chat players for TSG, we shit talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see if we get more W's or more L's. <laughs> <laughs> Jimbo does it 75 seconds early. I waited a <laughs> little bit. I tried to set it up good. So this match, the first two rounds have actually been kind of close. <laughs> uh, even though we've seen Mindia have kind of a slower start with this comp before. Um, yep. These rogues uh, almost almost getting through and, and killing the Scoriox each time. 
stacking them together is the right play. The problem with Umbra is it becomes untargetable and then um, going back onto it is hard. But if you stack everything together so the Umbra is sitting with the rest of its team, then when it's untargetable, it's less of a problem. You'll retarget onto it a lot faster. Yeah, Zatar really just jamming everything in the corner here, saying, you are not going to get to my Scoriox. My Scoriox is going to kill you. Yeah. That's uh, the way to do it. Plan. See how it plays out. Lots of bulwarks. Good survivability. Yeah. It would be interesting to see if these bulwarks walk too far up front or not. Why is Umbre not it's generating really any up. energy? Uh, he probably got stunned by the Water Grocco and lost some energy there. Ooh, water true. Grocco drains energy when he... I forgot about that. That's so OP. Oof. Thank you for those dubs in the chat, boys. <laughs> keep, don't stop. Don't stop out. spamming them. Just keep going. Keep spamming W. Yeah, so we're going to have like a break for 75 seconds, and then they're going to come back with more Ws. <laughs> Maybe we can get a W Pyramid going. Hmm. Yeah. So that shows in as the obvious choice. <laughs> I think uh, he put one blocker on Harbinger just in case, because Harbinger could have been pretty interesting for Mindia as well. But Light's chosen being so strong, he wanted to put all his tokens on that one. Look at this this stack of seven bulwarks, three oh, magma. Cool. I still think <laughs> Mindia needs to start putting his Aegis and stuff in the middle. You can't heal if you can't do damage. Like, yeah, because Vamp, right? It's based on the damage you deal, but if you have this much tankiness and you're not even doing damage, like... And the energy reduction, it's over. This feels like a really, really well-planned-out counterplay by Zeptile here. This this looks over. I'm just going to call it. Oh, yeah. I don't I don't know what Mindia can do here. He had to put his Umbra and, and that combo on the right-hand side, at least, so that it wasn't being targeted first. But even the Magma... I wonder what Ragnar wouldn't have reached him if he was like on the very outside attacking that nature Graco. He could have gotten the Slayer bonus off, got his attack speed up a little bit, and then he could have been on his way. But he's not setting up in the middle, bro. Listen to me. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm curious to see what uh, match two looks like, though. I Thank mean, you. clearly he did. But he should have done it at the beginning, but it's fine. I'm not mad about it. Yeah, curious to see how this uh, one, how this plays out, and then is it enough? At least it's going to cost. Mean, Sunbird just doesn't doesn't do damage, right? He's got the blind here as well, so let's see. Can he oh, blind he is is enough? No, he doesn't have enough augments on his umber either. No, yeah, not strong enough. Yeah, I mean it's it's doing something. It's not doing nothing. But yeah, not but it's not enough. enough. It doesn't have any heals yet, you know? Oh, it does, apparently. Boom, boom, boom. But, I mean, it's is the game over? Oh, yeah. For sure. It's still if a little it's too not, late. Oh, yeah. Let's see. How Damn. much do you beat him wow. by, by sweep. That's a sweep right there. I wonder what Mindy is going to do to to change it up. Zeptile coming back on a run. Zeptile with a 2-1 against Zod, 2-0 against Patat, a nice sweep right now against Mindia. Yeah, it really Zeptile, felt like he came prepared today. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Zeptile was only beaten by Leo Man 2-1. So I think Mindia was beaten it, by it Leo Man like, too. What's that? I think uh Mindia was beat by Mindia was beaten by Leo Man as well. No, Mindia Mindia was beat by Soda. Oh, right, 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 right. Mindia was beat by Soda. Who was beaten by Leo Man. Directly. Mm. There's a lot of that. Our top four is forming quite, quite coherently. <laughs> this is nice. I'm really, really liking this, man. This is a... And I'm I'm very... It's it's cool. Like, it's cool to see... I always say... When I say it, I don't mean it this way. But it's cool to see S. Judd drop down and rank a little bit and see there's some variety in, in the top players. And, and like, it would have been... I was expecting it to be as Jad Smartass, like the same guys, number one, number two, consistently. But seeing that there is some variation uh, gives, like, it, it's it's a cool thing to see, and it it shows that there is progression. There are narratives to be built in this competitive scene as we start this up. 
Yeah, and I'm pumped to see the the fun builds from India and especially Zeptile. Like mm. that water team is incredible. Shout out to both of you guys. You guys are really uh, interesting. Mm. Well, that's that's India is now gone. Mm. Keep going. I said until. No, I was gonna say Mindy has now gone the uh, the empath build, the Blaze Knight empath build. Well, that... I think he could have won with the Umba team, to be honest, if he had positioned better, scaled it up a little bit, uh, a little bit differently. But I think he's gonna go with the safe option here. Yeah, he tried mm. to move it over into the middle a little too late. If you start off in the middle with that team comp, you can go either side just barely and still get those buffs. But. So we see Zeptile with uh, Rogue Comp here. Oh, I was not expecting that. But this is a uh, pretty much GG for Mindia, <laughs> unfortunately. We have not seen an uh, empath. I've never seen an empath team beat this comp. I don't. I actually don't know if it's even possible. Oh, he's going for the the fire. He's going all fire. All fire. So yeah. They, he's going so they, for the they went, Yep. 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 That's interesting. So they kind of played the rock, paper, scissors, and it looks like Zeptile won. Zeptile predicting Mindia goes for an empath swap. Yep. And pulling out the counter. Or this guy say, was did his homework. Counter. It really feels like uh, Zeptile did his homework, and he really thought out what he was going to play in this tournament. You can't just come into this tournament and, you know, you're not going to win them by having one team comp. No, you you can, but you're not going to win. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? you have to be exactly. uh, flexible. You have Correct. to be smart. You have to come in with unique. You have to picks. adapt. You yeah, have to adapt. you have to be able to adapt as well, like you said. Correct. Yeah, and Very I think what what Zeptile's playing right now is amazing, man. Against something like this, with uh, the fire, the damage, and then the air, just slowing down that first uh, first cast as well. Super, super impactful against something like an empath build yeah i can't get over how impressed i am with not only mindia but uh zeptile zeptile really yeah. impressed me this tournament definitely how both highlight highlight plays this tournament for sure Put can't believe he show. called the blazon on it can't believe he called it yeah that's rough for i feel like this empath comp is like kind of like a comfort pick for a lot of people and i think it was more obvious to Zeptile than it may seem. Yo, Martini's getting some love from Storming in the chat as well. Well, that's saying that you're top one player. <laughs> that's that's the fun part about tournaments is the best of three adds so many layers. Mm. Agreed. Which is why I like this, like the best of three format. And again, if when things get bigger and, and production gets better and everything gets more efficient, having some best of fives thrown in there towards the end as well is going to be really, really cool. Yeah, best that's of when one you're, you're, that's when you're testing. Possible. What's that? Best of one is just not possible. We, we can never. Yeah, no, that. it's just, yeah. And the cool thing with best of five is not only does it become a mind game, but it's actually a um, a test of endurance as well. It's how mu like how on top of it can you be for, for an extended period of time? Look at this Ramfire. He's just watching. He's not even needed. He's, he's really watching. not. I mean, yeah, he'll, he'll 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 fly when his time is ready. Right when the enemy team's about to be dead, anyway. Yeah, he's just gonna the show stop right there. <laughs> there for style points. Yeah, you're taking so long, Omega. Wrong, I mean, it's actually, really that bad. was way closer than it should have been. <laughs> that ramp by not doing anything was way way closer. Oh, look at this lucky guy. He's got Inferno here as well, but we know that he's going to try and take that away from nah, him. He should have put two on Inferno. <laughs> should have put two on it. Yeah, I won't say what the right bid here is, but that was the yeah, wrong bid by, both, by both players. No, no, no. Both players bid this incorrectly. I'll leave it up to the viewer to figure out what the correct bids actually were. Tell us. <laughs> yeah, s -job. The the rotate the the time we'll, we'll definitely speak about it. All right, he's gonna move ram fire. Yeah, unfortunately, I think Smartass said he had some stuff to do with like friends, which is couldn't That's be me. Super unfortunate, and I feel bad for him. But sometimes you have to do what you have to do. Is that a possibility? Smartass, uh, I'm just joking. It's no, I joke. don't think so. It's a joke. You, no, <laughs> you're not. Like he's a loser. 
The other Just option, I love, I love Smartass. The other option we have that was suggested last week is we break up the bracket into two sessions. That means we can split up an eight-hour tournament into two, two, four-hour into two, four-hour tournaments. We have the bottom cut and the top cut. Um, or you let the bottom cut play out, hold it, and then run the top cut uh, later on the week or something like that. I mean, sh- share with us in in the Discord, man. Like, just share share your thoughts with us. I mean, make a thread, make one of those feedback threads, and yeah. just share it with us. Yeah, let's do it in the Illuvium Discord. Like, and just tag. Tag Jimbo, tag Skyrox. Share the ideas there. Tag I'll TSG. be following there as well. Okay, I was just going to say I'll be following, but yeah. <laughs> okay, we got some big Ramfire damage there. Oh, Ramfire's in this time. So I think this... Empath's yeah. getting surrounded. And oh! Four and that's damage. a 4 oh. Oh, sweet. Jesus. Jesus. Yo, that's all taking, taking names right now. All right, so we have Storming. Storming and Zeptile. And yo, in, so we don't need to be changing things. I'm just gonna keep Zeptile on the stream. Yep. Um, obviously, he won't be on stream while he's choosing his teams. We're gonna look after that. Yep. Crazy. So this is a this is losers semi. Once this is done, it goes into the final, and then we go into the grand final. Crazy man, Zeptile is on a tear right now. Like I said, 2 1 with Zod, 2 0 with Potate, 2 0 with Mindia, 8 8 0 in that set just there. Like he is taking names, not holding back, switching up his teams, storming. Both of these guys, good players now. Storming is seated five in this tournament, Zeptile 13. Zeptile has shown he's not a pushover, so. I'm very excited for this. I, I think we all kind of expect what Storming is going to play. And like you said, Jimbo, I think Zeptile is going to come prepared. I don't think it's going to be as easy as, as Storming expects it to be. Well, Zeptile actually posted the top three teams of last tournament. Um, and if he does manage to win out this tournament... Oh, whoops. If he does manage to win out this tournament, then he's actually going to have uh, one less team he needs to he needs to share. He's already got two that's already built on his thing. He doesn't need to make a third. Um, yeah. He only needs to make one more, which would be quite helpful for him. Right. We're, we're just going to have a quick three-minute break as well because, yeah, Zeptal <laughs> has been playing back-to-back. So we're just going to give it a three-minute three minute, uh, three minute break. So just a recap of the players that are still in. So this is our top four. We have Storming, Zeptile, Leomane, and... Soda. Soda, his he was seeded number seven. Uh, he's now in grand final locked in. And then we have Storming Zeptile, Storming uh, seeded fifth, like I said, Zeptile 13th, and then Leo Main 21st. So we've got a bit of a a variance with, with the top four. But yeah, what do you guys think out of the top four? Leo Main, Zeptile, Storming, Soda. Anyone stands out? What what are you guys thinking? I don't know. Well, Zeptile's been really clean. I think Zep takes out Storm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard to say with Leo Main. Uh, yeah, he Soda. lost the first match against Leo Main. That's who well, got Zep him in losers. Leo? Yeah, he he lost to Leo, and that's what got him in losers. Actually, Ooh, if, two one. If Hanega would have beaten Patat, Zeptile would have had the chance to beat Hanega, Storming, and Leo Main, beating out all three of the Brazilian mm. team. That would yeah, have been crazy. Interesting. Look, I would. Look, I, I know we haven't had the match yet. <laughs> I would love, and Storming is my guy, but I would love to see a Zeptile Leo main run back in the losers' finals. The, the losers' finals run it back. It was a close match, 2 1. If Ze- whoever wins that goes into the grand finals, I would love to see that. I would too. That would be such a fun matchup. And I think it's actually going to be interesting. I, I have an interesting question for you before I even say that. Do we think that Storming is going to have an advantage because him and Leo Main are on teams? They're their Brazilian team. Uh, you think Leo Main and Storming are talking about and watching how Zeptile is playing and thinking, hey, maybe we could do this. Maybe we could do this. I don't probably. I don't, I I don't think yes. it's going to make a difference. Like me, me and Zeptile have talked about this in the past. And I think, I think Pokemon VGC, which is what Zeptile comes from. So most players here come from TFT and Hearthstone and all that sort of stuff. 
Zeptile might be the only one who used to be pro Pokemon. Um, and why that's interesting is because I still maintain that Pokemon has a lot of synergy with with Alluvium in the sense of mind games at the very least. And we can see Zeptile's whooped his opponents in terms of mind games. All like these past three games. He's destroyed them just with the way he picks deck teams and stuff like that. I think if if Min if Leo Main and whoever else are trying to figure out Zeptile's strategy and stuff, Zeptile's already changed it. I don't I don't think it's gonna make a difference. That's a really good point. I didn't even think about. There's so many mind games in Pokemon, and in those uh, Pokemon battles, a lot of the times, you, from an untrained eye, um, you're watching these professional Pokemon players, and you're thinking, "Oh, those mind games. Those these are all just coin flips." No, like you you study your opponent, you see what they're going to do, and you kind of just when you're in that frame of mind and you've been doing it for so long, you kind of just got this feeling that they're going to do this or this depending on how they've been playing previously. It's actually a much bigger advantage than you might think. And I had never even thought about it like that, but that's actually a very good point. Yeah, you can already see he's used that a little bit. Um, I don't know how much it's going to come into it. Like a best of five, it's a lot bigger. A best of three, it's it's decent. Um, but I think he has he has the teams to match up against any team he needs to. He just needs to pick it right. All right, awesome. I think Zeptile is ready. Uh, I'm just going to confirm with Storming, and we are ready to go. Crazy. Let's go, guys. And, yo, in chat, again, final three matches now. Make some noise on socials. Share this. Clip it. Tag. Do your things. Let's make some noise. Final three matches right now. Just getting confirmation from Storming, and we are good to go. want to see i got tagged in in the general chat i'm not even looking at discord right now all right jeez i'll deal with that later okay cool uh waiting on storming i saw him typing pokemon has nothing to do with the game <laughs> i mean there are my there are mindset things right of, of how you go into it in battle it's not necessarily a fire beats nature thing but he actually dm'd me and said he i i explained my point of view and he's like oh yeah that actually makes sense so i should taking back his claim there and uh yeah sometimes <laughs> you just need to explain to the people that have a lower iq just not as smart it makes sense it makes sense it takes them a little bit longer to grasp what's going on <laughs> by the way i guys as should's buddy you can't talk to him like that i can like <laughs> No, we've made peace. We've made peace. So it's all G's. All right. Let me see what they're doing. So Zeptile's presented the code. Is waiting on storming. And we are good. I'm going to see what team he's using. I yep. can't see on the small screen. Don't say it, though, obviously. He is ready. All right. I'm going to see this game start. And then I'm going to dip for a bit and come back. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Final three. This is it. Well, it's final four. Yeah, I mean, final three matches. Yes. <laughs> true, true. But top four, top four, yes. Top, top four. four, boys. Let's go. Let's get some <laughs> hype in the chat for top four. We're back at it yeah. again. We'll be back at it next week. This is here forever. We are Alluvian <laughs> Esports. Don't forget that. All right. We're definitely Yo, making it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a list. Yo, so I'm going to put a, all the, the players, top four players. Let us know in chat who you guys think. Top four players? <laughs> I actually thought you were being legit. I thought you were being legit, Jimbo. No, I'm just really good at bullshitting. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, so we won't be here every week? Is that what you're saying? No, 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 we will no. definitely be here every week. We'll be here. We'll be ready. We'll be rocking, boys. We'll be having that prize pool so our boys can be making some money. Alluvium Esports is the future. Don't forget that. You disagree. I don't know. You're just brain dead. It is what it is. It's not my fault. It's yours. Yo, why is this taking so long? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm just going to DQ score myself. That timer for the matchmaking goes to five minutes. 
no, no, no. He's he's just responded like two minutes ago in the uh, in the group chat. Yeah, but yes, if the timer goes to five minutes, then yes. I mean, it's it's just a DQ. There's nothing we can do about that. Rules be rules. Yeah. Technically, the never mind. <clears throat> there, there we, we go. go. Starting up. We're in. We're in. We're in. Okay. So Stormings playing the classic Arcanite Magma Toxic team. I think and he Zep is going to find more success into this team comp from Zeptile compared to some of the other people that we've seen. We haven't really seen an Arcanite team played into it yet, but I think this will do well. Not saying it'll win, but it'll do better. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Keen to see what Zeptile has on, on his side, to be honest. Gives him the perpetual. I don't know how I feel about that, but we'll see. So he's playing the water tsunami. Cool. Yep. Gives him perpetual, takes sapping. <laughs> yeah. Uh, perpetual yeah, seems pretty good for Zep's comp. Yeah. We'll see. But maybe he's got some plans with that sapping hex. Hey, we're seeing the water gauntlet. I love it. I What's... did indeed sell my kidney for the prize pool. You're What's correct. What's Storming playing? Storming is playing the classic Arcanite build. Ooh, interesting. With Toxic, right? Toxic three air, I think. <coughs> so he could win this first round if he plays three air, but I don't think he wants to do that right off the bat. I don't know who wins this matchup. I think it's close. Depends if, mm, I if think you... Toxic wins, but I could be wrong. I don't know about round one. I'm talking about overall. Oh. I think what's interesting to me here is you've got to split up the gauntlet damage as much as you can to give Skyrox enough time to take out his opponent. Hmm. Toxic heals. I think it's even better to just, because he has that um, gauntlet... Might even be better just to run the Phosphorus with pure attack damage. So you can get through the tanks in the front super fast and you get right to the back line. Mm. Mm, I like that. Yeah, yeah. So last time we saw Flish plus a very large gun. Let's see if Zep repeats. Yep, he has it all planned out, even with the 20 health uh, armor. Yeah. Well, I feel like Big he's going to small suit. I'm going to hit the Ranger with this. I'm not convinced. Mm. Yeah, the Pensive Storming puts some uh, units on our right side, his own left side, because um, they could end up in the path, even if the Zep Scotland is targeting the enemy Ranger. You could hit a hit a front line here that meets up with the Carablue. If he puts something over there. So yeah, I could go right into this Garako now. Okay, just got back. Oh, What's... oh they just It actually played. targeted the okay. Scorpion on the left instead of the Rangers. Sometimes it's a little difficult to judge distances. Oh yeah. It's doing it's doing pretty good damage. Is it enough though? I don't think so. Game. I think the uh, One more I think cast Stormy side still wins here. Maybe save some HP with a Singe kill here. Oh, yeah. Singe goes down. Yep. Nice. Okay. And then the taunt comes out. Let's see. Can Actually, you get... can you get another cast off? Oh, man. That oh, was great. Way. That was huge. That was, that was an good. extra 40 HP saved. We need an augment that takes enemy shields and makes them explode. Yeah. what that is <laughs> or just some kind of shield break in general would be really yeah. nice for those empath teams that way people aren't I've running shared. seven empath it's just kind of like you use empath no, here there. yeah i shared i personally me and lassini have spoken about it i've shared some ideas we came up with some ideas um yeah i think that the team is very much aware of this yeah it's the it's the only mechanic that doesn't have 
Augments based around it. A debuff. Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely be working on um, new augment types that you know cover more bases. Right now, the augments are a decent start, but there's a lot of untouched, untouched ground. So we'll be working on augments mm -hmm. that, yeah, maybe interact with shields. Um, even something like Omega Power currently is kind of restrictive on how you can influence Omega Power with augments. So that could be another thing we do. Uh, I mean, there, there's all sorts of stuff that we could add in, and we'll just try to. Try to make them as as different from the existing ones as possible, just to add as much variety. So he's activated the tsunami. Yeah, uh, he activated the invoker. Invoker, yeah. yeah. Ooh, phosphorus. Looks like he's gonna get that phosphorus. Yeah, that's, that's gonna win him the It's hyper Ripterus, though. Oh, oh, yeah. Ooh, wow. That Ripter is scared in front of the Sin Elf, it's just dead instantly. I haven't used a suit yeah. in my teams yeah. in so long, and this is telling me that I need to use them more. Because that, that Ranger would not <laughs> have lived without that suit. You can't have a you can't have a Ranger just running around without any clothes on, man. That's crazy. Sure you can. <laughs> Have their e resolve Yo. and energy resistance reduced by 50% or whatever? Okay. So he's got the the tsunami, the next tsunami in. Oh, perfect placement as well. I get exact. He's just trying to, to keep his sin off away from everyone. Give it that extra longevity. I wonder how much he tried this team before coming on the tournament. Did he build it after the patch mm. or... I would imagine so. This seems like an after patch build. I don't know. We could we could always ask him as well. <coughs> I don't think it's that hard to uh, predict this. You know, like we were talking about how water was weak. We're expecting something to happen to where it gets buffed up. You can predict these. You can predict that by mm. building this team around it. Oh, for the change. Look so. at that prediction with the the. Oh, is that? Oh <laughs> no, Lalora is still targeting oh, this no. enough. Taking the gauntlet. Oh, it doesn't oh, matter. But yeah, well. it doesn't matter. And oh. the Sin Elf hit it. The Sin Elf hit Lalura. Yeah. That you wouldn't see I coming. I don't think it's wow. going to matter, I'll be honest. Zep did split up his two carries, though, so he avoided getting both carries you know, interrupted by the Lalura. Yeah, that was a good yeah. play. Yeah. Now, this was a great play by Stormings. Can he get a triple kill here? No. Wow, I thought it was yeah. going to attack the Phosphorus and Scoriax and he was going to win. Yo, this is a good match. <clears throat> this is a very good match. Yeah, that Water Buffalo was just barely in the way. He he could have won that. What's that? What's that? Augment that's, Martini. That's the Perpetual Entropy, the legendary augment that I got. That gives him 50 and energy back after he casts the first time. Right? <coughs> yep. And base Ooh. energy region as well. Five regen, so a lot of regen to begin with, and then a, a quick refresh, kind of like a tsunami effect on the first cast. Mm. I would have said throwing that um, minus energy resistance augment on Grokko was a big mistake. I would have thrown it on like Flood or something. Because Grokko is going to go down too quick, you're not going to get any use out of it. Hmm. Or you chuck it on the links. Either one. I wonder what's going to happen with the Lulura. I feel like that's going to... He's going to need to adjust slightly there. Yeah, hopefully his first Omega doesn't get cast, and then he casts again and gets stunned. That would be unfortunate. I mean, he might just delete the Lulura with this first cast because of Perpetual. Um, the Lulura may not have time to finish his cast. Ooh, nice call. Oh, yep. Good call. Good call. What does Perpetual do again? Energy regen. See, oh, look at that. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. That's major. I was expecting him to use his Omega Lalura go under and then in the middle of his next one, making Perpetual yeah, this is useless. Major. Oof. Yep, great play. Mm -hmm. He has to move yep. the Lalura off to the okay, right. He's got that one killed. The Sinalf doesn't hit Perpetual it. Perpetual put in so much work there. Even at the end, uh, when Sinalf couldn't move. Couldn't actually auto attack the Scoriox there, but you had enough it's energy region to just cast as Omega. Exactly. Man, these are close rounds. 
Yeah, I feel like Storm scales a little bit better. This is a great move. Oh, yeah. This is the play. I love this from Zep. Especially now the Gauntlet's not going on Lalura. Gauntlet's actually going to go into the thick of it every time. Here's that uh, Pokemon uh, mind games experience going through here that Estrid was saying was going to come through. And I think Estrid's completely right. I think the mind games from the Pokemon competitive scene that Zeptile had is really going to come into play here. Yeah. That was definitely what... Um, Great shout, Estrid. Yeah, Estrid. Very insightful when it comes so, to that. Zeptile just moved his Atlas and didn't actually do anything with it. So he actually just wasted a little bit of... of <laughs> yeah. Oh, did he? I didn't even yeah. notice that. He should have either um, canceled the movement or undid the action. But yeah, I think he just yeah. left it. So... That lost a few points there. That Lalura is going to lose out a lot. He's going to do literally nothing yeah. the entire fight. Storm will move it next it's next kidding. round, but for this round, Storm loses that Lalura. Yep. And the good thing about it as well is it's just helping. Um, I think that's a geyser, right? Yeah. Is flood, that geyser flood. or flood? Flood. Flood. It's just going to help flood cast way quicker with those attacks just on him. Yeah. Oh, look at that look Volante at that actually one. doing some good damage to Scoriok. So we're gonna get a cast. Sinalf not doing that, that phosphorus much. is tanky now, yeah. boy. Very, very tanky. Oh, he actually Ooh. got the cast off. Still. Oh, it was so feels close. lucky. Wow. Still. So close, yeah. That's is that enough? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah, like you can't complain <laughs> with that round. You can't complain with that round. Damn, this is this that is the was mind wild. games. Yeah, yeah, the Estrid mind games, bro. Good shout. <laughs> Estrid mind games. <laughs> and he's doing more Estrid mind games. He might even move his sin elf over again. Yep, he will. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it there. He's so valuing position exactly. over raw mastery points here. Um, really doesn't want to was... get disrupted oh. by this Lura. Yeah, and I can see you playing Atlas at the back. Mm. Yeah, I like that. I'll give him the 800. He's this running. is such yeah. a tense game. We're not even talking. It's He's so running crazy. out of time. Yeah. He's I'm running out of can. time. That's great. Indomitable. We'll give it. Indomitable. Indomitable. Yeah. Or indomitable on his. Now on. he's actually running out of time because he's doing all this camera movement. Oh my god! What's he doing? Okay, is that you have five seconds, sir? You might he's. What is this man cooking? Is this Jesus. edible? <laughs> is this edible? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll so out. we see we'll 27 out. unspent mastery points. So is that potentially missing out on some value here? Crazy. So the yeah, Lulura so went to where everything was as well. Yeah, and we see that Storming put the sapping hex in the Lulura. And this is what I was expecting at the beginning when he 3-bit it, is uh, I'm trying to use it to jump into the back line and disrupt all the casters. Oh, we got the Scoriax. But Zep he moved all this stuff back. away from the back line to keep it away from the Lulura. So nice positioning, but he spent, uh, he spent but, a man, lot of points is... moving stuff. So he's losing a lot of raw power. Oh, yeah. Everything it's clumping up for that. Rise. It's, it's phosphorus. Oh, the phosphorus indomitable is too strong. I don't think this phosphorus dies here. The phosphorus no, became either. invulnerable for a sec. Do you know why? I, mean, I, I know that the Sinoff was indomitable. Oh, man. Is phosphorus going to do the oh, no, he... damage? Oh, wait. Can he, can he just take this because out? Because he has more. He has oh! more. Yeah, he had more oh, he had more oh, units on the board. Wow. God. Wild. This is a great fucking uh, This is insane. a weird match. Yeah, Phosphorus and Vulnerable could have come from a legendary um Vanquisher's uplink, I think it's called. When you die, you give invulnerable to your two nearest oh, wow. allies and give them some energy as well. Man, Crazy. Zep is really getting the mind games going here. Wow, that's a super close round. Yo, yeah. yo, credit credit to Stormings as well, man. He's holding on. Like, it's, yeah, for sure. Yeah, this is not a a complete wash. 
-hmm. No, not at all. This is a high level, both very intelligent players, cerebral gameplay. Both these guys are killing it right now. <laughs> yeah, this is this we're on is round dead. eight, and it's not. And it might not be the last round. We we could still yeah, see yeah. it online. Yeah, this is game here. I don't see. I don't see how Storm predicts this. I mean, Storm could win with just the phosphorus, and then Zephyr yeah. still be alive. Plus, he has uh, like more augments as well. Yeah. So it's still close. This is. I mean, Let's Zep's see. got every. He's got everything out. Yeah, Zep everything is tapped is out. He's really just focusing on position at this point, trying to yeah. out mind game. Storm's capped on no, augments is... too. Is he? No, C has still got. C yeah, still he'll, space. he'll add them this turn. C oh, no. Where does he send the Lulura? Right in the middle of the board? Yeah, with the Atlas, like I said. It's yeah. a, an Atlas invulnerable with 800 max health. That's just not great. But I mean, yeah, his front line goes down very quickly. Though. And he gets the Omega off on Phosphorus. It's not doing any Yo, this, damage now. What? This yeah. split is really, really good for Stormzing, uh, Stormings. The, the Gauntlet's not getting a lot of value. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The Gauntlet will take Yo, out this something might be useful PG's. now. But both of Zep's carries are still alive, and they're scaling with Invoker. Like, it's not... Oh, we got the Indomitable. It's, it's not 100% a... over. Like, this Gauntlet... Okay, that was, a big, that was a big hit from the enemy. I think, yeah. does he live here, though? That's a lot. No. Of no. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, a bunch of what? Minus 60. A I think that was the, the enemy. That was game the enemy one. Gauntlet, I think, took that. <laughs> yeah, that yeah the enemy Gauntlet had a big hit at the end. I think if that big splash doesn't come in, maybe Zep can get another cast off with his own mm -hmm. Gauntlet and uh, you know save a bit of HP and push it, push it to a later round. But close one, though. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Man, that was a great, great match from both players. Both players. Yeah, both players playing at a super high level there. Zeptile moving everything around. Uh storming, setting up this one unit or this one unit a little bit over, adding the pure damage on Scoriax, trying to get rid of those tanks. Very fun. Great play from both players. So much fun to watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this is what it's all about. <laughs> This is what it's all about. High level gameplay, high level intelligent cerebral movements on the board. Dude, I'm not even joking. <laughs> something I, I actually think of something now. This is sick. I think, dude, based on what we saw from and let, let's be objective, we saw a lot of the same meta in, in last week's tournament. This week, we're seeing so much more. Even the, the people that are playing the same kind of meta, we're seeing changes, we're seeing development. I think it's even from a viewing perspective, like it feels way more entertaining this week than it did last week, uh, which is awesome. Awesome. Did she just say that because he wasn't here last week? <laughs> I was watching on a train, man. <laughs> and yes, it's a much better viewing oh. experience because they can see me as well. Viewers get to see me. It's definitely much better that way. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, I agree 100% with TSG. We're seeing some more unique comps. We're seeing some more unique play. We even saw, you know, Zeptile showing us how to outplay these empaths with the water invoker. And it's just, it's been a really fun tournament all around. Not seeing the same thing over and over and over. I'm loving it. And what's crazy was it's it's funny you mentioned it earlier about uh, Zeptile not wanting to move move units, but he did a lot of moving units this this match, which is really cool. Yeah, I think um, he wanted to win earlier than that because he was getting to a point where he couldn't even use anything with his points. Like he he had everything placed on the board and it had all the augments. So we're getting into this right. next match. Yeah, we're up now. Storming's running it back with the same thing. I mean, Early. it makes sense. Did he have Scoriax last game? Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. This is a Furyax. Oh, so it's a different deck. Oh, he switched to a different Arcanine build. Maybe I saw that wrong, but I could have swore that I saw a Furyax. So this is like three fire, two Arcanite with the Furyax attack damage buff. It might. I mean, he. Yeah. Oh, and this is a different thing from right? Zeptile as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is different. Yeah, yeah. It's the and that's good for him because Zeptile's got the Earth to get the hyper off of that. That's kind of unlucky for Storming. <laughs> does that um, that team look oddly like so does the Fire Water Bulwark uh, mm. Furyax? Was Soda the one playing the Furyax, or was that someone else? 
Uh, it was soda. It was soda. Yeah. It was soda, but that's it's not like uncommon to run. Yeah, looking really, looking really similar to that build. I wonder why he switched after after winning. What is this positioning? This is randomly throwing. Yeah, it's not like he switched to like something completely different, right? Yeah, it's just a, a different variant of a similar deck, similar team. Uh, and Zeph here going Earth Fighter plus a cow. Yeah, pl yeah just plus the cow. Interesting. Just then they're done that. So, <laughs> oh my god. Looks like it's the stun off there. I mean, three or three fighters so, can be a very strong round one. I think he should yeah. easily, easily take yep. this. For sure. Fighters just running through it. Oh yeah, I love Fighter Earth. Say it again. <laughs> I love Earth and Fighter as an opener. Same, dude. I think this is really fun. Like, I, I'm a little surprised that Zeptile pulled out the Earth. I wonder if he was predicting that if he'd seen Storming play something like this in something like this earlier in the tournament, or if it's just kind of luck, or if there's this is just a very, very good comp that he's been playing. Hmm. Yeah, we're not seeing perfect alignment with the synergies here. He goes up into four fighters and four earth. But, um, you know, you don't always have to be perfectly aligned on those things. He does activate too toxic and just, you know, generally makes his board stronger. Yeah, this could also be a transition round for him where he's like mm -hmm. kind of cool with just losing, trying to get to the next round where he can really buff up his team. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't even ball. think he loses this round. I think this board is still very strong. But yeah, I mean, yeah. next next round we can maybe expect to see him kind of bring it all together and see where this is leading. But and he's still, obviously thinking... Interesting. Oh, oh, sorry, Martin, you go. I was just saying, I think this is still quite strong. I mean, he's got a good amount of tankiness and really good damage output with the Toxic and the Fighters. Like, it's a really good position for the line as well. It's going to stun the entire team. Boom, boom, boom. Yep. Major stun. <laughs> yeah, this is a very, very good round for you Zeptile. Mean, you mean the Scarabuck? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Scarabuck, yeah. Yeah, the taunt. That's a lot of damage. The Ripter is tearing through the bulwarks. Makes sense. Mm. Keen to see how he plays this out now. I think this is where he starts to go with Magma Arcanite, right? Oh, you go hard from here. You go double down, try and knock him out early. Yeah, what does Storming put in here? What's his next move? He's going to need some sort of DPS to counter, right? Or some kind of damage. Yeah, he definitely needs damage, but w what was on his team again? This He's playing an Arcanite build? This is a very, very good build from, from Zeptile. Very good team from Zeptile. He's floating 20 points, though, so he's thinking about trying to be a little more efficient with his points here. So he's getting the Magma, got the Bulwark, the fight. He's got the Arcanite out. And he's just going with yeah. the suit. Just going with the suit here. Interesting. I mean, he could have probably moved the uh, the ranger a bit closer, just so the magma affects much quicker. But I, I don't know how much of a of a difference that's really gonna that's really gonna make. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't do that. So I agree, he should be moved up a little bit. Yeah, like you can just see, like these, wow, however many seconds, ten seconds is just not doing anything. Yeah, because if he gets if they get through that front line, the ranger is dead no matter what. Exactly. So they might as well move up and get the extra magma damage. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, it's it's twenty two seconds and it's only now that the ranger's magma is starting to affect the opponent. But even then, it's, it's yeah, it still didn't a very clear much. win. It's more about at that stage. It's more about optimizing than anything. Wow, yeah, this he's got is... a strong, a strong core, strong core team going here. Yeah, hundred percent. Could he take the bulwark? No, I don't think that makes sense for him. Hey, and he's got a lot of flexibility this round because he equipped a forty cost suit, so that mm. can come off if he needs it to. And he's got quite a lot of points to spend here if he wants, so he can, he can go, pretty, go pretty big this turn. And my money pretty... is on the suit coming off as well. Knowing Zeptal, he's going to take the suit off, maximize elsewhere. I sure hope so. I think that's like a really good idea. 
I think we're going to see my, my bet is that we're going to see a Scariox out there and then a um, and then an augment. To cap, yeah, Scarx to cap with the the magma. Interesting that he doesn't put the ranger in front of the score axe because it doesn't even have the big gauntlet, so it's not going to yeah. be doing damage. So if they get through that front line, you would want some kind of meat shield between the score axe, which is going to be doing most of the damage. But maybe I'm missing something. Interesting. He's considering moving or selling the fighter, but that would get rid of the earth. Interesting. Yeah, spending a few points on movement here. Really, really He's valuing lightly. Really valuing positioning. And this is coming from the guy who said movement, like augments, are more important than movement. Very fascinating. He moved the. That's, yeah, that's a uh, that's a Ripterus, right? It's more important. Ripped her just back slightly. It's more important until you can win round four, right? Yeah, but Zep's how, like, he just doesn't even move. Like, I don't even think he leaves his house, so... <laughs> In general, doesn't move. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, the, the magma, the magma from the Ranger and Skarks, not really doing much. I mean, they give the grit and resolve still. Um, yeah, I mean the the mag the, the actual magma from from the ground is not doing that DPS. And now he goes into bloom. Yeah, wow. This is a look at this. Look at the synergies he's got activated: three earth, two bloom, two magma, two toxic, three arcanite, three bulwark, three fighter. If this is not an optimized team, yep. And he pulls back. I don't know what fighter. is for the Lalura movement over to the Scoriox. Smart. I think depending on how the fighter moves and its movement speed, though, it could kind of just pull the Lalura up to where the Omega still hits Scoriox. Let's see if that's how it works out. Nope. Good job. And the Magma now is doing a little bit more, which is cool okay, to see. Okay, Scoriox. Oof. Should be fine. Yeah, it's yeah. good. It's good. It's good. And now see if it... an early damage might come into it later. Oh, that if that phosphorus is cast one wet. more time, Scorax would be gone. Oh, that is so lucky. That's big. Oh, no <laughs> a lot of extra damage. Not quite enough. That is big. 20 health left. <laughs> So now you can see he put this fighter to stop the uh, Lalura from attacking. Oh yeah, he Scoria, predicted that. It it still mm. stuns him though, so he was still in range. Yeah, it was quite off, a little bit off. Yeah, well played, Yo Zeptal stepping up. Chat's <laughs> reacting to something I said. I don't even remember what I did. Yeah, what did you do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was wondering the same thing. <laughs> Jim Bruno, you know, they just say, okay, cool. What did I say? <laughs> I don't know if you need piercing here, but all right. Which links is that? On the to both Scoriax and Phosphorus. Uh, <laughs> Wait, is Phosphorus trapped? No, no, the Lynx walks out of the way. It's the fighter Lynx. Oh, okay. I thought that was Scion for whatever He upgraded reason. the Doka into Big Doka. Mm -hmm. Doki Doka. Yep, he upgraded his Earth Fighters to be... Oh, it's uh, just out of range. The bigger the bigger Earth Fighters got rid of the... And calculated. Monkey oh, and the Baby Doka. That's stun. He's got the Indomitable, but that doesn't even... Whoa, it does matter. Because now he's making it It even. held off that was for a long time there. That big mattered, actually. Somewhat nice. even say. Wow, is Storming's really gonna pull this back? We got a game, boys. Yeah. <laughs> we're back seven. Forth. Yeah, we've seen some of these comebacks from, from 20 20 HP. Is this really what we're gonna see again? He's yeah. giving them both the omni vamp. And Indomitable Lolora is gonna just ruin his day. 
apenas. Yeah, I think the attack speed, if he can slow down the attack speed on um, the Phosphorus, it's going to be... Mm. By fire with fire. I definitely would have given it to Scarabok, but at least it keeps the magma up longer. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Does he move the Lollaroo to make sure it catches the taunt this time? Yo, we see we see Nick in chat as well. Shout out to Nick. What's up, Nick? Yeah, shout out Nick, bro. Appreciate you, big dog. We know what you yeah. do behind the scenes. The tallest That's Yo, a man of the people, if I've ever seen that, one. That is a man of the people. <coughs> I'm right. I better never hear anyone talking crap about Nick. That's my boy. He cares about, I'm not even joking. He cares about this community so much. Oh, dude, 100%. Love that dude. 100%. Oh, yeah, I have nothing but love for him as well. Ooh. All right. Ooh. All right. Storming moves the lure to the other side. And yeah, he overtuned the prediction. Oh. And now that Lulura is uh, having a field day with this ranger. But he left the Scoriox alone this time. Which might be a more valuable target. Oh yeah, my it's goodness! So much faster though, like look how slow it's shooting. What is look, that about? Yo. Yeah, this is. Don't matter. Oh, that's game. Oh, that's a big hit. Oh no! Wow. Stormings. Unbelievable. What a game, guys! We have a game, yo. Losers finals. We have Leo Mang, Leo Main, and Stormings. Love to see crazy, it. crazy, crazy, crazy game. Super high level play, dude. I keep saying it, but I love that. That was a great series. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Zeptal dropped out of the tournament, but you had that yeah. unique pick. Super fun to watch. Us, uh, man. I love seeing that. I was very, very, very impressed with you, Zeptal. Thank you for signing up and playing. Yeah, that was definitely awesome. one of my favorites. In, in today's today's lineup, one of my favorites to watch. <coughs> definitely top three. I would say definitely top three to watch. Great comps, great play, great movement, just everything about it. Exceptional. Absolutely exceptional. All right. I'm getting in touch now with, with the next two. Yep, this is crazy. Real. Leo Main versus Storming. Uh, yep. Leo Main won the previous match against Storming in the winner's bracket 2-0. Now that here they are in the loser's finals, they're getting the run back. So this is your chance, Storming, to prove yourself. And Leo Main, this is your chance to show him who's boss. Show him who's the big Brazilian on top. Let's go. <laughs> the big Brazilian on top. <laughs> that came out a little Man. bit weirder than I did for it. But... <laughs> yeah. Yo, guys, in chat, uh, loser's finals. It's this match and then the grand finals right off of this. So, again, share it if you haven't. Push this out. We've seen the level of, of competition increase every single match. Quality of matches increase every single match. We're getting to the finals right now. We need you guys to support. Share it. Man, this is where it's at. This is where it's at. These guys have come into the community very recently at the launch of PvP. Both of these guys, actually. And they're now in... The finals, uh, the losers' finals of a weekly. They've put in the time. Stormings has been grinding it out. Leo may be grinding it out. Excited as hell to watch this. Yeah, both challenger TFT players, right? So th they're experienced in this kind of a uh, 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 format. You know what I mean? Like mm. these players know what they're doing. They have experience at high level play. Uh, I'm excited to see it. It's awesome to see some people that are new to the community. Um, and, you know, it's good to see some fresh blood in there. Appreciate you both, Leo Main and Storming, if you're watching. Thank you guys for signing up. It's been an absolute pleasure to watch you today. And it was an absolute pleasure watching you in the previous tournament. Hope to see you consistently playing in the Inferno. Awesome. Yeah, they will be. They will be. Like I said, they've, they've got plans to do the whole Brazilian thing as well. So they 100% will be. Awesome to hear. That's really, really cool. And, yeah, I... I don't want to get too much into other people's details. We got tournaments from this and that people, this, <laughs> these and those people. Uh, so it's going to be fun. But right now, Inferno's the Inferno's, Inferno's the here, one. and we're here to stay. We ready to yeah, go? But how many? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're they're just sending the code. So Leo's sending the code, and it should be good. All right. 
awesome. I think we're good to go, man. This has been so much fun. Thank you guys for being a part of it. And thank this you, viewer, for being a part of it. This is so awesome to see 63 people here. Let's right, let's, let's go, go, boys. Yeah, I'm so fried. Let's right, go. Let's, go. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So warp wave, that seems obvious. Yo, Martini, what are you what are your thoughts, man? Now that you've seen some of the, the new comps, the new new things. Do you think the patch did what it, what was intended? Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty happy with it, actually. Um, yeah. It was never the intent to destroy comps from existence. So I think it's cool that even after the nerfs, like they're obviously weaker, but we're still seeing uh, the same well-crafted uh, comps able to do well. But mm -hmm. some other contenders are sneaking their way in. So this is very much what I was hoping. I still think there's it's day one and there's probably some undiscovered stuff uh, mm. in terms of matchups and just maybe some comps that people aren't really trying as much. I expect over the next few days, we'll probably see it develop even a little further, but yeah, yeah, really happy with it. The main hope was not to upset the balance so much and turn it on its head such that, you know, the most powerful <laughs> comps before just are unplayable. And then all of a sudden, um, you know, attack damage, Adorius is like all of a sudden the best thing in the game. You know, you want to, so I'm actually very happy with it. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. And we'll see. We'll see some of the the meta develop in next week's Inferno as well. <laughs> yeah. But so Stormings and Leomain, uh starting with the same toxic opening, uh, with the Bulwark fight at the exact same opening. You can tell that they're teammates. You can tell they practice together. I'm. They might even have the exact same team. To be completely honest, so it's it might be a mirror match. <laughs> I need to check in on Soda to make sure he's still around. <laughs> yeah, I do Man's believe they played in grand finals. I think they played two mirror matches in their previous uh, game because they didn't want to show team comps. Now that we've seen both of them a lot more, we've seen them flip through different teams. I think uh, I would be surprised if we got a bunch of mirror matchups unless it was by chance. Mm. So this is a rematch, right? Uh, no. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what? Storming one two. Oh yes, it is. Yeah, Le no, Leo mean one two zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a matchup. Uh, this is a rematch. A rematch from uh, round three. Damn. Sorry, I always leave. Storming's coming up. Leave in between games to get water and stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. You get those fluids. Now Storming's Storming starting out big out here. So again, Storming's actually lost the previous uh, previous match with Leomain, but he's starting strong. So let's see if he can continue strong and, and finish this up pretty quickly. Emphasis on quickly. Let's hurry it up, boys. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. You, you, you said it, not me. <laughs> No, I, I actually am really enjoying this chat, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> For anybody, Jim Marino was on stream complaining about the tournament. Like, <laughs> come on, guys. Like, you know I love this. So one of them, yeah, Leo Main's going for the uh, Phosphorus to, to open up the Arcanite and Storming's with the Scariox. Yeah, interesting from Leo Main here. I'm assuming that he put in the uh, oh, Phosphorus because, oh yeah, that's rough. Oh, put in the Phosphorus, Phosphorus does so much damage with the Omega. Oh, yeah. Uh, that no, he can't win this, can he? How big's the Gauntlet? Oh, he can, he can, he wins. Oof. Yep. Wow. Oof. Now, what I think he did there was he saw that he was losing the constant mirror matchup, like placing the same thing over and over, and broke it up with the Phosphorus. Because if you can get a good um, angle on your Phosphorus Omega, mm. you can really chunk down that uh, Scoriox. And by the time you get through the back line, you get to the Scoriox, he has barely any health left. Yeah. Phosphorus is insane, man. The 
the if you like you said if you get the angle it's just so so efficient with the damage mm-hmm. that it puts out yeah look the way he has his uh bulwark set up this is intentional so the phosphorus wraps around past the cardalux and goes to the back line to auto attack them now i don't it's not always guaranteed to work and i i don't even remember if it worked the first time but that is very intentional placement uh it would work better if the if the bear wasn't there we all wasn't there so he's doubling down yeah. with the magma right now tripling down tripling apparently. down on the magma yeah curious to see what the plan is here I don't even think Storm so knows what's the plan. So he's just okay. Fascinating. That's a lot of grit and resolve in one spot. Free magma, and there's there's four things on the board casting it. Does the grit and resolve only affect? It affects the units everyone. when they're in the magma. Yeah. When they have to be standing on the magma, but it doesn't just affect magma units. Oh, really? So it's anyone on the magma on your team? Yeah. Is that accurate, Martini? Yep, all your teammates get affected by it. And it stacks too. Whoa, so I did four, not know that. Four pulls applies four times. Wow, I didn't know that. I thought it only affected the, the magma units. No. No, no, no. It affects all your team. I think it's wow, the only okay. comp I think it's the only composite synergy that benefits um the team. The team in that way. Besides something like Harbinger. Verdant oh, can uh, heal teammates with the AoE heal. Mm, true. There's, there's some other stuff. Yeah, there's not wow, many. There's not many of them. Mystic applies shield to your whole team. Enchanter applies shield <laughs> to your whole team. There, there's a few of them out there. <laughs> Martin just casually dropping the facts. <laughs> Revenant applies shield in an AoE. A lot of people. All right, all right. There's more. There's more than just magma. We get it, Martin. A lot of people are going to say, well, "What the hell is Revenant?" <laughs> and that's a great question. I don't know. It's some. It's in there somewhere. <laughs> I couldn't tell you, it's not Arcanite, so I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, it will. It would be cool to start seeing things like uh, Enchanter, Revenant, get their, their time in the in the spotlight. I saw someone try to play um, Enchanter Tempest with 7 air. It, it worked okay, um, and this was before air got nerfed, so... Yep, so that's an obvious slowdown. Oof. Just to make sure that it happens, I guess. Interesting decision there. Oh, and it's got both of them. But the phosphorus is just going to run away. Yep. Oh, that, that charm. Oh, yeah. The Lulura is so disruptive here. Always disruptive. So Skarx now has free reign. The angle isn't great on Leomain's. Why is that Ripterus not dead? <laughs> He's built different. He's built different. Yeah. Oh, f- oh, yeah. Nope. That's GG's. Oof. Damn. Can we get a replay on that? It's your- and can we get a replay on that? <laughs> crazy so what actually happened there so it was the uh yo that ripped through so what happened was the, the this time the phosphorus went around too much so it doesn't have the angle on its omega so yeah it would have died even faster if it did by the way all right so he's now going to start playing playing the augments for on his hyper carry it's too light this is standard attack speed there's like your damage as soon as he gives Indomitable to Lalura, over. Yeah, I think Indomitable on the on the Scorpion is is good, but he didn't do it. Less energy. Oh, <coughs> he has one mastery oh, point left. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he tried. <laughs> he really did. You don't actually want your phosphorus getting distracted by Lalura. That's his current plan, but it just doesn't work. And it runs off anyways. Yeah. It's just wasted time. Oh, this is looking all right for, for Stormings, though. Nah. Yeah, this is a lot different. 
Yeah, this is looking a lot better for Stormings. You have both the Phosphorus and the Skyrox targeting his... His Phosphorus is hyper, though, so it's like super... Uh... Yeah. Oh, hyper man. Phosphorus is no joke. This thing is... A... This is used to be you ridiculous. Wow. That's a hyper yep. diff right there. That's sure, yeah. Is. You're damn right about that one. <laughs> it was going to get Indomitable, too. It had the Indomitable thing on it. Even if they got it to zero, That's it wouldn't it? have mattered. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Can we get a replay on that? <laughs> yeah, Hyper was just insane on that one. So he got Hyper in about Yeah, look at that Hyper. And it's, it's just a Hyper diff, like uh, Martini yeah. said. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's he gets nuts. so much attack speed, and then his Scoriax even got hyper at the end there. Yep. Oh, and he's got that resistance as well. So he's got that re resist just stacking on it as well. Yeah, nuts. What's that first augment that's got on the um, the opposing phosphorus? Which one? They both have it. Yeah, that's the stacking. Uh, it's the, you, the stacking you can either resistance. get you can either get stacking resistances or HP regen. Oh, most people. Oh. Tend, that's why I most didn't people use it. Most people yeah, use yeah, it for resistances. Uh, interesting. Stormings phosphorus is in a very interesting position. You got lucky. Wow. The 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 right, it's got uh, the right Lura angle. Get yeah, this Lula uh, hitting Stormings backline though here with the double siphon matrix is yeah really an issue for Storming here. Yep, yep, yep. And that's I mean, game. Is... It got up to Omegas. Like, that was huge. And it, it pretty much 1v1 Scoriax. Wow. Yeah. yeah. The the Siphon Matrix there was a, was a good play. One more so replay. Thank you. Uh, so, match one to, to Leo. Leo main. Yep. He's just taking a, a quick bathroom break and he'll be back. But we're almost done, guys. Almost done. So Leo with a 1-0. What do you guys think? Do you think they're going to run back the uh, the mirror match? Or do you think we're going to see some changes? Hmm. I have no idea. I'd like to see him shake it up. I would, I too. Think I think for – I'm not sure what they're going to do. But as a viewer, I would love to see just something random here. Just something we, <laughs> we haven't seen. But if it has to be something we have seen, def definitely change it up. You know what I mean? Like, mm. especially if you're storming, this is storming's game to change up. I think. Yeah. Especially because he's he's lost three times in a row with this exact matchup. He has to change something. He can't. It seems like he can't beat Leo with this uh, mirror match. Yeah. But what was the? It was it was a two zero right? Previously. Yeah, so he's currently three and zero against him with this exact setup. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like he needs to throw hell mary out here. Yeah, anything. I agree. Yeah, anything. And he tried that. He tried this uh, setup, and then I don't think the other one was a mirror, but he used the three fire and Furiox that he was uh, showing. But I, I think even that is not enough. It's pretty much the same exact build. So yeah, I I, I want to see something new out of storming, even like an empath. Like I would even be okay. even an empath is like yo, this is how you know what's bad. It's like yo, even if it's an empath, yeah, way desperate cool times, desperate times, <laughs> desperate measures, brother. Let's see what you got. Let's see what you can do. But it's gonna be interesting. So if Leo does take this, it is gonna be a rematch with uh, Leo Soto. So Leo Soto was a two-one in the finals. Uh, if he does come back, it's gonna be uh, a run back on that. But in the grand finals, and with that, for Leo to win, he's gonna need to beat. Soda in two sets, uh, which is we're really testing endurance now. If Leo's playing all of these matches now with Storming and then having to run it back with someone who beat him and doing it two, in two sets, that's yeah, we're really testing them now. Forget about their endurance, what about my endurance? No one cares, shut up. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, honestly, shout, big shout out. I keep saying it, but big shout out to Scoriax, bro. Without him, the production would not be oh, even close to what it is. Without him pulling through all sick, we would not have this tournament. We wouldn't be entertaining over 50 people right now. You know what I yeah. mean? So big shout out to Scoriax. W Scoriax for life, for sure. W Scoriax for life, yeah. But yeah, dude, 50 people the, the entire time is, yeah, man, props. 
props. At some point, I'd, I'd round it up to like, sixty personally, but yeah. Oh. We got this. All right, cool. <clears throat> Definitely when we get to the finals, though, I need everybody, absolutely everyone in chat to be sharing the same grand finals is on doing that thing. We've got to make it a thing. Yo, how, Esch, what is this? Esch, I, uh, giving Leo his flowers on that uh, Arcanite build said, I lost the Scoriax mirror to Leo as well. He's very good at it. I mean, yeah, the dude, he seems like probably one of the best in the world at it. Yeah. Like, like I said, I think Leo, if I'm not mistaken, man, I'm pretty sure. Let me check. But pretty sure Leo is a a TFT guy. Yeah, don't him and Storming play together in TFT? Mm. Or they they don't play together, but they're in the same circle. I could be wrong on that. But yeah, all right. Don't resort so, to empath, Taylor says. <laughs> don't, don't resort to empath. <laughs> yeah, man. Actually, yo, Martini, have you been testing out any of the new characters that haven't yet been been brought into the game yet or been shown to the public? The mammoth, the I mean, the drop bear, things like that. Uh, what can you share? What can you share? <laughs> a while back, I did a bit of testing with drop bear, uh, but that's the only one. Drop and, and what are your what are your thoughts on that? Like just in general. I'm leaving it open. Just your your thoughts. Uh I mean I think it's cool. Like uh <laughs> it's actually we're seeing a lot of blaze and I, right? So uh dropper is actually another wildfire, so it doesn't really mm. fit into the empath build necessarily, but maybe we could see some different kinds of wildfire setups that aren't revolving around empath. Um yeah, but then you and then he's a predator, which is actually really cool because right now the only predator we have is Gorilla. So once right. he comes in, yeah. you know, maybe we get some more predator options. Um, yeah. Definitely with the new levels coming in, it's going to be all of the composites that just become way more playable. Right? Yeah. Going to get another dust unit, another harbinger unit, another tempest. What's the what, what's the composite for the the mammoth? Oh, that's a tempest a harbinger. Oh, tempest oh. harbinger. Cool. See, that's yeah. fascinating. A tempest harbinger is fascinating as hell. We got I a think that's Harbinger. Be... We got a Shock Revenant, mm. Dust Enchanter. I mean, yeah, it opens up. Opens the only up one that doesn't feel as interesting to me because it doesn't open up new doors is we have another Inferno Phantom unit coming. Um, Do we know yeah. what the it moth, is? The moth. Yeah, the moth. <laughs> oh, the moth. Inferno yeah. Phantom. And that actually is the just, exact same. It's exactly the same as Ramfire. Yeah, so uh, I wonder wow. what comp that fits into. That seems a little yeah. strong. Especially, <laughs> especially with what the moth does. It just carpet bombs everything. So it's literally a, the whole board is on fire. Yeah. It's on what, fire from Inferno and then the Omega is just like... What, what tier is what tier is uh, the, the Poodle Moth? I believe it's tier three. Tier three. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. It's too good. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so I just got confirmation. So Leo is a Hearthstone guy, not a TFT guy. So he, okay. he's made the most money um, playing Hearthstone. Yeah. And I'm seeing some back and forth now. I think Storming is going to want to run it back. Um, he's heard us saying that he's lost the, the mirror match 3-0. And he Jeez. has um, a chip on, chip on his shoulder. And I think he wants to, to prove something. So I don't know if it is going to be a mirror match, but... I respect we'll that. See. I respect <laughs> that. Let them know, Storming, bro. Let me know. I would love to be proven wrong. I, dude, that is some Chad shit right there. <laughs> Big respect to Storming on that. But if you yeah. lose, I mean, I told you. Apparently, so. I, this is some. I'm, I'm sharing some some uh, back end knowledge now. So apparently, it was actually Storming who taught Leo how to play this this team, this comp anyway. Ooh. So now he's getting schooled. Yeah, the, yeah. The, I don't want to now become becomes master. master. Yeah, he yes. becomes master type. <laughs> yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. It's like when crazy, you, crazy. you grow up to be old enough to beat up your dad, but your dad still wants to... Bro, what? <laughs> what <the hell laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no. I'm tired. I'm sorry. I'm losing my mind. It's funny. I'm saying that smiling, but I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> you know, like not like you're actually fighting your dad, but you know. No, but it's like something changes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yes. For sure. <laughs> All that right. Came cool. out so weird. Here yeah, they are. we're into the game. They're in. They're in. They're in. Let's bring it up. <laughs> Man. Yo, scraping the bottom of the barrel for commentary okay. right there. <laughs> All right. So for first step here, what what teams do we have? 
Yeah, we did miss out on the teams, but let's have a look real quick. So it looks like it's the same. No, uh, is out, he the, the Fury yeah, he pulls out the the, the Bulwark Fury Ox one with the yeah. with the water fire. So you so did run it change. back. So even if you win, you you know. Yeah, you did run it back. Yeah. So this is yeah, this is different than the uh, air toxic one. This is the. I'd say lower to the ground, cheaper bulwark units, and then the Fury Ox to try to get the damage out of there earlier. Maybe mm -hmm. doesn't scale as well late, but uh, we've seen success with this in the tournament from other players as well. So, yeah, I'm gonna assume Leomain is playing the same team again, but I don't know for sure. Maybe he switched it up. Yeah, keen to see what Le it looks like. Leo readied up pretty quick, so he might have just done the the Ranger move. Nope, the exact same, <laughs> exact same okay. positioning. Okay, well, so he's playing too toxic, so we're pretty sure this is going to be the same same Arcanite setup then. So we do have Arcanite v Arcanite, but the two different two different versions of it. Yeah, which I think will be cool. At least there's, there's a variation on this right now. Yeah, we've seen in the in uh, previous games that in these early rounds, the Toxic uh, generally has a it's bit just... of an edge over the Bulwark units. Yeah. And this is just waiting for the Ranger to go down. <laughs> Part of me does wish the Ranger was a little bit stronger, just like in its base form. Martini? <laughs> Agree to disagree. Next topic. <laughs> <laughs> so about my dad. <laughs> Wait a oh my god. No, I'm just... Don't make this dark. There's a six bulwark. He already had five. I don't know why. You... Yeah, he really bulwark. loves running six bulwark on this round. Six doesn't... bulwark, three fire, three water. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a pretty pretty solid board. It's a little bit lacking in DPS, right? It doesn't really have any damage dealers. Most of your damage is probably just coming from the fire synergy at this point. Yo, huge shout out to the Brazilian players, though, man. No matter what the result is, we are gonna have a Brazilian in the in the finals. Which oh is, yeah, I'm to Brazil. Yeah. huge props to yeah. them. Yeah. Should I love to see uh, it, bro. Maybe Luffy can fly us out to see. Brazil and we can hold a local land tournament. <laughs> <laughs> so this I'm scorpion right. being the I'm first one to die on the main side is a is a bit rough. Um, yeah, you'd really, you'd really rather have the bulwarks taking the initial aggro, not your highest damage, highest damage unit. I think the idea is that, that the bull the bull taunts him away from the scorpion, but it would just take too long. Yeah, I think Ooh, the bull's that still gonna hyper take it though. Oof, that hyper just keeping him alive. That little that little <laughs> bit extra damage. The hyper game boys, the hyper matters. Yeah. Hyper matters. Yeah, big big difference from um, PB two survival to PVP with with what what Thank hyper God. actually does. Yeah, hyper and PB two was pretty much like worthless. It's nice to see it actually affecting the game again. Mm. Yeah, definitely a big impact on the game, and it's not even in its final form. You know, we're we're already working on designs for updating it a bit. To make oh, it yeah. even potentially more interesting. I so, mean, you can tell me about that off off, off stream, yeah, Martini. <laughs> coming, coming soon to an alluvium near you. We should make it like a Super yeah. Mario star. If they get hyper, they're invincible for the rest of the game. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, let's do that. And let's just uh, pay for the copyright of the sound as well. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> wild. Hmm. Okay, so, so we got the... early bloom out there. Oh. The angles for both teams are pretty solid here. So Storming actually goes into bloom, but doesn't doesn't yet go Arcanite. He actually keeps the fire shield and keeps his six bulwark, three fire, mm. three water setup from the previous round and just adds two bloom. Whereas Leomane put in bloom Arcanite. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I've I've found that you can't add 
can't add your Phosphorus or Scoriox without adding Arcanine at the same time. Arcanine's just... I don't know, it feels like 50% of the, the effectiveness of those units. Okay. So that was a, a dead... Dead augment round, yeah? No one got anything? <laughs> nope. So switching up now, this is where we go into the Magma Arcanite. Oh, Blue Arcanite. Switch up. Blue Arcanite. I'm curious why Storming didn't go Blue Arcanite last turn. He didn't have to keep the shield on. He could have just... It just might have been a mistake. Yeah, it might have been. been. I think he wanted the extra damage, but maybe didn't calculate it properly. Because it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I mean, all he would have been losing was three fire, right? He he had five bulwarks already anyway. And so he'd be just dropping down from three fire, but he'd get a third bloom, which is no nothing to scoff at, and he'd be getting Arcanite active. And I, I think it would have been stronger like by quite a lot <laughs> from what he did. So he's put in the... Oh. Yep, the fiery ox. Is a good angle for the bird. Yeah, absolutely. It's hitting absolutely everyone. Oh, the taunt there. Yeah. Where's the also, damage yeah, coming yellow, from? Is the that yellow Thurion? bar next to Storming's uh, phosphorus? That is, is <laughs> we a, know what that means. That is a very, very good thing to have, as previously discussed. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> See, what, what Stormings is doing now is he, he's bringing the fight to Leo. And so you've got Fiery Ox just in the back, ch like chilling out, not taking any damage at all, just free reign on, on, on firing away. That's true. But this round, uh, Leo gets to put in his Scoriox. Mm. And even if he loses this next round, he gets to put in Scoriox plus the augments on top of it. Yeah. So, But in... To be fair, as I said, with the augments, Storming now has augments on his carry. So already, uh, yeah. And I don't think Leo's going to be able to afford augments, so he might lose this round and then win the next few unless uh, Storming has some good placement, which is that definitely Lulura went straight for it. Is it going to very different augment off? setups here? So on Storming side, he played Both. three augments on his carries to increase their damage output, and Leo Main, Leo Main went for pure utility like team augments. He didn't add any damage to his carries. Yeah. So two very different approaches to augmentation here. The Lulura did jump to the back, uh, reducing the attack speed for both Skyrox and the Phosphorus. Skyrox. As well as charming them as well. Is it enough? Like you said, it feels like it just doesn't scale up enough. This is... Oof. Wow. Yeah, it looks like the utility augments really paid off. Like... Yeah, the burst yeah, damage was, I think it was maybe a bit lower, but I'm surprised. Uh, kind of the whole team just held longer and was able to eventually overwhelm. I am very surprised. That's the on takedown. It increases uh, physical damage, correct? No. The augment that he just put on uh, Scar uh, Fireox. No. Yeah, yeah. Extra damage on takedown. It could be extra damage, or I think extra crit he, he, he chance. Chose, might be the he chose thing. extra damage. He chose extra oh, damage. Oh, right, right. Okay. Take down. Yeah. Yeah, so if the Furyox is splashing and hitting a lot of things, and any of that stuff dies, it's gonna it's gonna increase his damage. Surely Leo yeah. swaps sides here. You can't take God, that long twice. He's got double life steal on the Water Grocco who hitting both of the Arcanite carries. So this um, not gonna matter as much for the Furyox, but this this Terror Bird in the front line though is Ooh. gonna be life stealing quite a lot. It's gonna lose a lot of attack speed though from the Grocco. It's that hyper that's a problem. Things about to get it. Yeah, when it goes hyper and when it cleanses itself here on Omega, it's gonna go nuts. I think this terror bird is not gonna even come close to dying. This thing oh, is yeah. yeah. This thing is a beast right now. It's a bit of a hyper diff. Yeah. And you've got the fiery ox just again getting all of that that takedown bonuses as well. So he's just sitting in the back. I would love to see the damage, um, the damage output from from all the alluvials right now. Mm. 
235 mastery points. Is that right? Uh, they are on round seven, so... That seems plus, about right, yeah. It's plus 200. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you get to round seven, round eight plus in a game, uh, you basically have infinite mastery points to where you... You can equip all the augments you want. You can replace things with stronger units if you have them. You can move stuff around. Like you, you have so many points at this point in the game. What's he gonna do here? This really is end game at this point. All right. Well, let's see if Storming can snap his fingers and just eviscerate the entire galaxy, or if Leo <laughs> can come back. <laughs> uh, Leo has no way to stop the hyper on this. Terror bird. Yeah. And it's really causing him issues. Well, he just gave the Skoriox um, augments. Kind of a shock. Oof. Waited till so late, but. Oh, he just got the charm off as well. This isn't looking good for Leo. No, it's not. I agree. And he's got Hyper again. It's, we've talked about this in the first match Hyper Diff. Well, he's not yeah. hyper yet. He actually didn't. He actually didn't fill his bar. He's not actually hyper this time. Oh, yeah, Jimbo. This might be huge. It's now Scary. Oh no, again. he's nature. I didn't even. Oh, oh uh, wow! Oh, yeah. That's That's one Ranger, one. Ranger one. finished it off. The one. master becomes the student master. <laughs> I love to see it. The back and forth. You know, as we said, with Storming heard that we were saying. Oh, uh, Leo's the better Arcanite player. He's better than Storming. Storming can't win this matchup. He lost three times in a row. He said, nah, get that out of my face. I am going Not to today. play here again. I'm running it back, and I'm running this down. We are getting this dub, and he pulls it off. Very, mm. I, You know you love to see that from Storming, honestly. That's some Chad Dude, stuff. Right coming, coming back after three, losing 3-0, uh, coming back to to actually not just give up like this is disheartening. If you're playing against someone that you train with that you, you're constantly losing, you play in a tournament, you lose three zero. Like damn, like to come back big, big. Yeah, having the confidence, as you said, having the confidence to say I lost three times in a row, but I know those were flukes. I am the better player. I am the better player. Mm. That's honestly, if it was me and I was storming, that's a huge morale boost. And if I'm Leo, that kind of sucks. Yeah, you know what I yeah. mean? That does suck. <laughs> no, 100%. Because at this point now, like, again, I've been in these situations, losers finals. You beat the person twice already. You beat him once more and loses. And, you know, you're one game away, one game away. And then you lose it to someone you've already beaten. You start to second guess yourself. You start to say, Dan, what did I do wrong? And you start making mistakes if you're not actually on top of it. Th these are all the mind games that are going through right now. These are all the things that he has to deal with. And it's, yeah, it's not it's not easy. It's not easy. I'm yeah. keen to see if they they change teams. What are they going to do now? I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if Storming runs that right back. That would be <laughs> that that sounds like it would be something he would do, especially after that salty run back there, getting the dub. I don't know. I I, props I think they're both going to switch up. See that? I think they're both going to switch. I, up. I do too. I think they're going to switch up, but we'll we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude, I love that from Storming. Oh man, that's yeah. such a good storyline. Love you, Stormy. That's awesome, bro. This is sick. Good this for you, sick. big dog. <laughs> good for you, big dog. Gosh, that, that's those are the like epic moments <laughs> right. in let's esports go, that let's people go. think about. We're in it. That's awesome. Oh! And a change up, a change up for both of them. A oh up no, of he called it. He oh! called it. Oh, goes oh! Storm has rogue rampire. Storm goes rogues. No way! So unlucky, dude. So, what do I do here, game. guys? Do I just do I just update the results? What am I doing? Do we watch this yeah, out? Let's do like, it. What do we do? <laughs> unlucky, <laughs> Leo. I don't There's know, a bro. Sliver of hope. You should have played oh, that Arcanite build again, bro. Nuts. See, if I was Leo, I would have <laughs> played that Arcanite build again. But man, calls him on the rock paper scissors movement. Let's see if Leo can figure out how to win this matchup and be the first person to beat the rogue deck with the empaths. <laughs> I'm not trying to flame. I'm just, you know, I'm being honest. This is tough. tough. Yeah, yeah. What you really have to do is preserve health for as long as possible. 
Yeah, this is that's definitely not happening this round for sure. <laughs> Might not happen any rounds. I think the only way you even have a chance is staggering between the Ramfire cast and the Gauntlet, and that's that in itself is hard to do. And even if you do that, it's still a hard win. This is uh, such a good counter to the Empath build, man. Three fire, like fighters, three air, ro- like it's such a good, good build. I, I beat Empaths the other day. I was just using seven fighter. You don't even need to do anything more yeah. than that. You just throw seven freaking 20 cost, 20 to 30 cost fighters on the board. You win the first yeah. three rounds for free. Insane. And then you just 100%. add phosphorus, which benefits from it. You can usually get it hyper pretty easy because I have both phosphorus in every deck now. Because Earth and Nature, just one or the other tends to hyper against pretty much any team. It's actually wild. Yeah. I think everyone's been doing that since the last tournament. Anyone that's been using Arcan, uh, using Phosphorus, I've seen have both of them in, in the team. Oh, it's so good. Let's see All if right. Leo can do any kind of predictions to stop this Ramfire from... I mean, what can <sighs> you do, man? Well, you can't stick everything in the much. corner. He's already stuffed. Martini, it. do you know? Uh, do you know who made this? Who came up with this counter? Was it Sjad that came? It was. Up with this it was Sjad. He used it in the last tournament. But I mean, he used it. Was it him that he made it though? Do we know that? Pretty sure. Um, At least Estra, close to. Either him or brought it in the the last Inferno tournament. Um, the first time I saw it, um, someone was playing it on uh, something very similar to this on ladder i think it was mm-hmm. um style yeah i actually i played him on ladder three times in a row and he was playing this yeah and um yes yeah, so i think he was the first one that i saw with this uh setup but you know i'm not 100 percent sure where it, where it originated from but yeah it's it's proven to be a very nice very nice empath counter yeah 100 percent Yo, uh, guys, I think in chat, you guys can start sharing and say we have grand finals coming up, man. I think this is a wrap. <laughs> I mean, Let it's 1-1. One, one. Like we're going to finally the yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let people know in um, let people know in, in Discord and in, on socials that grand finals coming up. We want to get as much support for these guys as possible. These guys have been playing for like six hours. <laughs> No, I really like the 64 player thing, man. I think you guys killed it with this. Yeah. Immediate cast. Uh, yeah. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't think he can do anything here. Yeah, Esther says it wasn't him that came up with it. Sickos. Like, he's so ashamed of using this team. I love it. No, he's saying sickos about you guys streaming for 12 hours. Why would that be stickers? Yo, is that Jim Jimbo? Is that you breathing, man? <laughs> um, no, my mic's muted. <laughs> I think Ooh. that's Coriax because his can, nose is stuffed up. I can hear it too. All oh, right, I can hear it too. I wouldn't be able to hear it if it was me. I can hear the someone's whistling. Just breathing yeah. mad. Right. Yeah, someone's just breathing mad. Oh, the ramp fire! Oh my god, that's wild. Yeah, I think the uh, the Ramfire round cast four. didn't crit, is what I saw. It looked like it barely did any damage at all. And and to be fair, this happens a lot where, and I'm not even joking, we've seen this multiple times, even in this tournament, twice before, I think. The round four, usually you lose. Yeah. Cause you, and now he has the 70 cost. That's a really bad idea. Is it? Yeah, you want to put the 70 cost... Uh, weapon on your ranger not i i think it's fine man (laughs) okay (laughs) what do you think martini he's going uh all in on energy right trying to get his uh, units to cast as much as possible yeah we always say this on turn five um i'm telling you this is not what they play on turn five you go 70 cost gauntlet so you can omega at the same time you need uh the thing is, the impasse just gets stronger defensively, and all you're really doing here is making your ramfire cast a little, little bit easier. But 
I your rain fighter does damage. damage. Like your rain ranger right. to do damage. The big, the big exactly. difference. Oh. I think, he in my round. I think he wins again. Now, the big it's difference with the energy gain is do... actually Ram Fee. Uh, Ram Fee gets to cast a lot faster when you give the team energy gain. Yeah, but it's... Yeah, that's fair. I don't know if it's enough, though. Oh, Yo. Let's find out. He's not hyper. Crazy. Yep. See, I told you guys. You oh have to have the gauntlet. The... Is he going to lose? No, the, you, can, you can't. You can't. Unlosable matchup. <laughs> he could lose one more round and still win. All you have to do is put the gauntlet on there, and you you win no matter what. It's impossible to lose. If he, dude, please, if he does this again, dude. I'm gonna lose my shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think that was a bit of an oversight. I don't think he meant to do that. I'll He's be real. given too many mastery. <laughs> this is hilarious. He I, think, I, I, don't, I don't think he meant to not upgrade his gun last, last game. I think I he was I given too many mastery good. points. He's no, definitely scored. spent too much. He had a ton there, didn't he? He had like over 200. Well, he spent 110 between the gauntlet and the suit. And he's attached he's like five like augments. Five augments. That would be oh. really sad. That would be depressing. That would be super sad. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think he wins the next round regardless. I don't think this kills him, so it should be fine. 180 mastery. This We've round, seen right? a lot less of this bug, but it sucks that it's still there. Uh, well, if it's I don't there, I know if wrong. it was actually bugged this round, but it did look like he had a lot of mastery points there. But Unless he had a lot unspent last round, but I don't think he did. Yeah, maybe, yeah, he's, maybe spent, he's fine. He pretty much spent it all. Looks all good. He must have had a decent amount unspent last round. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. All right. He definitely spent more than Boom. you would have expected. Ranger just deleted two units from existence. You're right, Jimbo. We're going to... It, it might was might Ranger. Yeah. Uh, no, it's good. Uh, well... Yeah. Yeah, well. see, I told you guys. I know this matchup by heart. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone comes across oh, Jimbo and Lada... See, the first thing Estra said in chat was gun diff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Okay. GG. So storming. Taking back the crown from Look how fast Leo. Cast off now the bat, we are man. going to the finals. Wow. Grand finals. Yeah. Yeah, impressive. Impress I don't think we've seen a series, to my knowledge, where they lost the first game and then the other player won the next two. On top of that, Storming hadn't beat him at all in four straight games and still had the confidence to come in and play intelligently, not get nervous, not be uh, too drained from how long the tournament was. I think this is a way more impressive win than the viewers might think. Big win from Storming, big moral victory. He's going right. to feel very confident going into this next match in the grand finals. Yeah. Oof. Yo, I'm just throwing the idea to them if they want to do it a best of three or best of five. Like I said, I'm going to leave it up to them to decide this one. Yo, by the way, is my camera really, really bad right now? It seems Wait, okay, weird right? for a second. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. I, I want Soda on stream. Things. It's storming stream. All right. Uh, how are we I doing? Week. Are we excited? You want Soda? Yeah, because storming stream was a little bit laggy so i'm hoping so okay. is better but i'm taking a risk here okay cool so just cool, cool, cool. i'll bring uh are you bringing soda on <clears throat> i sent in the link okay cool 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 Have so you, you can kick storming out yeah ones, I guess. i'm waiting for soda just in case. all right well sodas i'm in how we feel in chat let's see some stuff in chat how we doing Yo. who are we expecting to win how we feeling about the tournament what kind of comps are we looking to see in the grand finals? Yep. We Who do you guys Martini. think is going to win? Yeah. Martini's back. I'm back. Martini's back. Just in time. I okay. think there, we have... there... As far as who I think wins, I think so there's like a there's this weird losers buff 
where <laughs> someone who gets into the losers bracket they get to play a ton of games so they get a ton of experience while yeah the people in winners Just... don't have as much practice because they're not playing in those games so i think storming has the buff right now because um he's kind of focused he's in the zone and i think soda possibly this is just all hypothetical soda could possibly be a little bit out of it not in the mm-hmm. zone where he's like been playing over and over so i give the slight mental edge to storming but i think soda could take it awesome yo scarlet i move storming out of this this chat yeah, no, looks like looks like storming's was was better so does okay then move not then move sodas out yeah <laughs> then move sodas out cool awesome they're about to start guys again social media discord grand finals it's happening they've agreed to a best of three let's do it guys storming representing uh representing all of brazil soda soda is hype right yeah soda yep. representing hype guild this is their first uh Final, yeah, finals if i'm not mistaken final representation in um yep. in pvp so should be good well it'll be the it'll be the first uh first alluvium tournament without an xborg victor mm. True. damn xborg falling and off w- after one week now and without a smart <laughs> and without a smart ass <laughs> victor this guy <laughs> <laughs> all right we're starting we're all jumping right. in cool let's do it let's do it let's do it Okay, so Soda right. has the, the Arcanite build with the three fire. So he's got the Fury Axe instead of having Magma with Seer Singe and Scoriax. Just in case you guys missed that. And do we know what uh, Storming is playing? I do not. I did not check. I'd imagine the, the same thing then. All right, so again, to remind... Oh, yep, playing the same thing. Uh, with the fire rocks. All right, yep. so everyone, to to remind you guys, for Storming to win this, he's going to need to win two sets. So two best of threes. Ooh, opening three, Bulwark. <coughs> What's Soda playing? Uh, Soda's playing the same thing. Similar. <laughs> what do you? What are your thoughts on the Caribou, uh opposed to the to the Atlas? I prefer the Caribou. I think the Taunt is just gives that that little extra thing that you need. But well, what what do you guys think, Atlas or or Car- uh, Atlas or Car- Caribou? Mm, I think it depends. It depends on how you're using them. The taunt, the taunt is yeah. pretty big, but the Atlas, the Atlas mm-hmm. Shield, I think, does do damage to its opponent, or maybe it doesn't. It's only Axon and Axon. It, uh, no, Atlas does as well, it but does. it's only if it's only if it has <coughs> the shield at the end of the time. So, if someone wipes through the shield, there's no damage that gets done. If I'm not mistaken, that's not how it works with Axon. I've definitely seen people break it and then do the damage. M- Martini clarification. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I believe the damage is if the shield expires on time yeah. and then it explodes if the shield gets removed before the time ends. doesn't do damage. No damage. Exactly. Um, but I also believe Atlas is purely defensive shield and you only start getting damage from Axon upward. Oh, really? Yeah, that's how it was in the survival mode. I just don't know if they changed it. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, but yeah, on the Atlas Caribou discussion, I mean, Atlas is a bit tankier because of the shield. Caribou does a, uh, you know, it's more hard. damage. Has more it always been like that? The, or did it change in PB two? Because I could have swore Atlas did damage. Yeah, 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 I never knew that. It's it's, it's like a Berenstain Berenstein universe kind of moment. Yeah, it, <laughs> um, it, I've it always found a little weird. bit of damage. I I would need to double check the the scaling goes up quite a lot on the Axon and Axodon because they gain the Scion trait, that, so they just they do more damage. Yeah, I don't think uh, the that Atlas does damage though. I have to double check. Dude, yeah. quick shout out to the little flares auto attacks. They look so smooth and sick. Like whoever made those mm. are, is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I've always found because I remember reading it ages ago that the Atlas doesn't do damage, and I always found it really unusual because not many other lines do that. For example, um, by the same logic, I would expect Caribou to not have thorns, 
and instead just taunt. You know what I mean? Like, so there's like a progression with the abilities, but I, I like that it has thorns, and I'd rather Atlas of Shield do damage if it doesn't. I just, it always, it yeah, always okay. So I just, me. I just looked it up. So, um, Atlas does a little bit of damage. It's only uh, based on, um, it scales off of his max health. And then mm -hmm. when you get Axodon and Axon, they uh, gain an additional like flat component of scaling. So they actually, they do all, they all do damage. Um, Axon and Axodon just do a lot more. Yeah. That, that actually, I remember that now. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah Alice does 10% of his max health times Omega power. So if he just has base 100 Omega power and he has say 1200 health then his shield popping might do like 120 damage or 100 damage. Mm. Uh, but with um, Axon, it gets an extra Oof. 150 added to that scaling and a higher percent HP threshold. And uh, Axon gets 250 plus even even more percent HP. So the it scales up quite a lot uh, in the damage component. So Stormings had the, the better Lalura placement here. He also got some good Omegas off from his uh, Phosphorus. Mm. Oh, I got dragged back. Look at that. You yeah, hate to see it. Is, that little lure placement was just so much better. Got way more value out of it than than Soda did. Here's some good Omegas coming from the Phosphorus. If the range is just keeping the, the little lure busy. Yo, is this really... He's got the health now. Wow. Yeah, he's still gonna take it. Wow. With the unit advantage. As one yeah. more was enough to pull him through. Yeah, well that those bloom I, bloom is one of the best things for overload because it's based so much on max health and bloom gains max health over time. Man, storming's coming out here. The damage reduced by 35. I think that's yeah, it makes sense, and no one's gonna get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of these uh picking augment phase phases is gonna be let's just some people are gonna say let's just even it out so no one gets anything so mm. because I can outplay you without needing this or that. I would love to see some changes with the with the bidding because right now it does seem a bit too obvious as, as to what's gonna happen. I think a little bit more variety there would be really, really good to see. I think even five augments on the board would be quite interesting. It's funny you say that because it's something that I suggested. Or maybe I forget if Martini suggested it. Or it's, it's feedback that was shared with us. Hmm. I think the chips, the, the, um, the synergy chips are so much fun. I would like to see like three of the slots always be synergy chips and you have two other slots. Okay, that's a bit crazy. Because there's nothing more <laughs> satisfying than like giving like a Furyox air, you know, like that sort of stuff is so much fun to me. <laughs> okay. Interesting example for the most yeah. satisfying. I know. I yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Never... It's like what? It's still, I, the I, least I, interesting one possible, but okay. <laughs> I still maintain my Bulwark Phosphorus was the best game I ever had. It was so much fun. Yeah, Bulwark Phosphorus would be nice. Yeah, I mean, the legendary augments, um, like the base system is there. I think it's it, it has the potential to be interesting. It could use a little bit of work. So this is like we're going to work, oh, yeah. work on improving that. Improving this that is system. hilarious. Yeah. Oh, and they, they both aggroed onto the Furyox first, which gave uh, Soda the advantage, or Storming the advantage. Oof. Yeah, yep. I mean, the, this is neck and neck right now. <laughs> Oh my god. What do we even, what do we even say about these mirrors? That's uh, a literal mirror. The bulwarks yeah, are uh, butting heads in the middle of the board. The uh, snakes <laughs> are shooting towards the yeah. middle of the board. And this the is terror like... birds are running around with very long legs. <laughs> this is like an exact, exact mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I do hope we see some variety in the next couple of matches. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Soda pulls out anything different. I don't. He only played this team and maybe an empath, right? I think he played something else, right? I can't. Oh, it's we'll been see. so long. 
Yeah, but we know remember, Stormings has a couple. This in Empath, yeah. We know Stormings has a couple. The only main difference I see between these two right now is that Storming has a nature gauntlet, and Soda has an earth one, which means mm-hmm. if they're bonding with their Firioc, or not their Firioc, sorry, their, um, their Terror Birds, their Phosphorus, um, those probably have opposite dominant affinities. Yeah, yeah Storming also built tankier on his uh, Phosphorus compared to Soda, who went damage. Yeah. Hmm. Is that correct? Am I looking at those augments right? Yeah, mm. he's got the cleanse. They they both have they both have the one offensive augment, the omnigenic modulator, and then off oh. and then one defensive augment. But storming has the scaling defenses. I thought that was pure attack damage on Soda. What was that other one? That was the um, the cleanse, the cleanse and immune. Ah, okay. okay. So utility defensive augment. Utility versus like the the HP regen, right? It's either regen or <clears throat> uh, stacking resistances. I'm not sure which uh, selection he chose. That's healing way too much. Like, look at this. Look at this <laughs> very last attack from Phosphorus. Seriously, look at this. I think that was the bloom. They're the very last. Yeah, one, the very last it, one. it was health regen plus bloom, so he's getting like extra health regen on there. Look at that. Well, his life steal as well. He doubled it. Life steal from the. Is that lifesteal from Vampiric? No, yeah, no, he's is. got two Omnis. Yep. Is it Vampiric? No, Omnis, yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah. But he, like, doubled his health on that last hit against some, like, 10 health ranger. I have no idea what happened there, but it, it's calculating... I don't know. That that looked really weird to me, just visually. Mm-hmm. I wonder yeah, if... Yeah, that very was... last Omega gave him a ton of health back, yeah. And the ranger I had, mean, like, 100 Omega health is... left. So is it calculating it off the damage he oh. did or the damage he would have done? You know what I mean? Yeah, it might it might have calculated the overkill damage as well for the lifesteal. But yeah, it was a pretty big jump right at the end there. All right. Let's see what they do. <laughs> Indomitable in the front line. Yeah, they just doing the same thing. Indomitable. Yeah, oh we God. got um, double siphon matrix on both of the Lulara's hitting the back line. They're just in mirrored positions. Uh, but only one of the Cypher Matrixes reached, and I doubt that would have reached the Viriox the Storm. My god, the Lulu's going to take out Viriox on its own. That's wild. I think Phosphorus helped, actually. So it looks like Stormings is going to take this one. Hmm. Yep, super close, though. Yeah, it does look like he's scaling a little bit better. Ends on this turn, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's that Phosphorus. He's just way more tankier than Soda's, Oof. and they can't get through it. He's got the angle, too. Phosphorus yep. is hitting Furiox, which you cannot let it do. E- even if it doesn't, I still think he takes that. I just think um, the build on Soda's Phosphorus is not as optimal. All right, so he's making some, some changes now with the placement of the little lore. Is he? <laughs> Soda needs to move his little lore off to the right and catch Furyox. Not sure how much of a difference it makes, though. All right, keen to see if that movement <laughs> does anything at all. I have my fingers crossed that we won't see. Oh my god, he knew exactly what, what was going to happen. What is this? Oh my god, he still caught it. That's wild. Yeah, that's a great prediction. Is that a big gauntlet yeah, on Sansa? Well, it looks like it. Looks like it. The big gauntlet might be enough. Mm. Ooh, Storming's Ranger down. Yeah, this Soda's is not Ranger is clapping. The big gauntlet's going on Furyox. Oh, big Oof. hit! Oh man! Wait, so Yo. this is a 
this is a big change. We got a up. game. We still got a game. Uh, do we? It's gonna be a. But I mean, look this. Boom! Big goalie. Oh, it's terrible. Sure. That is so tanky. It's so tanky. Yeah. It's a little or one to one v one. Wait, after all that, it's regening more health than they're doing to it. That's wild. Yeah, it needs to go to overtime. So it takes it, but not as big of a hit as we might have thought. I think that was the Aluvatar buff. You get 5% extra damage if you're using Aluvatar. Mm. Uh, we have Team Liquid Seal coming up, so if you want that buff, you know. <laughs> oh, crap. Is that tomorrow? Or the day no, after? I think it's no, it's in like three days. Right, 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 right. Okay, I'll have time to prep for that. All good. Yeah, I'm actually pretty excited for that, to be honest, man. <laughs> yeah, Team Liquid Aluvatar is code JIMBO5 for 5% off at checkout. You don't get 5% off, but... Is it a limited for 10, sale? For, for 10% off. No, but people should be using your code. <laughs> I, need, I need to make sure I reach out to all you guys. But yeah, absolutely use those codes. We seriously need Team Liquid Exiluvium merch. That's what I would get. Mm, I mean... <laughs> Look at Storming's uh, team here. He, he has... Nothing left. Like he's literally he's played everything. He has one augment left, and he's not putting uh, it on the blue because all it does is give him attack speed. <laughs> he should just do it anyway. <laughs> he shouldn't have moved anything, man. He had um he had sixty nine mastery points. That would have been the best thing if he won with just sixty nine mastery points left. <laughs> he just gave Caribou thirty attack speed because why not? Everything else is already used. He has literally nothing else to play now, so it's just position. So the Luru going at us? No. Switches augment. The Lulu slows uh, down the, the attack speed of Phosphorus. Where's the Ranger Gauntlet? I don't even know where that is. Yeah. Oh, it's hiding behind. Oof. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, does so that's going to go to... Yep, that's one big hit. Oh, is it enough? Yeah, I think it's got him. Okay, this looks like sort of going down. Yeah. So does that. And we're going to another series, boys. Let's go. What? <laughs> Pretty exciting that Revdis is up. We won't touch on it too much here, but it, it's it's just exciting. <laughs> Not financial right. advice. Crazy. I'm really hoping we see some changes in uh, in teams. Yeah, some as much as I would here. love to see another mirror match, for <laughs> it, it would just be really cool to see if someone has something in their back pocket that they want to pull out now. You know what I mean? Now is the time to do it. Some variety here would be incredible. Catch I will give you a hundred dollars if you don't play the same deck. <laughs> like, that's not true. That's, that's not true. I'm lying. I'm definitely lying. <laughs> you automatically win if you just don't play the same team. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, All right. So who who do we? You think Storming did get that buff? I I feel like he played that mirror matchup for the Arcanite so many times. He probably has one up on Soda here. <laughs> he's played it that many times? He really has. Uh, he's played it like 10 times today. Let's yeah. be real. So I think Soda has to change it up. So Soda, if you're listening, you know, you... <laughs> Help us out here. <laughs> Make our no. lives easier. No, no. If if you think that you have to do this or that to win, go for it. I'm just saying. If there's another mirror, he, he, I'm just I'm just saying he has a lot more uh, experience in this matchup than you. If there's another mirror, I'm not watching. <laughs> I'm gonna go get start getting my stuff ready and head out. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead serious too. He's not even joking. <laughs> Well, we're running on fumes here. <laughs> no, no, this has been a great tournament. All, we're all joking. Like we're still enjoying it. It's a fun right. time. There are. It is not okay. an arc. Okay, cool. It's a different. It's different. It's different. It is an Arcanite, but it's it's, Arcanite, it's a different but it's build. Different. He's oh. got Colossus, which we were okay. talking about this before stream. I thought we were going to be seeing a lot more Colossus, and we really haven't seen any. 
Oh. Oh damn, it's a big yeah. lineup. And Colossus is actually on the board, so. Wait, is this the build that Soda has Goliath instead of Titanor? I can't remember. He had a Titanor, I'm pretty sure. What? No, no, yeah. that was some. That was someone else. Okay, I was yeah, about I to say that that build bout made me lose my mind. Yeah, I thought that I was, was uh, fabled. That was fabled. Shout out fabled. Appreciate you for signing up. <laughs> okay, he only threw one on the Colossus. So he's gonna get three well, on Void Cleaver, yeah, yeah. For, no matter what, right? So Void Cleaver Catalyst was a big threat though because that does percent max HP as pure damage, and that's insane into the big Colossus units. So he was uh, he was scared of that. Okay, so Storming is playing this same team. Yeah. So we saw in those last games, they, they kind of ran out of stuff to play, which to mm -hmm. me, if that kind of situation happens again, it feels like the Colossus so setup wins. with the bigger units should scale better late. Yeah, 100%. The question is, is it worse through the mid game and do you even make it to that stage of the game? We'll have to see. Mm. Stay tuned to find out. And I think so. I think so. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. There's a lot, a lot yep. that Soda can do here. Yep. And he's got the double phosphorus as well. So he can pick and choose which um, base affinity is on the hyper carry so he can have the best chance possible of getting that phosphorus hyper. That's actually so huge. We've seen it multiple times where in this Arcanite mirror matchup, I mean, this isn't kind of a mirror matchup, but we've seen it so many times where one Phosphorus is just doing so much more because it has Hyper and the other one just sitting there auto-attacking without the 30% attack increase, attack speed increase. Yeah, and it gets this Toxic Colossus start, which um, has no trouble dispatching of these Bulwarks. Uh... So this is basically free damage for Soda at the beginning um, to get on Storming's drone health here. Assuming Storming just keeps putting out more small bulwarks that don't do any damage, yeah. uh, they're all just going to melt to the to the cow here. Yeah, I, I, think... I still think you should go out of book here and play some damage, like a Furyox or something. Um, these bulwarks aren't no. going to do anything. <laughs> Not only that, yeah. I've played this matchup multiple times. It's very easy to win this just with the Ranger and Phosphorus 3 Bulwark, get double Arc Knight Bulwark. You can win against this Colossus and Verdant. I mean, yeah, yeah, like the tanking it. He's he's trying to go against real tanks with like baby tanks. It's just Yeah, like, I don't think these Bulwarks are killing a single unit. Um, I yeah. think if he tried playing a Ferox, maybe he could have saved a little bit of HP and killed one thing. I, I don't know. Yeah, like he's just... They're just smacking their head against the brick wall right now. Three yeah. three of them. <laughs> like no chance. Yeah. The the toxic, the the thorns, like this is just Yeah, but if you set up three bulwark in the front and then you put a phosphorus slightly behind, you can take out one, possibly yeah. even all of them, depending on which uh which one the phosphorus gets on. Yeah, and the angle, the awesome. angle of the Omega too. Yeah, you you yeah. get a good angle, you get a good hyper. Like it's very doable. It's very winnable. It's one hundred percent winnable. Very much so. Or you chuckle a little. Looks like he is cancel the cost of the Arcalion. Yeah, that's how I play this matchup. Lura. So he's now going for the. What do you think? What do you think Soda's next play is right now? Is he going to keep building out with the tanks, or is he going to start putting some DPS on his needs, side as well? He needs some DPS, or it won't work. Yep. Boom. Furyox mm -hmm. right at the front is interesting. Oh, look at that. He welcomed the Laura with yeah. the... That's incredible. He predicted it well. Well, I mean, it was pretty obvious, but still. Yeah, but now it's going to just go on to this... Yeah, see what I mean? It's going to go on the Furyox, and then if it didn't, it would have walked up and still went on both of them, which would have been even worse. I think he's fine though. These tanks no, are he, holding, holding yeah, the he line. Is. Like these Colossus units are just so much bigger than these little Borgs. Yep. They might take out that one. Yep. They took out one unit. This is easy. Did they take out a unit? Yeah, they took out mm -hmm. Nal. Oh, right, right. Got Gnarled down. 
<laughs> yeah, now I'll okay, take it now. Well, but that's it. Strong it's first three round, round showing from Soda here. I wonder uh, if he was holding this in his bag, just hoping <laughs> hoping not to have to bring it out. But Oof. now that we got into the second second match here. He's like, all right, I gotta bring out the big guns. Bring out the Colossus. Yeah. You can't give Soda invulnerable, surely. Well, he doesn't need invulnerable. Invulnerable, he's already super tanky. Yeah, invulnerable doesn't. Need I know, to but it's so much fun. Yeah, he doesn't need invulnerable at all. With the taunt and everything, you can give it on the the bull, and you can do all the thorns damage while invulnerable. Oh, regardless, he's not going to go down anyway. <laughs> no, 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 it's a. A waste you got a lot more value out of these other ones they're not like the best but um yeah the invulnerable is just gonna do basically nothing here i think there's a play to be made putting phantom on the phosphorus you get the rypterus down then you can move on to fury mm. we are I don't seeing think, i don't think that works like long term but like it, it would for work one for round hard. for one yeah. round you could catch him off guard and hit him from behind but all of a sudden now they can just throw another tank in the back and deal with it yeah, I don't know if I like it long term. Depending on the angle that you get, it's still like it's not the greatest, but you could play around with it. I like the pure damage here a lot. It's good that he's putting it in now. Um, Colossus mm -hmm. units have really high resistances. Pure damage doesn't care. So, good way to get some damage output. Let's see if Soda Soda goes into Ar goes into Arcanite now. Yeah. I don't I like this frontline terror bird though. I wish she pulled him back a little bit. I guess the Colossus taunts, so it's not the end of the world. But yeah, you can see how much damage this uh, Foster. Yeah, look how much damage this is taking. Yeah, from the Fyriax yeah. though. Like, why? Why does that thing go in the front line? Like you have these Colossus units. I'm yeah, a huge crazy. misplay. Um, but this Fyriax with the pure damage doing doing work though for Storm. Yeah. Yeah, this should have been put on the Terror Bird earlier. If I was playing, I would have put it on him pretty much instantly, round three. Yeah. Why was that Phosphorus in the front line? Yeah, that's a what? massive, massive misplay. I think we're gonna uh, we're gonna see we're gonna see that change I, I immediately. Mean, no, there's no reason. See, invulnerable. If, if he wanted to get invulnerable, this would have been the the time to use it right on a phosphorus front line but still it makes no sense hmm. the phosphorus still did damage though considering it was on the front line <laughs> considering it gone down as quickly as it did it still did quite a bit of damage still preferring the more tanky phosphorus over just putting an omni vamp on him you went for the max health. Yeah, you went for a health region there instead of um, instead of the resist. Instead of the resistances, yeah. I wonder what the difference between uh, forty percent omnivamp is with the uh, versus the health region on phosphorus. The numbers have to be. Uh, not sure. I guess it depends on the other augment that you have on him. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So see, Soda already now spent uh, some points to move that phosphorus back. He realized his uh, oopsie from the previous round, and it cost him a bit of mastery mm. points. Thankfully, it had no augments on it yet. But yeah, he now has the augments on. His phosphorus was able to stay alive and do damage longer. Yeah, Kalion healing up his back line like is it's so nice. Out. Oh wow, the no vamp way. though on the vamp is healing Storming's oh, oh my gosh. That is that wild. vamp heal at the end was just keeping that Furox alive for so long. Damn, I just missed that round. What happened? <laughs> We're watching the replay Storming's, right now. Storming's took it again. It's Storming's Furox pretty much one v three here. I think. Damn. Heal With the alive. vamp. The vamp kept him alive. It's a comeback. Crazy. Wow. That's a vamp mm. diff. Yeah, damn. So what's what's the counterplay here? You gotta reduce healing. You throw in the reduce mm -hmm. healing augments, if you ask me. It actually works surprisingly well on Vamp. 
So he did move the phosphorus at the back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a mistake to leave this little era here. I'd put it in the back left corner so it drags down the Furiox. And then the mm. Reptorus uh, goes over to the right, moves up to the Tier 0 Water Grocco. Which now has Indomitable. I don't like Soda using the Phosphorus without Bloom. Oh, never mind. So there it is. This is fun, but minus attack, minus attack speeds would have been nice on the. Uh, on the I mean, it might be it might be coming next round. Maybe he only needs one round of win I mean, though. Yeah. Oh, it's this a is, big I mean, stun from just, Titan Or. Yeah, this is looking much better for Soda. That's what it looked like last time. Furiox <coughs> just. Carried I mean, on. this, is, the, looking, no, the, this no is looking way. very different. There's a little bit too much here for this Fury Act to handle. Is it, though? Real. Is it too much? Is it? I'd say. Is it? Are you sure it's too much? Yeah, I, I think he might win. Too much. No, he's, he's, he's got it. What the hell? No, he can't win, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, oh, he's alive, though. It was pretty close, well, I told though. you guys, it was not it was, close. It was pretty close. Come on. Crazy. No, I knew the whole time. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, it's so a storming on last life now. That was almost a death. Tyriox pulling through though, killing a couple of units right at the end there before before falling. He's gonna I stop that Titan. They, um, do you think he's gonna move the fiery ox? Fiery ox. Stormings. I think we're gonna move Stormings Fiery ox. Mm. Yeah. He has to avoid I mean, the Titan he's gonna, Omega. He's going to have to move it with the Grokko and yeah. the Phosphorus because he has the, the support vamp on there. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. He has the Colossus imprint. Oh, he stole it from the opponent. That's right. Yeah, yeah that was mm. just stolen there. Okay, upgrading the Ranger. Really, the only upgrade he got was the Ranger. Hope it's enough. Interesting. Yeah, he did a lot of movement, a lot of expensive movement, and then just the Ranger this, upgrade. This Titan Ore is going to stun all of those guys in oh, that corner. Oh, this though. Lulura is going to get right in the middle and get amazing Siphon Matrixes here. Mm, perfect. You can see how slow that Fury Ox is shooting. Yeah, I think so. has got yep. this one. This Titan Ore Omega is too he, big, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think this so. Titan Ore Omega is going to go through everything. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. boom. And the yep, Phosphorus has the angle, it. too. Bang bang boy. But oh no, the there. storming phosphorus hey. ultra tank is high. Oh, no. I think oh, storming, that's a wins nice with, stun. storming wins. Yep. A hyper. Hyper diff know, once sure. again. Oh my god. It's the oh, hyper I know these things. How does this keep happening? <laughs> Yo, Stormings is holding on, man. He's he not letting go. It. Is Hyper Fighter too good? Yo, Stormings has come back from losers and he is not letting go. We talked about endurance and mental fatigue. He is clearly not feeling any of that. <laughs> yeah, and we even talked about the losers bracket buff where you get a bunch more games yeah. and you can, you know, you see these matchups over and over and you're able to outplay them in ways that Soda might not be able to because he hasn't had the games in. Yeah. And he's just interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So now Soda possibly on last life. Very likely on last life. Uh, yeah. Round eight. This could go either way. Uh, this is smart. Yeah, this is definitely smart, either way. actually. These are he mind split games, up right? his he split up his ranger compared to everyone else, so it um it calls out the Titan <laughs> stun and the bird and uh, the null null stun as well. So the two disables are pretty much getting getting neutralized. Oh, he's adding more tankiness to the Karadulux. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, he needs to take out that Phosphorus early. That's super good. Yeah. 
Phosphorus against Phosphorus real quick. There we go. Don't He's one good. Stun off. Looks like Storming one again. Yeah, yeah, Storming's got it. Phosphorus down. <clears throat> he, I think he wins this round, too. He has a really good angle on the Phosphorus Omega. Oh, my gosh. Just shredded through everything there. And then with the AoE on the Furyox, even with the Indomitable, the AoE from the Indomitable is still hitting everything. It's so much it's damage. way too strong. <laughs> this yeah. Phosphorus just won't die. That's, that's game. Yeah. Who knew Phosphorus would be so tanky? <laughs> <laughs> Nuts. Okay, and we are going into a reset. 50 HP, though, man. So close. That's All right. crazy. Yeah, if you see there, uh, so does Phosphorus just died way too early for him to have any chance in this round. These uh, hyper carry the pho Phosphorus Fury X, they're super important in these near matchups here. You can't ha have them dying too early. All right, just, just storming 2 sure 0. Make sure they know they're going to play. In... Yeah, they're on it. They're already, they're already <laughs> linking up. Yeah, so a reset. Oh, my God. So we are going to see the final three matches. The final three matches, potentially. Two if we're lucky. <laughs> Two if we're lucky. <laughs> this guy's so over it. I love it. Let's go. Now, I think Soda's not going to be as confident to go into that mirror matchup. I'll be real. I think he had really good chances with the, the Colossus setup. He took the early rounds very convincingly. He only needed to pull out just one more win or like a slightly more dominating yeah. win in one of those rounds. All right. So I think they're, they're starting this up. What is that? Yeah, you guys, <laughs> what is that? Who's getting yelled at? <laughs> Anyways, we're moving on to this next round. What are you guys expecting out of Soda? Do you think he's going to switch it up? Do you think he's going to play the same thing? Are we going to see more so. mirrors? I'm going to say this because I have insider knowledge. Uh, Soda is saying that he cannot think straight. <laughs> I think the the mental fatigue is definitely hitting him hard. Curious to see if he pulls through, seeing seeing if he can come up with something. Uh, but I think you're right, man. I think Storming just playing again and again and again uh, is is just on a roll. Yeah, especially with how late it is as well. Like, and uh, you you're in you got this pressure because you're in the grand finals. Um, he hasn't played at all, but Storming has continually been playing, playing, playing. So he's always in that mode. Taking that huge break, hours long, it means more than it, yeah. it means a ton. It means a ton when you're in that competitive environment, going from 100 to zero, and then you have to be forced to go back to 100 again. It's going to losers bracket for storming. I think might have been a blessing in disguise. All right, yeah, 100 percent, man. All right, they're ready now. They're picking the next their, their final teams. Final set of the tournament. It's been a long one. <laughs> How you doing, Scoriax? Appreciate you, brother. <laughs> cool. Appreciate you, buddy. Yeah, feels good. All right, Scoriax, they're starting the match. Let's do it. <clears throat> let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'd like to see Soda try the Colossus again. I think he has a really good shot with that one. Um, or maybe he has something we haven't seen yet. I agree. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be standard. I would be Ooh, surprised. Do you think he's to going see... to take the granite? Do you think he's going to take the granite chip? No. No, I would be very surprised to see that. It's just not worth compared to the other augments. All you get is three seconds, right? Is it three seconds? Yes, yeah, three seconds. Yeah, it's three seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's playing the same granite. Against the same same Arcanite, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So let's see if they're gonna run it back. What they're gonna do this differently. I am super keen to have a meal after this as well. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stormings is holding on, man. I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> he is holding on. Yeah. Stormings, big shout out to this guy. He is not giving up. He's ready yeah. to go until the death. He's ready to go until he dies or until Scoriax dies. One of the yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got he's got the pride of Brazil on his back, right? Like Amen. he's got to got to pull something out. Yeah, curious to see if he does the same thing again with the uh, with the bulwarks. Is he just gonna play all bulwarks again, or is he gonna start playing a little bit more aggressive? Yeah, man, I really think that's a that's not the way you play this. I think this next round you could play Phosphorus with pure damage. Or no, no, no. You play Phosphorus next round, pure damage. I think that's the, the route. I could be wrong. But. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I think he's going to feel confident after winning that first round that he's just going to play the same thing again. I agree. Yeah. It looks that way for sure. I mean, I wouldn't, but. Yeah. Hey. I'm not in the finals right now. You know what I mean? 100%. Oh, he can't play Phosphorus because he uses 100 mastery points in that first round, right? So he literally can't. Cause Wait, why not? Point, because the whole point of playing Phosphorus second round is that you have three Bulwark and two Arcanite. He doesn't. Right. He only has 100 mastery points. Mm. So he, he needs 110. It's a big bit of an oversight. I, I wouldn't play a deck like that personally, but did we have put stuff in the bracket for the first? Oh, you already did. Oh, what's that? Never mind, don't worry. Appreciate everybody liking and sharing the stream, by the way. Love you guys. Thanks for sticking it out with us, too. Still chilling around 50. Love to see it. Yeah. <laughs> guys, end this. <laughs> soon. <laughs> soon. Are we there yet? Almost, almost, almost. Just around the corner. I'm coming Just home. The corner. Coming home. Tell my mom I'm coming home. And then Soda takes the next round as well. <laughs> yeah, very dominating victories in these early rounds with the with the Colossus. Yes, yeah. he Colossus needs to scale wins. it up. He needs to scale it up quickly. Did have made some really quick alterations to his team to avoid the phosphorus getting hyper. I agree. <laughs> that would have been smart. I'm more concerned with his positioning than actually changing his team. I think he he had a lot of things in bad spots and ended up wasting points moving them around. His yeah. team's pretty expensive with the Colossus units and the Titanor and everything. So he needs he need, really needs to value those points to get to maximum strength as quickly as possible. To do that, you got to... Try to be smart about your positioning early so you don't have to waste the points moving them later. Agreed. 100% agreed. He's going with this Lulura to attack the Arkelion again, and he's just going to put... He's just the gonna... See, yeah, he, he did this the exact same way last time, and he knew the Riptors was going to be there. Yeah, the Riptors just walks away, and then Lulura charms and distracts the Furyox. Like, you gotta, you got to protect your carry better. Like You can't just slap it in the middle of the board and expect it to be safe. Like, you know this Lulura is coming. Yep. I think he's playing an autopilot right now. Like, he's not actually thinking. Mm. He this said that the he's grand been up. finals. He said that he's yeah. been up, yeah. like, 18 hours straight or longer. This is for yeah. all the V-Bucks. You got to have your head in the game. The aisle V-Bucks. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love it. Yeah. Nah, yeah, he's just playing an autopilot right now. I know the feeling. I know the feeling. <laughs> Is uh, Soda European or is he American? I can't remember. I'm not sure. He said it's 3 a.m. So I'm okay. assuming that's American. Yeah, he's American. America. Yeah. I should have known that. I know Soda. I didn't even know it was 3 a.m. Goodness gracious. It's 3 a.m. for you as well? Yeah. Nuts, yo! Big shout out to you as well, man. You haven't let the the energy drop a l tiny bit at all. Not even a little bit. I'm out here, bro. I am the yeah, face man. of the face of Alluvium Esports. Yeah, yeah. Take yep. that to the yep. bank, Team Liquid. So, <laughs> who got Visionary Vanguard? Did Soda get it? I'll be straight. I didn't see. I was too busy bigging up Scar, uh, bigging up Jimbo. <laughs> 
Appreciate you, big dog. Uh, Storm's got this. What can he do? What can Soda do against that Phosphorus with pure damage? He just needs his Phosphorus to be better. Right? Like, I don't think damage the Colossus is just so good. The other thing actually. is I don't think, I don't think Soda has um, the Omni Vamp augments in his team. Which makes it way harder for him to beat that matchup. Hmm. Do you think he's going to move the fire ups? If he doesn't, he's in a lot of trouble. Oh, he puts a Titan all there. A Titan all back lane. Yeah, I mean. Interesting. Not that bad. No, it's not. You and lose, it still has a. Oh. You lose a lot from Invulnerable if you have Brennan. Still, like, yeah, that, nah. That first Omega was crazy. Oh From no, he castles. Oh, Aurora. that's the worst direction as well. I don't think I could have won in that round. He got two off. That is insane. Move your Fury Axe. Yeah, this is. He's doing everything wrong. <laughs> no, respect uh, to Soda. It's late, bro. I, no, I know it, is, it is. It is. It is. It is. But you hate He's to see him go out like this. Yeah, you, you hate, hate to see him go, go out, out like this, man. Performs so well. I feel bad for him yeah, watching, I mean, had... watching this vibe. And, and it's not over yet. Like, let's be real. It's mm. not over. Dude, he had a good run as well, man. He beat... Dude, Soda was on a tear today. He beat Godson. Like, all of these people are, are solid, solid players. Like, what was his run? So he beat... He beat Gamble 2-1. He beat Godson 2-0. Beat Shabin 2-0. Mindia 2-0. Leomane 2-1. And now he's just, yeah, it's just got to him. It's just got to him. Let's see if he can pull it out of the fire, though. I still believe in Soda. Yeah, man, I'm hoping so. I really am hoping so. But yeah, the, yeah. Decisions he's made so far is not leading me to believe that it's a possibility. But I'm hoping he pulls something out. Visionary Vanguard on Ripta Ripter is really weird. Okay, good. There we go. Moves over the Fury Ox. Okay. The, the Lurus should See, this miss. This is solid. Yeah, look at this how his phosphor really is set up as well. It's going to hit that entire front line. This is really solid. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Phosphorus on the entire front line. His Furyax is on uh, the entire front line. Uh, Kelly on gets the Omega. heal. This is big for Soda. Oh, this is massive, yeah. All right, Titan or Titan or Stun, still less than ideal. All right. No. Is that an, uh, it's no. not enough, though. The, the heals are just too man. much. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't have any augments on his... On, Soda doesn't have any augments on his hyper carries. All right, that's oh my wow. god, fifteen. Yo, this is just this death yeah, by... love that. He's just ready to like see if Soda can pull this out of the fire, and I can't wait to watch five more rounds of this and see Soda just <laughs> dig his way back. Yo, what's the what's the uh, the phrase? Death by a thousand cuts. That's what this yep. is right now. Like, letting him survive by fifteen. Really, very true. Yeah, this is. Just playing with his his mental stability right now. It's really just you love to see it. You really do. Now let's see what Soda puts augment wise onto his phosphorus and fury X. I think that's going to decide mm. the the rest of this series. Too late. He doesn't have the omnis. He doesn't have them in his team. I don't think. Indomitable. Indubitably. Indubitably. All right. Let's see what changes Soda makes, if any. <laughs> Why'd you say it like that? I mean, has he just given up? <laughs> He's like, yep. No, he's got this. Look, he's got all the augments on his figure axe. He's got some stuff up on his uh, phosphorus. This is going to be a much more competitive round. All right. Trust. He's still losing that Let's Titan see. or Omega? 
Oh, he's not losing it this time. Oh, no, that was really good. Titan was in a re- much better place. And they're going to kill the Lulu off so he- they get their attack speed back. No, that's not how that works. What? Their attack speed oh, that's not how it works, is it? No. That's an on combat start one. Ooh, Some of them work dude, like that. Like... Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. Soda. I told you. You Jeez. can't play the mirror matchup into Storming. He's the best in the world at this. He took the title <laughs> from Leo. Uh, he's had that <laughs> practice. He's had that practice. He okay. said Leo's the best Arcanite player? No, I am. You can't do the <laughs> Storming, bro. He, I wonder if he has something else. Let's see if he can pull something out of the fire. I, I just don't think anybody's method was Anybody's messing with Storming right now as far as mirror matchup goes for the Arcanites. Storming is the best in the world. I'm sorry for doubting you, bro. You're the best. You're the best. Come to Brazil. All right. So uh, Storming has Soda at match point. Storming wins one more game. He is the second Alluvium Inferno world champion. With 600 <laughs> ILV bucks. Yo, it's funny because both of them behind the scenes are like, yo, they're exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> you can't blame them. It's 3 a.m. for yeah. storming as well. So both warriors, you know, takes a lot of grit, determination, resolve, grit and resolve <laughs> right. to do this. Cool. Scoriox disappeared. He's invisible now. Yeah, Scoriox has disappeared. Wait, is Scoriox going to be able to put on the match when it comes on? Um, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't yeah. either. We'll, we'll tell you guys what's going on. We'll though. tell you guys. Yeah, we'll tell you guys. So right now, they're, they're waiting on... They're not waiting. They're about to jump into the match. They're jumping into the match right now. It looks like Stormings is playing the same team. Don't say Keen- that. What? It's, 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 not, it's not the same team. We actually it's not the same team. don't know which team. It might going. be the same team. I actually it might know. be the same team. Yeah. Who knows what but, team it is? But it is. I, I don't. <laughs> but it is. I mean, we don't know that for sure yet. Yo, these. You look sunset. like you're taking a Facebook profile picture right now. Yeah. All right. So they're in. <laughs> Soda. Oh. Soda, Soda going out. something completely different. Yeah, Playing bro. A scion, a scion build. Is, is that the star? Mary. Is that the starter team? I can you imagine if it's a starter team? I don't think. I, so. I imagine he wins with the starter. No, no, no. I, I, I feel like that might be the starter team. Wait, I need that's to hilarious. Up. Wait, wait, I, Scoria. I oh, there he is. No, he's in. He's in. He's changed it. Yo, that's hilarious. If it's the starter team, <laughs> that's hilarious. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Why would he have gotten the oh okay? Interesting. Is that the starter team? I don't think it is. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that team before, so let's well, see. They what didn't, they didn't look... introduce two teams. All right, what's the matchup look like? Scion. I Zion. think that's the starter team. No I'm pretty way. Sure. <laughs> no way. That's absolutely wild, if true. <laughs> um, you know what's yeah, crazy, though? I think Soda <laughs> has given up and just chose a starter team. Oh, unless, God. unless it was a mistake. I would love to see him win, though. It was a mistake, be- they could run it back. Yeah. It's not. It's honestly not a bad team. It's like it's not it's a bad pretty, team. Yeah, it's pretty. It's strong, not a bad team. But yeah, you're coping. So grand finals. No, no, it's really not. It's really not a bad you're team. You're coping. <laughs> Imagine taking the grand final with a starter team, though. That'd be the yeah, I know it would be fire. <laughs> I believe. Let's hear it, chat. I, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Like three people get that joke. <laughs> Anyways, all right, yo, it's crazy. So we, it's three a.m. for Soda and it's five a.m. for Stormy. It's wild. 
Yo, we need to. Yeah, next week, guys, we're not doing the same time. <laughs> it's just straight up. It's not going to be the same time. Let's do a single yeah. alien. I agree. I mean, I love double yeah, alien, yeah. but we just got to optimize this. I can't. I can't be doing a seven hour stream every week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's just that's a basic streaming thing. They do seven hours every day. <laughs> they don't work a day job. But yeah, my, my man's well, on the edge of death right now. <laughs> Me being no, sick we'll try, definitely we'll doesn't help. Single. We'll try single Elim. We'll definitely try single Elim. You think about what's more watchable too. I think people like a three four hour stream or better. Yeah, chat. What do you think? Single Elim or double yeah. Elim? Well, put up put up something in the um, put up something on Twitter later, Skyrox. I think, yeah, because I, I think the other side of it is that a double Elim is really great for one giant tournament. Like, if we had, like, a 100,000 prize or a 50,000 prize or, like, anything big, like, even a $10,000 prize, double Elim's great. Just, like, one big, mm -hmm. huge event, and you want to give everyone as much of a chance as possible. But since we do them weekly, depending on how many players single. we have, then s single makes a bit of sense, because it's like, even if you lose out round one, yeah, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. always participate next week or the week after, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. No, definitely down and try it out. It's a lot more sustainable for us too. I mean, we already do a lot, all of us, so burnout's a real risk. Yeah, we could also try triple Elim as well. If we yeah, wanted to. I like that. Does like that, that actually that. exist? Or never Elim. What about never Elim? Just keep playing until someone dies. Oh, this next yeah, flesh we're, cast. We're, we're just constantly streaming ranked ladder. This next flesh cast is going to be lit. Ooh! Oh, he could actually win this. I'm not even kidding. Rachel's I'm not joking. Okay, I was joking. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This team, he can actually win. Like, it's a viable thing. Who built the new starter teams so anyways? Copia. Hmm. I don't know. Are we going to say anything about this uh, starter team or just kind of let it play out? Let's just kind of let it play out. I, like, what does he even do here to win? I don't think there's final match to... of the night. You just sit back, enjoy the stomp, and everyone had a good time. What can we say about Storming's uh, grind and digging himself out of the <laughs> graveyard of the loser's bracket? Determination, grit, resolve, sleep resistance. Sleep resistance. Energy energy resistance. Dude, I popped in Physical Addy resistance. To stay up for this. Maybe some drug never mind. No, yeah, relax, relax, relax. Six fire, relax. three scion. I like that. Or that little yeah. Dude, painful, I genuinely man. think the scion thing, the burst damage is crazy on this. It's yeah. not a bad it's... starter team. Like it is it is decent, but I mean that round was close. <laughs> yes, he almost got it, man. Back. He almost got him. Almost got him. No, I'm not even joking. It was, it was close. Yeah, it's Judd's suggestion. Double alien, then you play Jimbo to win your way back in. <laughs> the, the other option... No, nobody um, would win, then. Nobody would be getting back in. The other option that some have suggested is, like, um, top... 16 or top 32 or whatever is double alien. I mean, we could do that. You could always, uh, like, do, like, a pool situation. Yeah. Yo, shout out to Soda, by the way. Appreciate you, big dog, being a being a champ about it. Even, um, yeah, it's tough to be in that situation. But let's see, man. He's got a bunch of uh, scions coming out next turn. It could turn the tide. <laughs> it could turn the tide. I mean, it could. You never know. I don't he know. Saw damage. I don't know. Fire, if so, yeah. Scion. He gets one more fire, and then he gets scions, and this actually could. He could possibly win this turn. I'm not missing. Yeah, one more right. fire scion. Does he have the fury on the board yet? He doesn't. He doesn't have fury. He does. Oh, he does. He, does, he does. It's behind the Grokko. <laughs> His ranger is bonded fire bulwark, though. Yeah, it should, be, it should be fire scion. What's he doing with that? I agree. Well, he's only got three. He wanted bulwark. the he wanted the bulwarks. Yeah, okay. bulwark round one. We need more damage. I think yeah. so. All or nothing. Full glass cannon. Uh. See how he plays this. Yeah, I gotta gotta blow him up. Let's blow see how he plays this. Damage. Let's see how he plays this. I mean, he still has room for more alluvials. He's gonna he's gonna hit seven fire, right? Ooh, 
I like this. No, he's not going to hit seven fire. He's at six. Six scion. Get some granite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, that's doing some damage. Yep, he wins this one. I told you guys. Yeah, (laughs) easy. Oh, he might have this. What you tell this us? Is super close. close, coming down to the wire. Super close. How is this close? Big TNT I think, cast. I, I think Soda has this. Wait, wait. This TNT. This TNT. Oh, oh. Close, Almost. Close. We needed close, one more close. cast. One more cast there. Okay. What's his What's his tactic? He needs to protect the carry a little bit better. He needs to keep flesh on the board. Yeah, the flesh on the board is important. Okay. You could bring it to the front and leave the line at the back. He's moving the range of this. A smart decision. It got hit by Flesh before. I think he's trying to avoid that. It's still going to get hit by Flesh. <coughs> no, it might be. It might be Furiox now. Oh, uh, yeah. Nah, it's probably still the ranger. Probably. And it's gonna hit more of more of his team as well. Uh, it's a shame that Lelora is attacking the flesh, man. If it went straight for Galant, it give him a bit more of a chance. Yo, he's using up all of his time. Whoever's saying he's he's given up, clearly he hasn't. He's taking every single bit of and he's, he's got the indomitable on the Draco. It really isn't uh, lost yet. See, look at that. Six fire, six scion. Like, maybe Soda didn't have another team that he thought could beat this. Oh, six fire, six scion. This well, I mean, is it looks like this, oh. beat, this is damage. Oh. Oh. oh huge crazy. shots. Big damage. Soda's secret Let's weapon go. he's been hiding. Oh, big TNT. Oh, guys. let's go. He's back in it. He's back in it. Here we go. Turning the tides. <laughs> he all thought it was he's, over. He said he's using the starter team as a shout out to the team. So this is <laughs> just a shout out to the team, which is why he's using the starters. <laughs> well, it's working for him. So we yeah. confirmed this is the starter team. team? To provide. I mean, not even joking. The fact that he even won that round was crazy. But now he's got the energy suppressor. That's going to be hard. Oh, yeah. Um, it's going to make things a bit trickier for this Scion army. Yeah. I believe. It depends on, like, positioning. He could win this. 100%. It's, it, there's, two, there's two main factors right here. One is the positioning. And the second is how much... And I mean this sincerely, how much he believes in the heart of the cards. If he believes in it, it could he's gonna pull the exodia that he needs and turn this entire thing around. <laughs> so he's using every second. <laughs> he's using every second. Oh, Oh, interesting. Because the Lynx is so good. Interesting. Like, Wait, the Scion Lynxes are being slept on. Oh. Look at that. Look at this. All the Phosphorus oh. out of the way. Oh! It was going to go through the Phosphorus. I told you guys, this comp actually counters Whoa. it. I would like to see his Fury a little bit safer. He's got his Fury awfully close yeah. to him. I guess the... the is, this a, is this a win? Oh, it just barely misses. If Flish has to cast. Oh, Flish. Oh, oh he wins. I, I'm not even... He wins if the fire scion hits the hey. fire. Wow, so crazy. Close. Can we get a replay on that real quick? Yeah. Yeah, we're in it. Oh, Look at this initial cast nuts. from the scion links. The phosphorus was lined up perfectly here, Huge. but moved yeah. out of the way right before the flesh beam. If that yeah. beam actually hits the phosphorus, he wins that round. Look at the link scion right here. If he hits this, it kills him as well and wins it. That's, yeah, he just so moves it's, out. It's too unlucky so two casts that round where the phosphorus just barely moved out of the way in time. The, the nuts, flesh, nuts, nuts. The flesh took so long to cast on that second one. You can just, those energy suppressors just really did so much there. Yeah. 
I completely agree. That was insane. <laughs> Crazy play by Soda to claw his way back a little bit with that deck that he's not used to playing. But I really think that last round was really close. Could have won that. Mm. Incredible. All right. So All right. that is the end of the Illuvium Inferno number two. Storming has taken the win out against Soda in a pretty big upset, given Soda was undefeated up until this point. We love to see it. It was a really good tournament all around, um, but we're going to wrap it up here. So is there anything you guys want to leave off on? Uh, Skarx, do you want to just showcase this real quick? I'm going to DM it to you. <laughs> it's just the standings. So you, we can just kind of give a shout out to, to the standings, uh, to the people that that won. So Storming, dude, Storming put in work today. First place, 11 wins, one loss. So he has played a crazy amount of games. Soda, six wins, two losses. It's coming in second. Leo, five wins, two losses. Zeptal, amazing work. Mindia, S Judd, everyone, great, great job. Yeah, Pate, uh, Fabled, they're, they're our top seven right there. You can scroll down, you can see it. Top seven, you should be able to fit them all in. Yep. So massive, massive shout out to all of them. Uh, yeah, man. And you guys killed it. Absolutely killed it. Again, we'll come back next week, re reiterate some of the stuff here, and make sure that the experience is better for, for everyone involved. Lost to storming, 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 storming. Jesus. You hate to see that. Um, pretty, yeah, so top seven. But storming yeah, lost to Leo, man. Everyone. Interesting. Yeah. All right, so we better wrap it up. Out. Have a good one, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Don't forget to like, subscribe down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Jim Barino as well. And he will have a new highlights channel or be using his channel to bring out highlights of the streams as well, which you will definitely want to see, especially if you miss one of these. So don't forget to go check out Jim Barino's Twitter at the very least, and you can catch all that. Um, thanks again, Kyle, for joining us. Thanks, TSG, for joining us as well. It's been good having a lot of different commentators and a lot of different opinions. Have a good one, guys. Peace out, guys.